What is up, YouTube? Welcome in to another edition of Bucky and BK, live on Texas Sports Unfiltered and on the free Texas Sports Unfiltered app. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 20 and 24, and the Buck and I are with you for the next two hours on today's show. Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell have gone portaling. What does that mean for the future of Texas basketball? Plus, we are four days away from the orange white. Do we have trouble in Big D? C.D. Lamb holding out for the Dallas Cowboys. What does that mean for the Cowboys in 2024? The NBA playoffs begin tonight. We've got Texas baseball tonight. We've got all sorts of sports and fun to get into between now and 10 o'clock right here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. What's going on this morning, Buck? Oh, it's just a little misty out here in Dripping Springs this morning. Other than that, another great day. Another great day to be alive and uh, good to see you. How you feeling today? I'm all right. I, uh, I got some blood drawn yesterday. Not and... always a fun thing. People think that's just a simple... People think that's just, it's no big deal getting poked with a needle in the veins and them vampiring that blood out of you. That's not always that much fun. I say, I, I mean, I've been to the hospital and the doctor so much lately. I just kind of got used to it. But if you don't do that a lot, that thing can be tiring now. Yeah, it was draining. And I don't want to complain too much because you've right. been through a lot more than I have lately. And there are a hell of a lot of people out there who go through a lot more than I do every day. Yeah, I get so, transfusions and shit like that every day. Can you imagine that? Oh, but man, I like, dude, first of all, I've gotten so soft in my old age. It's terrible. Like when I used to get shots or when I used to get my blood drawn, I would stare right at the needle. I mean, I would just watch the doctor stick that thing right in my vein. I'd yeah. watch the blood come out like it was nothing. And now I like, I've you gotten. You look away. I look away. Dude, <laughs> like two of the last three times I've gotten blood drawn, I've almost passed out. Like I've had to lay down in the doctor's office. What, because, before you left? Yeah, because I like start to get lightheaded. I don't know what's going on. Like the first time that happened, it was. You know, I thought it was because I was just staring right at it. And I'm like, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Maybe I should just look away and not think about it and it'll be all good. But yesterday I'm like, all right, I'm just not going to look at it. I'm going to stare off into space. I'm going to be casual. I'm going to have a conversation with this Merce. It was a dude. Dude of Merce. I'm going to no. have a conversation with this Merce. While Man, doing Merce. It. Love just it. Keep, keep it. Things relaxed. It's all good. And then I'm sitting here like while he's drawing blood. And I guess it was taking a little bit for my vein to do anything because he stuck the needle in. And I'm like, boy, it sure has been in here for a long time. Yeah. And he's like, you just need to relax. I'm like, I, I feel as loose as I've ever felt. And he's yeah, I'm like, about yeah. to screw myself here, buddy. <laughs> and he's oh. like, all right, all right. Now it's starting to come out. And I'm like, okay, good. And I'm telling him the story. I'm like, man, I, you know, a couple of times ago, I almost fainted. And I'm like, hopefully that doesn't happen today i feel like i should be good and then literally like a minute later i'm like uh oh oh boy here it comes i, I literally tell him i'm like i'm starting to feel a little woozy doc and he's like doc I'm starting to feel a little woozy merce and he's like uh don't say that and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I bk i look i'm now to the point i look right at it i look like let's go because like i said i've got a lot of veins but i have real small veins so they sometimes they have problems but it doesn't it doesn't affect me. Now, I don't like to have a nurse doing it. I don't want a man nurse doing it because the, last, the one guy who was in who was in the service, I said, so how long have you been doing this? He said, 13 years, man. And this dude didn't get a vein. He hit a nerve. And mm -hmm. it's a shock through my entire body. Like I stuck my tongue into a light socket. And I mean, I got shocked and it hurt so bad. I almost kicked him in the balls. I mean, my foot went up like, Dude, I'm like, dude, do you do this that often? I said, you need some more practice. I said, that's not a vein. You're hitting a nerve and you keep poking it in there and it keeps shocking the shit out of me. And so, I mean, so I like to have, I like to have a female do that. You know, even if she's poking around a couple of times, that's fine. But I look right at it now. I look dead at it. I want to see that thing fill up with blood. Hmm. I want yeah, to see I used if my to, blood is not green. You know what I, I mean? Used to be able to do that, no problem. Well, they'll let you know if your blood is green. Uh, they'll tell you to look. 
Okay there, Tom Herman. How much Verde sauce from Taco <laughs> Bell did you have today, guy? Ooh, and how about that? My, how about my yesterday, my Taco Bell lunch? Yeah. Hey, you called me after lunch and told me you had five? Crispy Supremes in the parking lot of uh, in, the, in the parking lot of Home Depot, pulled over. I didn't. I didn't do this all on the move. Generally, I like to do it while I'm on the move driving. But that I never had a Supreme where it had the cream in it and all that stuff, the sour cream. But I did five Taco Supremes, hard shell Taco Supremes for lunch. You ate and five you, of them? Yeah. And then you tried to get me to do. Then you tried to get me to go to Whataburger and say down it with some Whataburger. I'm like, no chance. Well, you told me there was a Whataburger right across the street. Was, I figured it would be a good dessert right there, you know? Oh, dude, that was those crunchy ones. But that that sour cream was just a little on the bitter side. So I didn't know who was creaming what at the Taco Bell. So I was a little <laughs> nervous. Uh, how nice were you to the drive through work? I was, I was great because now there, there's, there's something – they got some sales where you round it off and all this other stuff. And I, I said, you know, I said, uh, can I have a little glass of water with that a little ice water? Because remember, no soda for the kid. That's perfect. Taco Bell is perfect with just junk soda. But I said, no, can I have a little glass of water? And I said, hey, did you round that off? She said, oh, yeah, I got it. But I think she rounded it off like two bucks. But I think she oh. charged me like a buck for the water. Oh, they charged you for a cup of water? Hey, didn't, didn't complain. Didn't go Starbucks like, hey, pass it on back for $30. I was fine. Oh, it was fine. Man. But five Taco Supremes, dude. And I sat there one right after another. I didn't even hesitate. Then I pulled out the next one out of the bag. And I those things go down in about, they only take like three bites, three or four bites, and the, and the, and the Supreme is gone with the crunchy. What is a good mixer with that? I mean, is there is it water, soda? What, what's a good mixer with that? Olipop? What should you mix that with? That's get, it sounds like something like a Mountain Dew should go down good with that, you know? Oh, well, they've got the Mountain Dew Baja Blasts. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, I kept looking. I said, no, we don't do soda here. We don't play with the soda, so I didn't do it. Just mm. did water. How about that? Five Taco Supremes at the same time in the same parking lot? Same parking lot. Didn't move. Damn. Well, yeah, it's hard to eat those crispy tacos while you're driving because they'll just shatter like immediately into your lap. I mean, yeah. oh yeah, you got to be good. That's what I used to do. I used to, I used to, I don't care what I was, I'd go meet somebody. I would have one of those and then I'd have sour cream all over my lap. And someone would say, uh, you got a little mess there in your lap there, sir. <laughs> you're excited <laughs> to see me. What's going on over there? <laughs> guy? Oh my God. How about that? A meal fit for a King. I'm rubbing off on you. That's good. I'm glad you're starting to eat like me. That's good for They're you. just a little bit bigger than the regular little taco. It's not, the taco itself is the one that's bigger. I mean, and then it's just added a little bit more, you know, sliced tomatoes in there. That's Too much get. lettuce. Yeah, you get, like, you, that's the difference between the regular and the supreme. You get the sour cream or some boys' cream. You get <laughs> the lettuce and you get the tomatoes. Like that's yeah. what makes it a supreme. So it's a little healthier for you. You're getting some veggies on there. That's nice of you to do that. That was nasty. And then I. That was it for me for the – no, then I had Chinese food, the leftover Chinese food from when I met Aaron's mom at the Chinese food place. Yeah, that's what I ended up getting. That's what I had for dinner. It was a nasty combo yesterday. So you, you, you would call it a healthy combo. It was not. How are your – how's your stomach today? Good. Good. Still, still going strong, yeah. Okay. And you slept through the night? Uh, not really. Mm. It was not a great night's sleep. It was, like I said, windy, so I kept hearing things. My stomach kept hearing things. You know what I mean? It's It was not a great night's sleep after eating that stuff. I don't know if that was wind. I think that was just uh, sound belly, coming from your internal. Oh, 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 my belly was growling. Yeah, I that did, it was. Yeah. That it still is. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't eat a lot of, you know, the Taco Bell deal is once, probably once every six months that I'll slide into uh, to dripping and go to that Taco Bell, half gas station, half Taco Bell, you know. It's it's one of those drive through deals where you go in there. But yeah, they, they got, you know, everybody's trying to round off something, round it up to the nearest dollar for summon, something. I, I have no clue what that's about. Yeah. Is that like a fundraiser? Is that like a, a cop fundraiser too? No, I don't think it's for the cops, but uh, a lot of the big fast food chains just partner with local schools, local communities. I'm helping education again. Am I doing a good like like my lottery? I always round up. Like part of me is worried that that money is just going 
I don't know, right back to the restaurant itself, which okay, or the high but, road. You got to get more people, get more money. That's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. I got you know. I love fast food. I don't want those restaurants to go anywhere. So if that money is just like a little tip, because you can't really sure. tip folks at fast food joints. So if that's just what it actually is, then that's a bad bit. Lying about advertising, you're going Rob Gronkowski with your stolen valor, trying to get that uh, military insurance, even though you sure. never served. But no, I think like, yeah, Taco Bell, I think Wendy's, McDonald's, once again, those like international fast food chains, they, they've got programs that help out their local communities. So. That's a school fun and things. Yeah, like that. that's what I'm it supposedly is. The kid. So I'm, I'm educating the kids. I'm good. Well, I'm yeah, not- you're not you're not going to the Yellow Roads and supporting their scholarship program anymore. So no, now this is how you support the kids. Somebody has to be supported. The kids have to be supported. Good morning to the soldiers at Fort Cabasas, Texas. The soldiers in the state of Texas and all those that fight for us each and every day, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do. It is appreciated to you and your families. Do be safe out there. Yeah, that was your wind that happened last night. You were breaking wind. I think I heard some of that too while I was trying to sleep. So it was carrying last night, my friend. Yeah, it looks like we're going on this day. It's a little drizzly out this way, but we will have some rain over the weekend. Look out, spring game. Oh, no. Possibilities, yes. Possibly oh. Saturday morning. Okay. Well, Saturday morning is fine. The game is at 1.30, so as long as it gets out of here by the afternoon, we should be we need okay. a great afternoon because I think this was going to be the, the most attend, attended uh, spring game in the history of UT football, even during the Mac Brown era when, when people were – I mean, because I always thought that they, you know, they always pumped up the, the, the crowd like there was way more than actually showed up. I thought this one going into the SEC – after the year that they had last year was going to be huge on a beautiful day. So I'm still thinking if we get a, a, a nice day, get an 80 degree day with some sun and and not a lot of drizzle and crap that this would be, this would be packed. Yeah. This would be a packed house. I'm with you, man. I mean, the excitement surrounding this program is as high sure. as it's been in a long, long time. And yeah. And years weather. Of shooting out of his new jet. Yeah, we need Quinn Ewers to do a flyover or at least to land on the field during the introductions coming out of a Nicholas Jet uh, private jet, you know, his newest NIL sponsor. That would be sensational if we got that. Um, I will ask you this before we actually dive into the spring game and the things we want to see for uh, from the Longhorns this Saturday at DKR. Ole Miss held its spring game this past weekend. And they did not do a normal spring game, right? And everyone's got their own variations, right? Like, it's not really a real game anywhere. There are all sorts of rules. Sometimes you have running clocks. Sometimes you just like, oh, I don't care that our team's at midfield. We're doing red zone drills right now. So you'll just pick up the ball and move it 30 yards forward. Like, spring games aren't actual games. Everybody knows that. I'm not breaking any news to anybody. But Ole Miss... This past weekend did something completely different. I've never seen or heard of anything like this. They did not have a spring game. They almost turned this into the Pro Bowl where they just had a bunch of like mini games and events during the day in Oxford. And here's some of what they did. They had a dunk contest with some of the players. They did a seven on seven game. That was the closest thing to actual football that went on in Oxford. So they did seven on seven. They also did a tug of war. They had Joey Chestnut out there for a hot dog eating contest. Yes, that Joey Chestnut, the greatest athlete in American history. They did a Grove Bowl gauntlet where they did like a bunch of mini games in a relay race. And yeah, it was literally like seven on seven football combined with a bunch of smaller events. And that was a putting game. contest. Why don't they just get a putting contest in there too while they were at it? They might do that next year. So what, what do you think of this? Are you uh, are you in favor of Texas doing something like this? No, play football. I want to see the guys that I, I want to see a football game. You know, I want it to come as close to a football game as possible. I know what goal line scrimmages are. I know if you take it down to the eight yard line and try to punch it in and all that stuff. That's okay. But that that's during the course of the spring. That's at practice. You do that shit. Give the people a spring game. That's what they, you know, you got to give the folks, you know, they're paying the big tickets when the season comes, give them some idea, make them feel good about a game. Don't gimmick them up. They don't want to be gimmicked, you know, uh-huh. on a Saturday, they want to come in as close to a game. I don't even give a shit about the score. These, these scoring systems that they use, Oh, they got stopped four times within this. I don't care about the score. I, don't, I mean, I don't care if they ever show a score. 
uh, in the game, but give me something that's close to a football game. Yeah. You know, you know, kick it off, let him catch the ball. You don't even have to tackle a guy, but I don't care if they show the guy kicking the ball into the end zone. Show me your kicker knocking it into the end zone without a return. That's fine with me. You know, punt the ball, fair catch it. You don't have to return it. But give us close as close to a game as possible. I don't want any gimmicks. You know, seven on seven, shit, that's for practice. Right. Yeah, I love you know? Joey Chestnut, but we need 11 on 11 football at right. the spring game. And Ole Miss, Ole, Miss, Ole Miss is coming off of its best season in program history. They won 11 games for the first time ever. And I think they're going to open up this year as a top 10 team in college football. If they have a bad year, there are going to be some folks who are like, oh, oh, yeah, even though it was in the spring, like maybe you should have taken that a little bit more seriously. Yes, coach. yes. Yes, yeah, so um, your, your wide receivers out there dunking it over the goalpost. You guys yeah. are getting your ass beat on Saturday. That's I don't think it has anything to do with the season. I just think this is for the fans. And the fans at this time of the year, when it's all said and done, would like to see a little football. They have they don't need to see the dunk contest. They just got through watching. You know, they don't need to see the three-point shoot. They saw Caitlin Clark for months on end. They don't need to see any more three-point shots. Well, you know, I'm okay with all of that extra stuff if you play a real football game. Yeah, if you want to do that the rest of the day, that's fine. If you want to cut the game short, the game part of it short, and then start jacking around, that's fine. But give us some some sort of semblance of a game. Right, right. And I, I wonder how much the spring game actually affects what happens in the fall, right? Like how much does that matter when it comes to the success of a team when we get to the actual season? Like well, part of me is like this is this is the biggest scrimmage you have. This is your only time to play in front of the fans before you know a real game gets here. So this is the closest thing to an actual game that you can simulate in practice between basically December and August slash September. So you should maybe take it seriously. Well, when I, you have young players, if you got young players that are going to take the field, and now you've got seventy thousand there for a spring game, that's you know that gives you an indication on. What kind of player this is going to be? If he's dropping balls in front of your little 70,000 that are cheering him on, and then you get in front of 100,000 and the ball's banging off his helmet, you should have known that from how he performed against 60,000, you know? I mean, that's, that, that's a little bit of an indicator on how guys handle pressure, I would believe. that It helps you out. It gives you something. You're not going to get, very, you're not going to get much more because nobody can come to your practices. But yeah. I, want to know, I want to know if a guy can perform in front of 70,000 on a Saturday for a, for a spring game, you know, compared to when a hundred thousands packed in there and you're playing Georgia, and now you got to put that young guy in the game, you know, in front of a crowd for the first time, a crowd of that size for the first time that he's actually playing. That make that would make me nervous if a guy can't perform in front of the 30, 40, 50,000, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, does, it, it makes me a little bit nervous. It doesn't totally, but it gives me some kind of indicator on what he's like in front of a crowd, you know, right. And yeah. Fresh, I, I I still think Ole Miss is going to be very good when sure. we get to the actual season. I, now I wonder if other teams will follow suit on this deal because um, it seemed like Ole Miss fans who went had a good time watching this stuff, and it was good for team bonding, right? Every coach talks about culture and bringing oh, yeah. his guys closer together. Like this type of stuff probably helps with that. So a football I, player doesn't want to dunk the basketball in front of a bunch of people in front of his teammates, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, there's there's some fun activities that uh, that were a part of this thing. So um, I'm, I'm more curious to see if other programs do what Joey Freshwater just did. Maybe not this year, but starting next year. Uh, I've, I've never heard of anything like this, and it sort of breaks uh, the mold on what a traditional spring game is. So we'll somebody gets hurt dunking or something, or somebody tears something or a hamstring. Right. Then you're going, damn, we did this. We could have been playing football. That's yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone's more likely getting hurt during a dunk contest than they are actually playing tackle football. So like, that's the argument against that. It's like, well, he could have easily gotten hurt playing in a real football game as sure. well, but it's a horrible look. Yeah. If somebody gets hurt, uh, doing the dunk contest, they're doing the wheelies and really birds and, and slamming and landing awkwardly. And they get hurt there. You are going to be so pissed at yourself. Some guy's doing a relay race, right, and hurts oh. himself sprinting. Like, yeah, pulls a, pulls a hammy. You're going right. to be so upset at yourself and your staff, or even think, who thought of this relay race? And these mm -hmm. guys competing, you know, at that speed and twisting their. No, just let me go ahead and get hurt playing football. You know. All right, so we don't want to see any of that stuff from Texas no. on Saturday. Don't, don't care to see it. Sign some autographs. That's about as close as I want the fans to. You know, that that's it. Let's sign some autographs. Let's play a little football. But we don't – it doesn't have to be very long. The coach is – the guy, the head coach is generally 
is the guy who coordinates how long this thing is going to last anyway. If yeah. they say it's going to be 43 minutes, generally it's about 40 minutes. They mm-hmm. don't go over. They never go over the time that they expect to play these screen scrim, uh, scrimmages. They never play the full. Dude, I've been a part of full-ass scrimmage, like game time, kickoff returns, punt returns. I've been in no, I was around football long enough to they said, we're just playing a game. Wow. And that was fine. I mean, in that, I mean, I mean, I never had anybody seriously injured in that. I mean, I only heard Priest Holmes because he wanted to go in for another series where he tore up his knee in the spring game. You know, that's those are just freak things that can happen. Like you said, it could happen dunking the ball or doing anything else. But generally it's, you know, those guys are just they want to get out there and play football. And I just said that other gimmicky stuff, sign autographs. Here's your gimmick. Hmm. OK, so let's sign some autographs and let's go home. It's the end of spring. I mean, they've been they've been doing all this stuff since winter workouts, you know, getting up at six o'clock in the morning. Right. Yeah. And it's 15 spring practices and the spring season culminates with the orange wide scrimmage coming up on Saturday. So what do you want to see from Texas on Saturday? Maybe a couple of players that you're looking out for, maybe just some things in particular that you're hoping to see from this bunch. And the only time we'll get to see this team play anything close to a simulated game until their first game of the year on August 31st against Colorado State. What uh, are you hoping to watch from Texas on I want Saturday. to see a hardcore run game run at this defense, and I want to see this defense be able to stop this third-year offensive line if they decided they're going to run the ball down your throats. They're going to control the game with the run. They're they're going to get into a they're going to get into a, a situation where it's a series where Sark says, "No, we're not passing. We're going to run the ball. Let's see if you guys can stop us." And if they can't stop it, that's going to bother me a little bit. You know, hmm. if if, if Alfred Collins and, and Mr. Sorrell's son and those guys can't stop the run game in the spring game. That will, that will, I'll take notice to, because I'm expecting the offensive line to be able to turn it around and hand it off to number one, number two, or number three tailback and get it done against this defense. Because this is an offensive line that's got to be one of the best in the country when it comes to just power. And yeah. they know the offense, they know the run game, they know what they're, I'm not talking about passing the ball, I'm talking about running the ball when they have to run and you know they're going to run. And I want to see this defense be able to stop the run when they know they're going to run. And, and Sark may even tell the, the coordinators, hey, guess what I'm going to do? I'm not throwing it on this series. I'm running the ball. And if I get a first, I'm going to start out and I'm going to run it again until you stop it. Mm. And we're going to get we're getting down situations where you have to stop us because that's what they're going to do in the SEC. If you can't stop it, they're going to continue to do it to you. Okay. And it's even the worst teams in the SEC will do that. Because so you want to see. I want to see a really solid run game when you know they're going to run. And both teams know it's going to happen. Can sure. you stop it? And I want to see what, what, what the backup wide receivers look at. Who, are, who, are the, who, are, who is the fourth wide receiver? You know, I got it with, like I said, I got it with the running backs. You know, we've talked enough about who one, two, three, possibly four could be. But I want to know who number four is on that wide receiver group. Are they going to be able to contribute? The ones that have been here before, you know, the guys that we talk about that – we're here when the other guys that are headed off to the NFL, they were backing them up and never got in games. Are they good enough to still be here? Who are they? What mm-hmm. can they do? What do they add to this to this offensive game plan? All right. Going back to your first thoughts. Um, yeah, Texas had a top five run defense in college football last season. So what does it look like this year without Tavondre Sweat and Byron is Murphy? Top, is it a top 10? Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And we won't learn that on Saturday, obviously. Sure, no. But, uh, yeah, what does this defensive line look like? And just what does the teeth of this Texas defense look like? Because not only did you have, you know, T. Sweat and Byron Murphy clogging up the interior of the defensive line, you had a really good linebacker in Jalen Ford right behind those guys who you kind of knew what to expect from him because he had played so much at Texas. So you lose three key cogs to that top five run defense. Now you're replacing them with talented pieces. Uh, You've got some experience there, especially at the defensive line with fifth-year player Alfred Collins with fifth year player Vernon Broughton. So you'd like to think there isn't a massive drop off in that department, but uh, yeah, that's uh that's an interesting one, right? What is this run you know, defense? Can, you know, generally they, they, the defense is stays ahead of the offense in the springtime anyway. Yep. And so I would expect the defense, if, if Sark is letting those guys just play defense, you run it, but you know, a lot of stuff gets scripted where, Oh no, you don't blitz us here. Don't do this. We're not ready for this blitz. We haven't seen this. We haven't practiced against this. Now, if they just let them play, I, I would like to see that defense stop this run game. I will feel more better if the, I would feel better about what's going on with the football team if the defense 
you know, was slapping blue and these guys around. You know what I'm saying? That would be good for me. That I, that would make me feel pretty good because I know this offense will come around. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I've got that feeling, but I don't know about this defense. So I don't, I don't want to see the, the offense running the ball down the defense's throat in the spring okay. game. That's yeah. what I don't want to see. It's always weird, right? Because it's a net zero. So sure. if the offense is running the ball down the defense's throat, to use your verbiage, then you're like, okay, our run game might be really good and our offensive line looks dominant. And then, hey, we can feel great about that part of our team going into the season. But on the other end of the spectrum, you're like, oh, shit, our run defense might be really, really bad. So these spring games, these scrimmages are always tough in that regard. Sure. I think you just want to see good things from everybody to where it's like, okay, no, we, we are just a balanced team. We're good on offense. We're good on defense. We don't have a glaring weakness like we did last year that might cost us uh, in big games this season. Like, I think that's what you want. And yeah, I mean, this, this defensive line is a big part of it. You know, for me, I, uh, and, and like you said, I'm going all over the place here. Like you said, the defense is usually ahead of the offense at this yeah. point. So yeah, they generally just go sick them, go get after them. And, you know, if they want to run stunts and do some things against the offense that they're not expecting, that's fine. A lot of coaches let your defensive guys just stop us, do mm-hmm. whatever you have to do. But a lot of coaches on offense will say, no, don't make us look bad by blitzing us and having some guy come through clean. We're not ready for these blitzes. We haven't prepared. Don't run something that somebody else, our opponents will run against us that we're not ready for. Run your basic base defense and let's go play. But if you're going to stunt, let us know these are the stunts that we have to look out for because we don't want to get our running back clocked either. Right. You know? Right. And Texas has had two scrimmages to this point. They've both been closed door scrimmages right. and, uh, by most insider accounts from what I've read, from who I've talked to. The defense has been ahead of the offense at this point in the spring, which is normal. Uh, it's not like, uh, oh, shoot, you need to worry about the offense. That's, no. uh, yeah, it usually takes a little longer to install the offense. And even though you've got your quarterback back for a third year, you've got a lot of your offensive line back. You got some running backs back. You're still breaking in a lot of new pieces on that side of the football. Well, so. And I'm also a greedy offensive guy. I do want to see the ball thrown around against that secondary. Sorry. Yeah. That's you know like, I mean? I, I'm I a, gotta see that. I'm a low hanging fruit kind of guy. Like I'm a fan when it comes to sure. everything, but especially for the spring game, like I want to see the quarterbacks and I want to see the young guys. Like that's to me what the spring game is all about. So I want to see Quinn Ewers, right? What does Quinn Ewers look like? Does he look better than the last time we saw him take the field against Washington? Um, I've said it a lot. He took a pretty massive step from year one to year two. If yes, he, he takes did. a step half that size from year two to year three, then yeah, he's got a shot to win the Heisman trophy this season. And Texas has a shot to make it back to the college football playoff this season. So does he look better than the last time we saw him? Also Arch Manning, like you, you've brought it up a hundred times, Buck. I mean, Quinn Ewers has gotten hurt in both of his years as a starter at Texas. They all it do, feels yeah. like it's been forever since the Longhorns have had a quarterback start and finish an entire season without getting banged up in some capacity. So at some point, we're probably going to see Arch Manning this year. We right. saw him a little bit in the spring game last year. We saw him a little bit in that blowout against Texas Tech, a.k.a. your Mark U, on Black Friday this past season. But – you know, we're going to get to see more of Arch Manning. Now he's the number two guy instead of the number three guy. Right. So what does Arch look like? I mean, he's one of the most highly touted recruits in the history of this sport. So what do we get from him on Yeah, Saturday? I'd see a nice 50-50 split. I mean, there's we don't need to see Quinn Ewers, even though he has new receivers. I mean, they got all kinds of time in the summer to get together and throw the ball and play catchy catch. But i like to see about a 50-50 split between the two quarterbacks because, as you said, Somebody, one dude is playing in games. The other guy is not making it through a full season, just haven't seen it in forever at Texas. So he needs to be in there in front of a bunch of people, throwing the ball around. He doesn't need to get, you know, uh, a quarter of the snaps in the spring game. He needs to get half of the snaps or even more, I believe, in this spring game. Quinn Ewers is a veteran. He understands what's going on. He knows the offense, although he has some new receivers, but he knows this offense. He knows what to do. The other kid still needs to be in front of a bunch of people, getting some getting some looks and getting some throws and handling a football team, you know? Right. Did you just call it catchy catch? Yeah, that's summertime when the quarterbacks and the wide receivers, you know, go up on I-35 there at the, the practice fields and are going through a bunch of catchy catch. That's what I call it. Where mm-hmm. guys are semi-defending the, re- you know, where they try to go, they do the little seven-on-seven seven drills. That's just a bunch of shit. That's catchy catch. Is that a real football term? No, that's not. Okay, I don't think I've ever heard that one before. 
but I like it. Real catchy catch. Yeah, I mean, you'll catch you in your dad in the backyard. That's catchy catch. That's having a catch. <laughs> okay, pops, let's have a catch. Let's have a catch, Dad. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, look, it won't just be those two quarterbacks, right? Trey Owens and some of the other quarterbacks on the roster will get some run too. So, um, yeah, I mean, no, Charles Wright. Charles Wright is gone. Charles Wright is at Appalachian State. He transferred there this offseason. So we wish him all the best. We're going to try. Yeah, to hopefully, you and I will get a chance to talk to some of those guys who are from this area that they're now will be quarterbacks at other places. You know? Yeah. I've got a good relationship with Charles and the Wright family from calling some yeah. of his games at Austin High back in the day. So, uh, yeah, we'll reach out to Charles once the uh, spring season is over and see if we can chop it up with him a little bit. But, uh, yeah, the quarterbacks and then just the freshmen, right, like the early enrollees. Texas had a record number of early enrollees. 18 guys in this class of 2024 were in for spring. Sure, somebody's uh, going to stand out. Somebody, One of those dudes is going to stand out in the spring game somehow. I, I got a hunch it's going to be more than one of those dudes. I mean, the two most obvious dudes are Ryan Wingo and Colin Simmons, right? Yeah. Those were your oh, two sure. highest-rated recruits in this class. Those are your two uh, consensus five-star players. And by all accounts, Ryan Wingo has had a phenomenal spring. And you talk about the wide receiver room, Buck. Like, I, I'm trying to figure out who number one is. Like, I, I assume it's Isaiah Bond because yeah. of what he did at Alabama. But I, we don't know that for sure, right? Like, Texas is replacing its number one, number two, and number three receivers. So I don't know exactly what the depth chart is going to look like on Saturday. Sure as hell don't know what it's going to look like this fall. But I want to know what that rotation looks like as a whole. And yeah, because we, we know they don't rotate a lot of guys. So it's going to be. Well, that's the thing, right? Like yeah. They'll rotate on Saturday. I, sure. I don't know what that means for actual games because, yeah, they didn't have much of a rotation last year. And it felt like they could have, but I don't think too many Texas compl uh, fans complained that no. much because this was the best year Texas had had since 09, and you had two potential first-round wide receivers and Jordan Whittington playing. So, you know, who are you going to take off the field out of those three guys? This year, I think you could have more of a rotation – just because you lost all three of those guys, but I don't know. Maybe that's just the way Chris Jackson and Steve Sarkeesian want to run that right. room. Like at Alabama, when when Sark had, you know, Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell and Henry Ruck, like all of those dudes, he didn't rotate guys that much. No, like, he did not. I got, I got no. three NFL receivers here. Like why, right. Right. why right. would right. I take these guys off the field? So that's right. If Sark feels like he's got three guys who are just clearly better than everybody else, then maybe we don't get a wide receiver. Oh, you rotation. don't have to because, hey, the job is to win the games. Right, exactly. And and this passing game was very good last year. I think it's going to be even better this year despite losing all of those weapons on the outside. I just feel like Quinn's going to take a step. I feel like this O-line is going to get better. I think the in-helmet communication is going to be big for Quinn Ewers and this Texas passing attack. So, I'm expecting big things, but yeah, I wonder, you know, like who, who starts on Saturday and which, you know, Ryan Wingo, we're talking about the freshman here. Like, does he stand out to the point where it's like, Oh shit, that guy's got to play. Yeah. That guy's I, in the ro in the rotation. He's, he's the guy that takes the spot of what you didn't get from your, your tight end last year. Numbers wise, this guy becomes that guy who numbers wise can make up for the tight end last year, not getting a bunch of balls. This guy can be a, a, a true freshman that can catch possibly 30 balls in the course of a season, 30, 35 balls. That's how good he is, you know? Yeah. He's not, he's not in there as mop-up duty. He's in there to make plays. I mean, Jatavion Sanders had 45 catches for 682 yards last year. If you year. get that out of a freshman, can you imagine getting that out of a freshman as a wide receiver, your third or fourth wide receiver? Yeah, he's he's a top three receiver, I think, if he's putting up those numbers. Sure. Right? And he's a very heavy part of the rotation. So, yeah, I wonder if he does enough. Uh, the coaching staff's obviously more important because they make the ultimate decision. But does Ryan Wingo just show this fan base something on Saturday? Well, he looks, it looks like body-wise, he looks like the kind of guy that could get in that tight end position almost and move around a little bit, put defenses in a really bad situation. I don't you want know, him as a tight end. Point. Well, not yeah. as – you know what I'm saying, but as a guy who can who can move out of the backfield or from a tight end position or from a wing position and get you matchups that you really, really want too. Put him in the slot? Is that what oh, you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you keep like – I don't want him as a tight no, end or in the backfield. Be, he's not going to be the tight end. He's going to be a guy that comes from some tight end positions and, but, and gets you some – Get you some nice one on ones with, with, you know, not so great safeties and not so great linebackers where you can take advantage of those guys from that inside position. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's outside, 
the guys on the inside aren't covering him. He's going to be covered by good cornerbacks. But if he's inside, you know, the matchups for him may be really, really nice because they didn't, to me, they still didn't do that, do that much with the tight end position, I didn't think. Mm. You know, with a, with a tight end that I thought was really, really pretty good. But that's just the way it goes. Like you said, hey, you only have one ball and you had two unbel- you had two first round wide receivers. You, you, can't, you can't just make up, make up catches when they're yeah. not there, you know? Yeah, the tight end has never been a huge part of the Steve Sarkeesian offense. No. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what Texas will get from that spot this year because you had Jatavion Sanders, who may be a second or third round pick in next week's NFL draft. And even he at times felt like wasn't a huge focal point right. for this passing attack. So without JT Sanders, I mean, I, that's another thing I'm sure a lot of Longhorn fans will be paying attention to, like which tight end looks the best. You got the transfer Nye Black in from Alabama. Uh, Sark's been talking a lot about Juan Davis, who's been on campus for a while. You've got Gunnar Helm, who was your number two tight end last year. Which of those guys steps up and gives you something? But I, I don't think any tight end is going to put up the production that JT put up last year, even though you feel no. like it wasn't enough. But you can get it from a, a third or fourth wide receiver, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that uh, wide receiver room is absolutely stacked. So Ryan Wingo is one of those guys. And then on defense, it's Colin Simmons, uh, the five-star edge from Duncanville. Right. What do we see from him? Six three, about two thirty five. At least that's what he was listed on uh, on the Texas roster. The spring game is that Kenny? Kenny wrecked the spring game. I don't think so against that offensive line. Yeah. Well, I I don't know. I don't know you, if any, you would be you would be happy, but you would be disappointed at the same time if they couldn't block that kid. Well, uh, yeah. Like right tackle is another area of interest for me because sure. I, I, the other four offensive linemen we know are pretty good. But Cam Williams, like he's, I assume he's going to get the first team reps at right tackle this weekend. Uh, What does he look like? I mean, is he just getting beat off the edge by Colin Simmons, by Trey Moore, by Baron Sorrell, by all of these cats over and over again? He's getting a lot. He's getting a lot of work this spring. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just like, oh, he looks good. He's holding his own. It's perfectly fine. We don't have to worry about right tackle when this offensive line is set. And we know who all five starters are going to be. Uh, yeah, once again, it's it's a net zero, right? Like, you want to see everybody win. Like, I want to see Colin Simmons make a couple of plays on Saturday, but I sure as shit don't want him making every single play on Saturday because then yeah. I'm like, what, what's wrong with the offensive line? Like, wh- what do we need to fix there? But Colin Simmons, I think, will uh, will draw some oohs and ahs from those in attendance at DKR with something that he does this weekend. And, you know, A.D. Mitchell wasn't a freshman last year, obviously, but he was a newcomer uh, coming yes. over from Georgia. Remember, he made that sick one-handed catch in the end zone right. for a touchdown in that spring game last year. And I think, like, most people were pretty excited about A.D. Mitchell. It's like, oh, we're getting a receiver from Georgia? Like, this dude's just won back-to-back national championships. And even though he's been hurt a lot at Georgia, like, he's been super productive when he's been on the field and was great in the playoffs whenever Georgia played in the big game. So, all right, he's going to be something for us. And then he made that catch, and it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, and, 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 and consistency, really was, consistency was his deal. I mean, I know he was ultra-talented speed-wise, size-wise, but his consistent route running and making the catches, the tough catches, were just – I mean, that's – I mean, that's exactly what you're looking for. You go to the portal and you get a guy like that that you need for your quarterback to who knows, you know, on and down and distance that it's third and seven. That guy is going to be there. Guess what? My quarterback's throwing to him and everybody else in the stadium knows that he's throwing to him, but he's going to make the catch, make the play, be in the be in the right spot. You know, that's going to be what I'm looking for from Quinn Ewers. Who's going to be his guy? Who yeah. does his guy become, you know? Yeah, because X was that guy the last couple of years. Sure. I just felt like whenever Quinn was in a bind, even when he did have A.D. Mitchell and Jatavion Sanders and Jordan Whittington, it felt like uh, Quinn's go-to guy was always Xavier Worthy. So now he doesn't have that sort of security blanket that he's had. Who becomes that? I I hope Quinn Ewers – like one of the things that frustrated me about Quinn last season was that he did lock in on X too much. And it's like, dude, you've got three other really, really talented pass catchers I feel like Jordan Whittington was open. Like, get him the ball a little bit more. Sure. Uh, get JT Sanders the ball a little bit more. He's a matchup problem for some of these defenses. Get AD Mitchell the ball a little bit more. That guy's a freaking stud. He's 6'2 and he runs 4'3. Like, that's, I'm almost hoping that, yeah, X leaving is a good thing for Quinn to where he's just like, okay, no, I can't just lock in on one guy. I got to go through my reads and try to get everybody involved and just find the best receiver every time I drop back to pass. I got a feeling Golden's going to be the, his guy. So, yeah, maybe. I, 
that's going to be – I think that's going to be his guy because he's going to be a, a – he's been a consistent player at Houston. He's not over flashy, but he's consistent enough that he's going to make plays. And if you're not in the right spot, he can hurt you. So I think that'll be the guy he's going to start to really rely on and trust. And I and I like I like the kid from Alabama a lot. I watched him mature as a wide receiver last year. I mean, he just made some some great catches, and he got open. It wasn't that he had to make great catches. That dude got open. You know, he, he found did. ways to find – to understand what the defenses were doing to him, and they found a way to get him the ball. And I think Sark will – this will be a, another guy that's big. I mean, he's, he's they got three or four legitimate players. And then on top with the with the, with the the great freshman that's here. But once again, I need to know what these other guys that you gave scholarships – you gave them scholarships to come to the University of Texas. Yeah. What, what, did, what are they? Uh, what, what, what is it that you do here? That's okay. what I like to find out, you know? What would you say you do here? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to find out how they got scholarships. So let's see them play a little bit. Yeah. Yep. I think we will. I think we will on Saturday. And uh, this receiver room is deeper than it was last year. I don't think it's as top heavy. It's hard to be as top heavy as what Texas just had. But, man, you talk about like one through five, one through six, one through seven even. I don't know if there's like a deeper wide receiver room in all of college football. Sark has done a great job. Give Chris Jackson credit too. Both of those guys have done a great job accumulating talent, but also developing that talent. Absolutely. It's where you feel like, okay, you're really, really good. On and the as outside. for the tight end position, I know what to expect for Gunnar Helm. That guy's going to make plays. He just, they just, they find ways to get him the ball where his ass is wide open. He finds ways to, to, to figure it out in the defense. You know, Sark can scheme up the tight end, and he's done it with that kid. He just has. But that guy doesn't drop balls. He, I mean, he, He's not been put in situations where he had to make great catches. He just seems to be open, and that's fine with me too. Yeah, He's, I don't, I don't know what the tight ends are going to give you. Once again, JT had forty-five catches last year. Like, I don't, I, think, I, no, you're not getting forty-five from these I, guys. I'm gonna, I don't think any tight end is going to get thirty-five catches this year. I would like, agree. Maybe collectively between you know Gunnar Helm and Juan Davis and Amari Nyblack, yeah, sure. they go over thirty-five to forty catches. But I don't think any of those guys are going to be. Uh, number one, good enough. Number two, just a focal point of this offense enough. That would be a great surprise, though, to have a guy like – to have sure. catches in the 30s, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, him do it. That would be amazing for him. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, these guys are on scholarship. And I think the a frustrating part about JT's season last year was that he only had two touchdowns. It's like, you know, you want your tight end to be more of a red zone threat. Sure. You want him to be that security blanket inside the 20s in the middle of the field, those higher percentage throws. And Texas obviously struggled in the red zone on offense all season long, right? That was, God, I felt like we spent more time talking about that than just about anything else with this Texas team last year. So, uh, yeah, if you could get a tight end to be more of a reliable weapon in that red area than what you had last year, then that yeah. would be big time, big time, big time, big time. All right, we'll take your thoughts. The code of text line, 512-222-9328. Uh, of course, the YouTube live chat is alive and well this morning. Appreciate all of you tuning in today. We've got a Cabo Bob's gift card we got to give away before yeah, we get here. Before 10 o'clock. If you want to uh, be entered in to our Cabo Bob's gift card giveaway, all you have to do is hit us up on the code of text line. Once again, 512-222-9328. Or leave any sort of comment on YouTube and just like that, you'll be entered to win a $50 gift card from our friends at Cabo Bob's. We've got two of those to give away this week in honor of both Texas baseball and Texas softball winning their weekend series. So thanks to Cabo Bob's and thanks to the Longhorns for hooking you up this week. And that's what we do here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. That's why you should be listening each and every day. All right, Buck, before we uh, get to some Texas basketball and some transfer portal news for the Horns, let's give some shout-outs to some sponsors. How about our good friends over at Texas Orthopedics? Now, if you're specialized, seeking that specialized patient-focused orthopedic care, do contact the experts and our friends at Texas Orthopedics. Their physicians offer comprehensive surgical and non-surgical orthopedic care for children and adults, spinal care, sports medicine, trauma care, joint replacement, rheumatology, and more. Dr. Christopher Danny, who I coached at the University of Texas, and Dr. Christopher Stockton, who I did not coach, are dedicated orthopedic surgeons there, and their goal is to get you back into good health and give you that great quality of life that you definitely deserve. Visit them at txortho.com for more information. Texas Orthopedics is the largest independent orthopedic practice in the state of Texas. Once again, for more info, go to txortho.com. And yes, no, sir. I have not called them because I don't need any replacements because the big man is back. 
How's that third eye doing this morning? Can you see that big, dark third eye there? It looks like somebody shot me right between the eyes. Nice shot, Joyce. You got me right between the eyes. Mm, she finally did, huh? She finally got me right between the eyes. Yes, yeah. indeed. Oh, so I'm, I'm doing probably. good, feeling good, you know, good. just a little sore. I think when you go face plant, I just think the natural part of being sore, because anytime I, anytime I do anything, my back is going to hurt. You know what I'm saying? Anything mm -hmm. to do with my, my whole body, my back hurts first. So, but you know what doesn't hurt is my head. I'm a hard headed son of a gun. I was thinking my head was going to hurt my forehead or my, my dome. There must not, there must be a bunch of screws, but they're all loose up there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they've been loose for a long time. Yeah, they're not in place, so everything's okay. Uh, that didn't happen from your most recent fall. That happened no. years ago. Years ago, you're right. At least you're not wags over here, Buck. Oh, oh, oh what about that right knee? <laughs> what about that right knee, wags? There's a rheumatology. How about some knee replacements on that right knee, that fat knee? Oh, look at it. Boom. Oh, oh the knee gave out. Boy. Oh, we had that New York earthquake a couple of weeks ago. We might have oh, had yeah. an Austin earthquake from Wags hitting the deck at Bolden it's, Acres. It's, it's just pickleball. Okay. It's not, he's not, this isn't, you know, John McEnroe. He's not McEnroe out there on the tennis courts. It's pickleball. It's for a different type of player. Yeah. And he's supposed to fit that mold and he does not. It's pretty obvious that Wags is no John McEnroe, nor Patrick McEnroe, nor anybody with the last name McEnroe. Dude, tell him to take up billiards. There's a game called <laughs> billiards where you won't fall. Uh, I'm worried he'd get hurt doing that. Oh, I can't even imagine if a ball goes. He'll not have balls going airborne off the table. Yep. I would have said darts, but someone's losing oh. an eye if Wags oh, is yeah, no up kid. darts. Oh, yeah, but he can do the nipple thing like your boy there. Your your oh. champion. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> I can't believe it. I still have this video queued up. This is great. It's One the of best. the greatest celebrations in sports history. Look at this. <laughs> that is not right. That is so wrong. Uh, the nipple oh, bounce. Time, man. What a skill, man. What a wow. skill. I thought only Terry Crews could do something like that. But, That's uh, awful. This dart guy did too. All right. Shout out to Altstad Beer. That's not awful. That is awesome. It's the best beer that you can find anywhere in the world. Whatever you have going on, make sure you accompany your good times with the greatness of Altstad Beer. They've got a bunch of different brews too. Something for every beer drinker out there. Every Altstad is brewed in Fredericksburg. So you're supporting the local company every time you buy Altstat. And every Altstat is brewed without additives, without preservatives, without sugars. Any of the unnecessary ingredients, it's not in there, which is good. You can feel good about what you're putting into your system. But most importantly, you are going to absolutely love the taste of Altstat beer. You can pick it up at HEB, at Specs, at Twin Liquors, at 34 Wine and Spirits, wherever you get your beer all across the state of Texas. You can find Altstat beer. You go through a lot in this life. Reward yourself and reward your taste buds with, once again, the best beer that you can find. It is Altstadt beer. No impurities, no regrets. Yes, and I'll be satisfying my taste buds, of course, because I'll be headed to 7-Eleven for a little Debbie's today. That's right. I've already indicated, you know, I never got to go to Dairy Queen the other day. I never made it to Dairy Queen where I said I'm going to have a Dairy Queen mm -hmm. large. Never got it. But you know what I am having? I'm getting the hard copy today. It is a Tuesday, so I can get last week's Thursday's paper today, uh, Austin American Statesman. So I can get that, the news from last Thursday today on a Tuesday. So I'll pick up the hard copy and I'll give myself a little Debbie's this morning. There you go. That's a good couple of days of eating, right? You go Taco Bell, Chinese food, and little oh. Debbie snacks and back-to-back-to-back -back -back meals. That's good. Yeah. Let's not talk about that too loudly here. I don't want that echoing downstairs. Little Debbie's on top of it. My wife doesn't mm -hmm. even know I went to Taco Bell yesterday. So I think she's in there working out right now. So I'll check. Her. I'll, her. Let her, I'll let her know. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Appreciate yep. it. I got you. Yep. Shout out 7 Eleven, the best convenience store in oh, yeah. the world. Also, shout out to our great friends at SentexTickets.com. You don't need a ticket to the spring game, but you will need tickets to the real games this fall. And if you're looking for Texas football tickets, there's only one place you need to look. That is SentexTickets.com. Of course, you don't have to wait 
until football season to get tickets. You can go watch the Astros. You can go watch the Rangers. You can watch the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Shout out to the Dallas Mavs, the one team in the state of Texas that was good enough to make it to the playoffs this year. If you want to go watch the Mavs play in the postseason up there in Big D, you can make that happen. Get those tickets online from your phone, from your computer at Send texttickets.com it's so easy to use shelby and the gang over there fantastic people and uh yeah they've got the tickets to the biggest sporting events concerts broadway shows anything coming anywhere in the country you can find at sendtexttickets.com no doubt about it because usher's coming to town soon and last night pretty sure there was uh shelby had a few of those madonna tickets last night oh was madonna she here she was here last night i believe at the moody theater at the moody center yes no way yeah Oh, you didn't go to that? No, I'm not going to see. No. You sing Material Girl all the time. I know. I hear it every day. I hear enough of her. I don't need to see her. I'm frightened, you know, with the thunder and lightning. I had to look under the bed to make sure Madonna's head wasn't underneath my bed last night. That face wasn't there. Ew. You know, she's scary. No. Is she looking that bad these days? Yes, man. She's got this gold grill. I mean, no, I don't want to see her. Check her mug out. No, thanks. She has she lost her fastball. She's not the material girl anymore. Oh well, there's a lot of materials making up this face right now. Seriously. Oh man, come on, Madonna. No, dude. Ew. I'm not going to see that. No. Oh, dude, like way too much work there. Not a lot of work going on. What's that big zero on the side of her head? Is that what is that? Is that her real hair? Well, that's her hair. That, wow. That's that, yeah. I mean, it is a weird haircut, but that's some kind of devil sign or something. No thanks. I'm passing on Madonna. I think the hair might be the most normal part of this picture. Oh, apparently, according to CB, Madonna was two hours late and had the AC no. turned off. Oh, that's her bit. Yeah, she goes no AC at her what? concerts. She wants people sweating in there. She wants things hot and heavy. Wow. And maybe that's. Well, I don't know. I'm worried her face is going to melt. Well, that's a, that. that's a good thing if you're if you're working at 34 Wine and Spirits because you need to have some drinks and you know they do oh. some of the supplies there. So I'm pretty sure at at 23, 24 dollars a pop, there were a lot of those babies going down last night. Dude, this is stuff of nightmare. Is it? Tell me. Oh my God! You looked under your bed looking for your shoes and you saw that. Would you be horrified? <laughs> I would. I would leave my house and never come back. That's what I do. I look in the closets every night to make sure that's not around. How old do you think Madonna is these days? I'm going to say she is, I'm 68. I'm going to give Madonna 62. No, she... yeah, 60, between 62 and 65. How's that? Good guess. She is 65 years young. There you go. God. I don't, I don't know how old she looks. There's so much fake going on there that I can't even put a number on it. It's, ugh. All right. Well, you wouldn't go see that. You wouldn't go there. No, I'm not a huge Madonna fan. You're a Billy like, Joel guy. Yeah. I you the other night on TV. Oh. You, had a, you had a free concert going on. Yeah, take me out to dinner before you F me, CBS. Come Cutting on. off the piano man during the piano man. Our guy Longhorn Bear says they're going to re-air the concert special this Friday, so wow, uh, folks can actually hear it. Because yeah, I'm sure they got a lot of feedback from folks like me who are pissed that they ended that concert in the middle of his best song. What are you doing? Cut to the local. I don't give a shit about the local news. Some guy died. Someone got in a traffic accident. The weather's going to weather. Who gives a shit? Let me watch the piano man. Please? Playing this song. Come on. Oh, my God. Like, I, I've been lucky enough to see Billy Joel in person a couple of times. But I'm thinking, like, uh, the person who has never gotten to see Billy Joel. And this is like, this is the closest thing they're ever going to get to a Billy Joel concert. Right. And they, there's he's playing the piano, man. And the crowd's going nuts. And he's going nuts. And then, oh, right in the middle of the second verse. Welcome to CBS Austin. Here's your nightly news. Uh, a person died in a car crash on I-35 today. Dude, we'll go to the weather Scott here. Shuffler just won the Masters. It's going to be 82 degrees uh, and sunny today. And oh, let's check in on sports. Texas baseball didn't suck as bad today as they have the last couple of days. And here's your news. It's like Forget the piano, man. Bummer. Terrible, terrible. So good for CVS, at least, for trying to right their wrong and play that on Friday. 
Uh, oh my gosh. All right. Uh, Texas basketball here, Buck, as we're all yes, over the sir. place having some fun on a Tuesday morning. You know, we, we talked a lot about the three transfer portal additions for Texas basketball from the weekend. They brought in Tremont Mark from Arkansas, and they brought in a couple of players from Indiana State as well, Julian Larry and Jason Kent. So it was a really successful weekend for RT on the recruiting front, bringing in three solid pieces from the portal. And we talked yesterday about how we still did not know what the future held for Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell. Well, we found out yesterday afternoon that those guys' futures will not be here at the University of Texas. Yeah, Dylan they were Mitchell, to the show yesterday, and they're like, hey, we need to make a decision. These dudes are talking about us like we may be coming back. Surprise. Yeah, there you go. Dylan Mitchell has declared for the NBA draft, but has also entered the transfer portal. So what that means is he's going to try his hand – in the NBA's pre-draft process once again. He did that last year before ultimately deciding to return to college. He's going to try that again. Uh, if he does decide to come back to college, it will be at a different college because he's entered the portal. And then Tyrese Hunter has just entered the transfer portal. So uh, Hunter is not testing the NBA draft waters. He is just in the portal, and he will go play his college basketball somewhere else. Yeah, like next. Lehigh like Lehigh or Lafayette or Kutztown or something. Kutztown. Yeah, yeah. He needs to go ahead and go and see what he can get a little NIL deal at the local Mickey D's or whatever and just go ahead and try to get a little bit better against that kind of competition. You're relegating him to Division Two. Kutztown State, yes. Oh, my God. I mean, he's not that bad. He averaged 11 points a game last year in the Big 12. Somebody needs a point guard in the ACC. Somebody will call upon that okay. guy. Yeah, yeah. The ACC, yes. The Kutztown, Lafayette. Lehigh? Yeah. Jeez, the Mountain man. Hawks need him. Um, well, your thoughts. We could start with Tyrese Hunter then. You know, we – God, he's just incredibly frustrating. He was at Texas for a couple of years. Of course, he transferred in from Iowa State. And at times, he looked like a really good player and a guy who was super important for Texas basketball. And at times, he just made you want to pull your hair out and throw your remote at your television screen because – he just didn't show up. So your thoughts on uh, Tyrese Hunter deciding to leave the program? Not consistent enough. I, I think that he, he just doesn't – I didn't. I watched him over the last two years, and I thought there are times when he had that hunger in him when he was in, in certain games. But then there was a time where he was way too passive for a guy that needed to make things happen. He just didn't make enough things happen. And he didn't go out of his way to make those things happen. He just kind of went with the flow. If things are going bad, he just kind of went with it, you know, and hoping he could – do something magical to make himself come out of it. He never initiated very much to me. And for a, for a guard of his size, he has to be the initiator, the aggressor, and he just wasn't. I just I, I, You'd see it in flashes, but you'd see it in one game, and then you wouldn't see it for six games. And then you'd go for another game where he'd have a big game, and then you wouldn't see it for eight games. It just was not consistent enough with me for a guy of that size and that stature. He had to make things happen. He just didn't make it happen. No, you he know, and went, he never got, he never got, he just never got better. He was just yeah. the same dude as when he came in here. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I mean, he had that really solid freshman season at Iowa state. He helped lead the Cyclones to the sweet 16 as a double digit seed and averaged close to 10 points a game as a true frosh. And yeah, I felt like he was going to be a huge addition for at the time, Chris Beard and this Texas team, but he, he just, he barely got better. And, you know, it, and he, he wasn't big enough to become a, an elite defender. He just wasn't big enough. Yeah, I mean, he is a very good perimeter defender, but he is only six feet tall, so he right. did have some size limitations that did cost him when he was going up against bigger guards on the defensive end. But you know, more of my frustration with Tyrese Hunter happened on offense, right? Like defensively, no, he was no very doubt. good. He was yeah. one of Texas's best defenders these last two seasons. But yeah, offensively, I mean, just look at the Big 12 championship this year. He In the regular season finale, he goes for 30 against yes. Oklahoma, has maybe the best game of his career, and in the post-game press conference, he's like, it's March. Like, this is when I need to play my best basketball. Of course I'm playing my best basketball. It's the biggest time of the year. And then a couple of days later at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, he scores three points and goes 0 of 7 against K-State. And it's like, how, how is that the same guy right. who just put up 33 days ago? Like, wh it, why? Wasn't aggressive. it wasn't aggressive in that game enough to even do that, to, to attempt to do it. Right, and look at Texas's loss to Tennessee in the second round of the tournament, the real tournament. 
you know, he ended up with 13 points, but most of that came at the very end. Like for 37 minutes, Tyrese Hunter was a non-factor. He kept turning the ball over. He didn't score. He wasn't aggressive. He was a disaster in that game. And then at the end, he's like, he, he starts to play well and put it together. And that game, and really both of those examples were just microcosms of Tyrese Hunter's career, where at times, right. once again, he looked really good. He looked like he could be one of the better players in the conference. Forget just on the team, in the conference. But then he had so many moments and so many games where he just no-showed. And it's just infuriating to watch a guy with that much talent give you absolutely nothing as often as he did. Yeah, and, and and you know, for, for him, I think it's, you know, no nobody would have – I mean, I would have loved to have had him back, but it's not like I'm going to miss him. Yeah. And I mean, I've, with both of these guys, I'm not going to miss them. I'm not – you know, for, for Dylan Mitchell – I, I, yeah, I'll miss some of the dynamic dunks, but his offensive play, his ability to make things happen for himself, he just, there was just something missing. I mean, I thought that he was going to, when he decided to come back for another year, I thought that he would go off, come back, hone in his skills as an offensive player. You know, he, he took a couple jump shots early in the season. I'm like, this guy's got a little bit of offensive game. He's going to take this jumper. But then he was like scared to take it. Somebody said, no, dude, you just go and rebound and get some slam dunks. But your offensive game is still not there, and we don't want you shooting the ball. I mean, and then we saw him start to try to shoot the ball, and he was hitting the bottom of the net and stuff like that. He never gave his game an opportunity. He never pushed himself to give his game an opportunity. One-on-ones, he just wasn't good. Great athlete, that's fine, can jump out of the gym. That's always cool to see somebody dunk over the top of somebody. But to get his own offensive plays going, he just he never showed that to me. Yeah, for Dylan Mitchell. Yeah, he never was a skilled enough – shooter you know yeah. and and for dylan mitchell i mean out of those two guys dylan mitchell is the guy that I, that i would have rather had back um because i you know he did take a step from year one to year two like whereas tyree Hunter, it felt like just was kind of treading water right. during his texas career like dylan mitchell was definitely better this past season but so much of texas fans frustration comes from what we heard about Dylan Mitchell right. during the pre-draft process last year we heard that that guy was like knocking down threes left and right Yes. Like, oh, okay. Maybe he's worked on that. Like, that's great. Cause he didn't make any threes as a freshman. He was, uh, he didn't even t attempt a three as a freshman at Texas. Then all of a sudden the off season hits and he's been working on his three ball and he's been making them in front of NBA scouts. It's like, all right, like that will come back to Austin. And now we can rely on this guy to be a decent three point shooter for us. He didn't make a single three this year. He was 0 for 8. Not even by accident. Not even by accident. No, and he stopped shooting them, too. Like, he shot some early on, and then he just didn't make them, so he lost confidence. Or maybe the coaches are like, hey, dude, can you not? Uh, and he didn't make a single three in two years at Texas. So he's a freak athlete. There's no doubt about it. I'm going to miss him because of his rebounding ability and his defense sure. ability. And Texas just doesn't have a lot of depth in the front court right now. Like, they've got, they've got enough guards. I, I was curious, you know, after Jermon Mark and Julian Larry committed – over the weekend, I was wondering where Tyrese Hunter's minutes were going to come from because you've got those two transfers plus Trey Johnson, one of the top players in this high school class, plus Kendall Weaver. Like, of course, you need five guards that you feel good about, but like Tyrese Hunter's minutes might have gone down this coming season. For Dylan Mitchell, yeah, Texas does not have the depth in the front court. They don't have a lot of bigs right now at all. So he, to me, is the bigger loss. But he's not going to score any points for you. He's not going to get – he's not going to do anything if – on the offensive end, he just he doesn't. He's a a loose ball rebounder off the rim, jump over the top guy that can't get his shot off and and won't yeah. shoot his shot. Like he won't shoot it. He doesn't have enough confidence in what he's done in his offensive game. He just doesn't. Yeah. By the way, he can't do the one on one thing. He have to drive by you in order to to get it, and he doesn't do that. So he's an I, amazing athlete. He just doesn't have yeah. great feel for the game, no, no, especially on offense. Right. Yeah, and it's annoying because I watched. And I went to the orange-white scrimmage for basketball last year at Gregory Gym right before the start of the season, and Dylan Mitchell did have some offensive moves, and it did look like to me yes. that he had clearly tried to polish some things up on that end of the floor, and it just didn't It just didn't work. It just didn't work. So, uh, you know, he averaged 10 a game. He averaged eight rebounds a game, and the reason to believe that those numbers could have gone up at least a little bit next season – but I, I don't I don't blame him. Like I think he needs to go pro. I said it yesterday, so I won't get too deep into the woods. Well, I think he hurt himself by not going last year. I think he might have hurt himself by not going last year. And uh, yeah, I think if he comes back to college, it's not going to be at Texas. But if he goes somewhere else and has another year like he just had, yes. then he's got no chance to get looks from an NBA team. So 
This might be as hot as the iron's going to get for Dylan Mitchell, and it feels is like it's at all Big 12 anything over the last two years, or is he just like third team honorable mention kind of guy? Is that all he was? I don't know. He might have been all Big 12 defense or something, but I don't, he wasn't an all conference player. No chance. No chance. Wow. So, so, yeah, those two guys are both hitting the portal. Once again, Dylan Mitchell declared for the draft. So there's a chance uh, he decides to take his talents to the next level. But both Dylan Mitchell and Tyrese Hunter will not be a part of Texas basketball going forward. So, where it stands now, the Longhorns have nine players on scholarship. You can have up to 13 scholarship players in right. men's Division I college basketball. So, uh, Texas has some holes to fill. Even if both of those guys came back, Texas still would have been in the market for a few players in the portal. But now Texas has, once again, four spots to uh, fill up between now and the start of the season. So it's going to be a new roster next season once again. I mean, we talked about how much turnover the Longhorns had from the Elite Eight team to this past season. You're going to get just as much, if not more, turnover from this past season to this coming season. So Yeah, now you don't have a little shooting guard, a little gunning guard either. To right. score a bunch of points. You're going to have to get points somewhere. Well, you've lost six of your eight rotational players now, right? I mean, four of them you already knew were gone with Acemas, who you're talking about with the Sioux, with Cunningham, and with Intermural yep. Horton, as you called him yesterday. And now you lose Dylan Mitchell and Tyrese Hunter. So, I mean, you've got Kendall Weaver coming back. You've got Caden Shedrick coming back. Like, those are the guys who played significant minutes for you this past season who will be on this squad next year. Yeah, and I, I think Weaver will be a guy that will work at his offensive game. I know, too. There, were, there were times that we said, oh, no, don't shoot it, don't shoot it, and then he would make a jumper. I think he understands where his where his fault, some of his flaws are, and that's in his, his jump shot. I guarantee you that dude will shoot a million jumpers this summer to make himself better. He's just a natural when it comes to defense and aggression. He, that's just his game. He knows that's what he has to do in order to get on anybody's basketball team. He has to be the aggressor a great defender, great rebounder, a guy that will go to the free throw line. But he will work, I got to believe, at his offensive game, yeah. you know, at his jump shot. If you leave him open, he's going to he's gonna start hitting these jumpers. That's the hope, right? And he made some yeah. jumpers last year, but obviously that, that's the area of his game where he needs to improve the most. Sure. But I'm glad he's coming back. I mean, for him to do that at his age in his first year in the Big 12, like – absolutely. You know, RT had some portal misses last year. Zarek Onyema, Intermural Horton, those guys were portal misses, but he also had some good finds uh, as well. And Kendall Weaver looks like a really good find. Absolutely. So, yeah, if you asked me, like, hey, Weaver, Mitchell, Hunter, you get to pick one of those three to come back, I would have taken Weaver. Yes. No, that, that's true. I actually would have too. He would yeah. have been the guy I was like, yeah, that guy has room to improve and looks like he will improve. The other guys – I've seen him for two years. I don't see much improvement in either one of them. Yeah, and for Ty Tyrese Hunter should have stayed at Iowa State for his sake. Like, and he, yes. I don't, I don't know if you gave him truth serum. I, I have a hunch he would say that coming to Texas might not have been the best move for him. We'll see if he tries to go back to Iowa State. We'll see if Iowa State even wants him back. Uh, we'll see if he goes somewhere else. But there you go. So we'll see. Texas has a couple of players on campus this week taking visits for basketball. Maybe we get uh, some news in the not-too-distant future about another commitment out of the portal for Rodney Terry as he tries to fill up this roster in what's going to be a big year, too, for him on the 40 acres. Love it. All right, we'll take your thoughts. The Dakota text line, 512-222-9328. Your thoughts on the news with Texas basketball. Three players in, two players out over the last three days. It's been a busy couple of days for Rodney Terry and the Texas coaching staff. We want to hear from you people this morning. Uh, before we get into some of the other topics, what else do we have? Oh, C.D. Lamb holding out in Dallas. We've oh, got yeah. some Rangers and Astros to get into. Um, a interesting move by David Pierce in advance of tonight's Texas baseball game. All of that and more coming up. But first, some love to some sponsors. Our good friends over at Clean Cause. Their drinks are organic, sparkling yerba bodies. And flavors like cherry lime and orange ginger that'll get your day going with 160 milligrams of better caffeine. And it won't cause that crash of jitters like coffee and some of these crazy energy drinks that are out there. And every sip of uh, clean cause drinks make a difference in the fight against addiction, BK. You'll find it at 7-Elevens, H-E-Bs, Whole Foods, and hundreds of other stores around the Austin area. Love the folks at Clean Cause. 50% of their profits go to those that have addiction problems, whether it's alcohol or drug addictions. Love the cause 
and I love the drink. As a matter of fact, you'll see it all around. Of course, my home, my wife loves the clean cause drinks and you will too. As I said, they're everywhere. I mean, you know, we, we, we have some sponsors that have drinks that are just getting into places. Clean cause drinks have been here for years all over the state of Texas. And as I said, there are hundreds of stores that carry clean cause, but they've got that great purpose. And that's to get 50% of their profits back to drug and alcohol addiction. Absolutely. Yep. Cleancause.com for more information. Shout out to them and also shout out to our great friends at Covert B Cave. My old man texted me this morning. He's like, I'm going to reach out to Dan. There you go. Going to get a new work truck. They can get you a work truck. Yes, they can. They can get you a personal truck. They can get you a personal car. They can get you an SUV. Whatever you want. They've got it all out there at Covert B Cave. New or pre owned. Something for you, something for wifey. Something That's right, the, you know, it doesn't matter. They've got so much to choose from out there. Acres, 42 acres there. 42 acres of cars, trucks, and SUVs. Of course, they've got seven different new brands as well. The Caddies, the Buicks, GMCs, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Chrysler. Uh, the service is second to none, too. I mean, Dan Covert, Dan Covert will give anybody his cell phone number. Yes, uh, he, he absolutely. Wants, he wants to wheel and deal. He wants to get you in a new car. It's not just, oh, I'm going to get my minions to do this for me. No, that dude wants to work. Dan wants to work. 512-993-7628. That is Dan Covert's personal cell number. And he asked me to give that to you people. So that's the number that Bucky and I call when we're trying to get a hold of Dan. He wants you to call him as well. And believe me, uh, he'll answer your calls. If yeah. you're buying a car and SUV, he's going to answer yours. Yeah, he doesn't answer us. Shit. <laughs> Those guys? <laughs> like, what do they yeah, want? Just, what does yeah. it they want? Uh, these guys, again, they've called me four times this week. Oh, man. But love Covert BK. CovertBK.com is the website. You can check out their weekly specials there. The people there, Dan, Stacy, Mike, Jerome, the whole squad, they're going to treat you like family. They treat us like family. They'll do the same for you. And, Buck, what do they say about those Covert deals? Nobody beats a covert deal. Not now, not ever. Not ever. Shout out to Covert B Cave. And also, we'll let you hear from our man Tom McKay. He's been texting in a little bit this morning about a word from AV Consultations. Hi, this is Tom McKay with Audiovisual Consultations. Today's home electronics can be a bit daunting. My company has spent the last 36 years making sure they are not. For those of you who have not experienced our services yet, we'd like to invite you to give us a try for all your home electronics needs. We carry all the major brands of televisions and stereo equipment at prices you can't find in stores. And we come to you. There's no need to leave your home to find great pricing and incomparable service. No traffic, inexperienced sales geeks, or pushy showroom tactics. We believe in having some fun and dreaming big. Do you have a dream for your home entertainment? Let us know. We can make it come true. And we are always there to help after the job is done. We cultivate clients for a lifetime by treating everyone like their family. No, not those family members. I'm talking about the ones you actually like. So relax, hug your kids, make love to your wife, and smile. Then, when you have a moment, give us a call at 255-8678. It's 512-255-8678 or online at avconsultations.com. Appreciate it, Tom. And folks, our good friends over at Relax the Bag, go check out their zero gravity recliners now. And they've got great sales. These monthly sales on clearance items just for you. Everything that you need, pillows, mattresses, chairs, sofas, the whole works, especially those uh, Tempur-Pedic mattresses, folks. Get, go check those out. Get yourself a great night's sleep, unlike I got last night, as a matter of fact. But folks, they've got two great locations at the, of course, the Hill Country Gallery across from Whole Foods. And in Austin, at the Gateway Shopping Center across from the Container Store, live pain-free like the Buck sitting in his chair right now at Relax the Back. All right. I need your help, Buck, and I need help from the people. Okay. You know, we started off the show talking about you get my... mine Because the people can't really help you. You ask for their help, but you need to get my help. I'm like the Wizard of Oz. I'm the guy behind the curtain. Yes. I'm That's that right. I'm now known as the Wizard. Didn't that guy end up being like two inches tall? No, no, he was just an old, he was an old dude, by the way. He's an old gray haired kind of semi bald dude. Yes. Yeah, that was, that was an unexpected twist. A little round shouldered. That was an unexpected twist at the end of that movie. Really? You weren't, you were expecting something bigger and better when it got to the Emerald City? I don't know, man. I like, I don't, I'm sure I've watched that whole movie from start to finish, but I'm not sure that I've watched that whole movie from start to finish. I've probably seen that more than any other movie that I've ever seen in my life, any other show that I've ever seen in my life. 
Really? Besides Lassie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I've seen The Wizard of Oz more than any other any other movie type of, of picture ever. Oh, yeah. Who the hell uh, is Lassie? Hold on. Who's Lassie? Lassie's the dog. The collie. No. That, used to, that was, used to be a series with Timmy. June Lockhart was the mom. Lassie used to always have to find Timmy would fall in the well somewhere. And Lassie would come barking up to the, oh, 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 oh. Timmy's in the well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was a talking dog. No, the dog was unbelievable. Lassie was a classic. Oh, man. Yes. I'm old enough to have known, you know, people are listening going, oh, my God, this dude's old. He's talking about June Lockhart as Timmy's mom. It was June Lockhart. I used to I used to go watch movies, shows called Rin 1010. That was a German shepherd that was very similar to Lassie. I mean, I, I had them all. I was I used to watch all of that stuff. Green Acres, mm. all these shows that used to come on. I was there. Saturday mornings was spent. They didn't have these great cartoons that they have today or they don't even have cartoons. I don't know what these things are robots and autobots and all this shit cars turning into galaxies and all this they, they didn't have that stuff back then what they, had, hey, hey, hey. they had the cosby kids you yeah know? good job now way to go talk. way to go your generation what what's right i love that jello pudding yeah way to uh support bill cosby over all those years <laughs> you, you got that one right guys <laughs> where does is Wizard of Oz one of your favorite movies ever, or is it just the one that you've seen the most? Uh, it was one of my favorites. You know, it was once a year, it would come on Sunday nights, and you had to go to school on Mondays, and you'd never sleep through the night because of the flying monkeys and stuff like that. They had some weird stuff in there that would, when the like when the witch would melt at the end, when they threw water on her, she started to melt. Mm. I mean, I, I, that horrified me. Couldn't sleep at night. But it was once a year. It would used to come on just once a year, and it yeah. was a Sunday that it would come on before you had to go to school on that Monday. But uh, yeah, I watched and I didn't miss it, dude. I, that had to be 10 straight years that I would never, I knew it was coming on when it was coming on that night. And I didn't expect to sleep because I had one eye open. That witch reminds you think Madonna looked bad. Oh. This is, this is a spinoff from Madonna. I got to believe I checked everything. I look under the beds. I check in the closets for that witch. You're being, you know? you're being disrespectful to the witch by saying she looks like Madonna. Yeah, really. You know that. Let me pull up a picture here. See if we can give you a nightmare tonight. That. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that right there. That's a looker right there now. That's a neighbor. That's what you call your neighbor. Right there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you she remember? made that obnoxious noise when she was getting oh. melted, too. Oh, just yeah. like wailing oh, was... and screaming. You did remember that part, didn't you? Yeah, it's like, you know, like literally when I heard that. That was enough. Yeah, this is what I wanted to yell from the crowd. Shut up, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching The Wizard of Oz play, and I'm hearing that witch yell and cry and moan. It's like, all right, simmer down. You're, you're uh, dying. More than anything, the flying monkeys are what scared me. Mm. The flying monkeys start flying down, and they picked up the scarecrow and tore all the stuff out of them and stuff. Yeah. No, that, that, stuff, that stuff as a kid horrified me. That would even scare a kid today. A kid would look at that and go, that's what you're afraid of? Mm -hmm. Really? Well, that's that's not what I need help with, but I'm glad we got into that. All right. I, what, do you, uh, what do you need some you know, help with? We started the show talking about my blood drawing from yesterday. Oh, yeah. You're the guy. Believe me, the witch would scare the shit out of you. You're the one that passes out when they take your blood. I didn't pass out. I was getting a little lightheaded. Didn't pass out. Oh, good. I don't have a fear of needles or anything like that, but I've gotten soft in my old age. I need to be hard again, Buck. Take a fall or two. How do I get hard again? That's that's my issue. Like I'm I'm getting softer now, and I'm squeamish now. Like I used to be able to just like stare at blood. I used to be able to watch people get injured. Like anything, nothing ever bothered me. I never got squeamish. And now even having conversations about blood like makes me cringe a little bit. I don't make know what the hell happened to me. Make some of the make yourself watch some of these UFC fights where they're dislocating bones and stuff right there in the ring or they're bleeding all over. You need to watch one of those bouts. I watch, I yeah, UFC doesn't make me squeamish. Like I watch UFC all the time. I watched UFC 300 on Saturday and it was an amazing card. Holy crap. That so stuff that, is, I can't watch that. Really? No, I can't watch. I can't watch when bones get ready to snap and th I, I, that doesn't, that doesn't work for me. Yeah. I don't know. They're not I, my bones snapping or me falling face first. I don't like to see I don't like to see dislocations from people. You know, I, I can't 
I can't watch guys tap out because their their lungs are coming out of the side of their necks. Now, no, I, I don't. So that's good. not why I watch. I don't watch it hoping to see some guy's bone sticking out of his leg or some guy's lung sticking out of his neck. If that happened, he'd be dead. Um, that's not why I tune in. But now, nah, even like the gruesome injuries, like I, I'll watch them. That's fine. It doesn't turn me off of the sport. But I don't know what it is. Like people start telling me stories about them. You know, start getting cut open and bleeding or something like, ah, I, you know, I cut my hand on a knife in the kitchen the other day and I'm like, I get squeamish now. It's so annoying. Why are you so happened? soft, man? Come on. I don't know. Man. I don't know like I, I've never been like this. Yeah. It's that needle thing. I'm telling you that brings you back down to earth. BK, when you start giving blood, because once you give it, they want more, you know, they want more. They're going to tell you you're anemic or there's something going on because mm -hmm. it's never Oh, you're just right. It's either you're too high, you're too low. Hey, come back in two weeks. We'll, we need to get some more blood from you. That's what they do. I don't know where they're storing this blood. I hope they're putting it to good use because my stuff is good stuff. But they've got they've got quart loads of my blood somewhere stored up. I don't know what they do with it. Do they pour it out or do they just save it? What, what do they do with it? If they tell you to come back, I've been going back for months now, and they've got at least a couple gallons of my blood. What do you think they do with that stuff? Just pour it down the toilet? Vampires, they, yeah. Who's give, using it? It's blood. Give it to vampires, maybe. I don't know. It's like they test it, but once it's tested, where does it go? Yeah, it sometimes it feels like the vampires are the one taking a bite out of your when they're trying to get that deal in your vein. Yeah, might as well have a vampire bite your wrist. Although down in Dripping Springs, I got some great, I got some great folks down there that that take blood down there. They do a great job. Never had a complaint there, BK. I just stick my arm out there. I look right in that tube and see it, see it fill up with that nice red blood. And then they take one off, they tap and go again. I'm like, fill it up. Get, get yourself two of those. Mm. Let's go. Get yourself a quart bottle in, in here and let's go. See, even you telling that story right now is making me feel uncomfortable. And I, I still think I'm a little like light and wheezy from getting yesterday, blood drawn yesterday. Getting blood? Yeah. My body, is, it? it hasn't recovered yet, man. Like, I was I was dead tired by like seven o'clock last night. I had like forced myself to stay up till ten to get some stuff done. I was like, I, I can't be up any longer. Have yourself a good stay. Go to go to Jack Allen's, have a good meal, stay away from Taco Bell after an event like that. Go get a good go get yourself a lot of water and 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 a good meal. Don't don't eat half ass after giving up blood. Everyone's texting in that I need Viagra or Blue Chew to get hard again. That's not the type of hardness I'm talking Blue about. Chew. Uh, the boy think, hard is the Blue Chew king. Where is that dude at? I need that back. I need that stuff. The Blue Chew. Blue Chew was supposed to be good. Hard was supposed to come through for me, but he hoarded him when he got oh, there. He stole it for himself. Huh? He promised yeah, that he was going to give you yeah. something. Dude was keeping it for himself. Didn't um, like. It. Share. Come on, man. That's good. You, you want uh, the person advertising the product actually using the product. So. No, I want him giving it out to the public. That's what uh, I want. Now you wanted him to give it out to you. That's really Absolutely. what you wanted. Come on, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you got to uh, get over that because they're coming back for more. Because when you get the report back, it's going to be something going on. They yeah. have to have something going on. Always. Yeah. They, they got to get you back there. You know what I'm saying? So sad. I think a big part of it is like, I just don't get injured that much anymore. Like, I don't know. When I was like growing up playing sports, I would get hurt. I would get cut. I would bleed. I would see that stuff all the time. Uh, and now it just it doesn't happen as much. Like I try to prevent myself from getting in those situations. So now when they do happen, I, I just, they hurt more. They feel worse. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Thanks for the advice, everyone. Blue Chew and Viagra. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, that's just what the advice you were looking for. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. Did you uh, did you watch any of the WNBA draft last I night? I watched. I watched the first three picks, did and then I was your, done. Did you see your girl? I did. Kim Mulkey. Of course you did. Look at that. Look at that. Dude, she looks now, now put terrifying. Her, put her in Madonna. Who's scarier? You're not going to tell me she's scarier than Madonna. There's no chance. This is not a great picture of uh, your no, woman crush. No, it's not. It's not a great picture, but you know what? That's okay right there. That I mean, I, I'd prefer the Wicked Witch of the West to Kim Mulkey. What? Based on the pictures that we've shown. Yeah. She looks I mean, a little jaundiced. She looks a little slight, slightly. She doesn't look quite as green as the Wicked Witch, but she's a little yellow. That's yeah. not blonde. That's yellow, her hair right now. Right. Yeah, the, the, the lighting in that shot didn't do her much favor. And that makeup is not working for her either. 
She looks very friendly there, by the way. Friendly. Yes. She's the wicked witch of the South. That's what she oh, is. Come on, man. Yeah. What about her is friendly in this picture? That, look at that smile. That's genuine smile right there. Yeah. Well, Angel Reese got drafted in the top 10 last night. She gave Angel a nice hug after the draft pick, which was good to see. Clutch she didn't grab her by the hair like she did Caitlin Clark. She didn't like try to choke her out. No, uh, it was a pretty hard and aggressive hug. And she just kept like hitting her back like 50 oh. times. It's like, what are we doing here? But no, we didn't get any of this. Bang. Get over here. <laughs> Do you work for the Washington Post? I have to know. <laughs> I have to know. So there's your girl. Congrats to Caitlin Clark, the number one pick of the WNBA draft last night. Uh, big moment for I'm that. Trying to see, will, this, will this get me to watch WNBA games more than a quarter of a game? Because I've never seen more than a quarter of a WNBA basketball game. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say this, this, the, the names, you know, the young lady, uh, you know, from LSU and also from South Carolina and uh, Caitlin Clark are going to get me to watch. I'm going to view. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to no, say, two no, games. you're not. You don't oh. have to lie to the people. All right. It's, you know, I Me get Chris it. Bennett are gonna, Chris Ben and I are going to zoom together and watch a full WNBA game. We're yeah. going to watch the Chicago, uh, Surefires and the nope. Mississippi uh, Aprons get in there. I'm, we're going to watch a game. <laughs> oh, I was about to say that Misogynistic Monday was yesterday, but apparently it has carried over to Tuesday. Yes. I thought we were in the middle of a Title IX Tuesday program, but apparently no. that is not the case. No. Uh, the Mississippi Aprons. Yeah, I, don't I mean, think. Isn't that, what's, the name of, what's the name of the teams? I can't. Uh, L.A. Sparks is the only one I can think and I think there's a fire out there somewhere in there. Is it called Fire Chicago Fire? No, they're now the Chicago Sky. The team Caitlin Clark was drafted by was the Indiana Fever. And the ba Vegas, who's the Aces? Las Vegas. Okay, there you go. I got they, the they, Aces. They've won back to back championships. They're really good. Um, you've got the New York Liberty. You've got okay. my my squad, the Dallas Wings. Is Michael Cooper still coaching any of these teams? You're way above my pay grade now. I, Michael I, Cooper used to be, remember the, the great defender for the L.A. Lakers? Yeah, Michael oh, Cooper. of course I remember Michael Cooper. I think Michael Cooper won on. two championships coaching WNBA. Okay, maybe he did. I don't know. Where? where? Dude, 68. He's, he's, that dude, I think Michael Cooper's got to be 67, 68. He's as old as I am, that I, dude. I know one WNBA coach, and that's Becky Hammond. Because she was a stud and coached on the San Antonio Spurs under Pop for a couple of years, so she's didn't awesome. Lam didn't Lambeer coach at one time? I don't know. I Come on, you to know your WNBA history. Wait, you couldn't name a single team. Oh, uh, you got the Sparks. You couldn't name two teams. I know. I know the teams. The Liberty. That's got to be New York. I already said that. Okay. Um, the Liberty Bells. That's not a team from Philadelphia, right? No, no, we can't accept that, Alex Trebek. <laughs> no, no, they have fourteen teams. Uh, or tw I don't even know. They're Great adding. Teams they have. They're Great. adding more teams. They're playing forty games this year, and most of Caitlin Clark's games will be nationally televised. I think like thirty-six of her forty games will be on TV. So she should have taken that deal with the with the par three basketball teams. <laughs> the big three. Yeah. With Ice Cube? Of yeah, course, you're taking that five mil. So think of that, right? So Caitlin Clark was offered $5 million to be a part of Ice Cube's big three league, a three-on-three yes. league. Uh, she was also offered $10 million by Barstool to, I don't know, be on their intramural team, whatever the hell that is. Maybe IT Horton can go play on that now that his <laughs> college career is done. <laughs> so think of that money, right? $5 million from Cube. $10 million yes. from Barstool, and this is Caitlin Clark's rookie contract. She's going to make $76,000 as a rookie in the WNBA. And then, oh, look at that nice raise she gets from year one to year two. How about a nice $1,500 pay bump from 2024 to 2025 for Caitlin Clark? I'm taking my skills to the par three tournament. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, look, the good news for her, she's going to make a crap ton of money in endorsement deals. Oh, she already sure. has. And that's only going to continue as uh, she becomes a professional athlete. But uh, good for her 
Because, I, I mean, looking at those offers that she had, millions of dollars from other leagues where she'd probably have to play less and work less. Let me ask you this. Does she – I mean, with the summer games coming up for basketball, for women's basketball, she's got to be a part of that to make all kinds of cash for the summer game. This is her opportunity to really cash in, I would think, for the Olympics coming up in Paris, right? Uh, I don't know what the – women's basketball team. Is well, isn't that when the play. WNBA plays in the summertime? Yeah. Yeah. Their season starts in May. So sorry, sorry to my team. I'm going to go play for the Olympic squad. And I'm going to cash in on some of this Olympic money for, for Paris. Sorry. I'm going to gay Paris. I'm not playing around with the aces or the quarters or the aprons. Uh-uh. Not, not me. I'm making that money. You called it the gay Paris. I mean, yeah, I'm going to oh gay Paris, right. To play. This is the time to make your money. The Olympics. Why is it gay? They, they just they have a lot of gay people over there. No, they, that's just a saying. Gay Perry. You know, everybody's happy. I guess. You know, raise up the white flag. We surrender the whole works. <laughs> okay, never heard that one. Yeah, I don't know. Like the men's USA national team was announced yesterday, and it's like a bunch of NBA stars. But of course, the Olympics happen after the NBA season is over. So, you know, guys will finish up the playoffs. Sure. Those who are in the playoffs, and then. After that, they'll go over uh, to gay Paris to be a part of the Olympics. I don't know how it works for the women's team. Oh, she's going to miss out on her 76 grand by going to – come on, Kayla, let's go. Grand. And look, people are like, how is she only making that? Well, there's no money in the WNBA. It's a subsidized league. The NBA pays for the WNBA to exist. That league does not make money. Maybe it will now. Right. Like that's the hope for women's basketball. Like there's so much popularity surrounding that sport right now after this NCAA tournament. And my God, the women's games had more viewers than the men's games. So the hope is that all the college success that the sport just had will translate into professional success. So you need Kim Mulkey to get into that. She needs to go coach the pros. Yeah. If that, if that happens, then all right, these contracts are going to look a little bigger, but it's crazy that, uh, yeah, the best, College basketball scorer of all time, women's or men's, is making five figures this year. No, they that that's I got to believe that she's going to do something w- with the women's Olympic team. I don't know. She'll get it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for endorsements for for the Olympic Games. You know, we're about to be inundated with that stuff in Paris as oh, yeah. we get closer. Probably when we get to May, I think it's going to be out of this world going to Paris for the Olympics, you know, for the summer games. Because track and field, the ladies for track and field make – and gymnastics, you know they just make all kinds of coin. Everyone pretends to care about the Olympics. Huh? We're getting closer to that time. I care. I care yeah. about the summer games. But then again, I care more about the winter games because the figure skating is what's very important to me. I, I always root for this country, so I'll, I'll care. And that's like the only sports that are on in the summer outside of baseball. So I'll be tuned in, but – I always love how much people pretend to care about the Olympics. I know I've told you this before. Like you go ask anybody who says they love the Olympics to name like five non-basketball players on the U.S. Olympic team. And they, they just can't. It's like, I'm giving you any sport. Just name me five. Go ahead. And it's like, that, it's fine. You just don't lie and tell everyone that you really care about the Olympics because you don't. I don't know why I'm so on that. So Bob Hayes, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's he's still – He's still around. He's not with us. No, he's not participating anymore. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be uh, replacing C.D. Lamb on the Cowboys, too, during C.D.'s holdout right now. God, that is a joke. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, before we do that, though, let's give some more shout-outs to some more of our great sponsors, Buck. Yeah, how about our good friends at Leaf? Leaf Landscape and yes. Supply Company with their two locations. I know it is now time for me to go over Leaf because I've got to get some fertilizer in, BK. I've got to get some of the plants that I have put in and watered in. And hopefully, well, this weekend, you're going to get a little bit of rain. So I got to get that stuff put in. You got to get that. You got to get your fertilizers in here before the the summer heat starts to come. And plus, we still got some rainy, some rainy days to get it in. But for my roses, I just put some nice spray on my roses, you know, some some feed. But leaf, they've got it at both locations, uh, north and south. They've got the fertilizer that you need to keep those roses healthy. And then you don't get those little brown spots on the leaves of, of your roses. And this is a time to start to get ready to put it in just before the heat starts to come. You water it in there and you get big, beautiful, healthy roses. My rose garden looks fantastic. My wife and I really have taken care of our roses. And I do that. I'm a, I'm a rose guy. You know, I, I, I pick up uh, the roses from leaf uh, at, at both their locations and 
I, I mean, I love what they do. And as I said, if if you're not interested in being a gardener yourself and want to get that stuff done or you're too busy, because some people are just too busy to get out in the yard and do all that stuff. Some people just don't want to do that shit. They don't want to go out. There's too humid, too windy, too cold, too hot or whatever. I like getting outside. I like being in the garden. And I love I'm a flower guy. I, I, I've just started to be a vegetable guy. But generally, I love flower gardens. I love to see different types of flowers and how they how they react to different types of climates. And yes, I, I spend a lot of money on trying to make things grow in the state of Texas, which it's hard to do, but you can grow roses in the state of Texas. Obviously, you know, the yellow rose, of course, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, there, there are certain parts of Texas that will grow incredible roses. You can get that done here, but go to leaf, talk to them about what you need to do. Talk to them, get their professional contractors. If you don't want to do the landscaping, have a professional come out to your home, check it out and help you out. But if you want to do it yourself, find the experts at both leaf locations to get it done for you. They will get it done. Leaf Landscaping and Supply Company. Love the folks there. Absolutely. And make sure you tell them that uh, you heard about them yes, on indeed. Texas Sports Unfiltered. They're going to give you a little bit of a discount. Absolutely. When, you, when you're ready to check out. Shout out to Leaf Landscape Supply. And also a shout out to Olipop. Yeah, man. Maybe I need some Olipop. Maybe that will get my equilibrium back today. That's yeah, some problem. of the juices they took out, put the juices right back in there, buddy. Yeah, maybe uh, some cherry cola Olipop can replace the blood that I lost from that needle yesterday. Maybe that works. Olipop is fantastic. It is mm. a total game changer, and it got me back into soda. I swore off soda years ago because of how bad it was for me. You guys know that I eat like shit. Well, I couldn't eat and drink like shit. I had to make a sacrifice. So I told myself, all right, no more soda. That way I can eat all the fast food that I want 24-7, 365, and not feel too terrible about myself. But I didn't give up soda because I didn't like the taste. I gave up soda because of what was in the soda. Well, now Olipop, it's the best of both worlds. It tastes like soda, but the ingredients in there are actually good for you. Hardly any sugar, hardly any calories. They've got nine grams of fiber in every can, and inside every can of Olipop, there are ingredients that help my digestive health. It'll help your digestive health as well. Pick up some Olipop wherever you buy your groceries. You don't have to go to some random health store to get this stuff. Just go to HEB, go to Walmart, go to Target, go to Whole Foods, go to Costco, wherever you go. You can buy the individual cans. They've got the four packs and at Costco, they've got the eight packs as well. Or you can go online to drinkolipop.com and get you some there. Use the discount code TEXAS20 to get a nice discount on your first online purchase from drinkolipop.com. It is Olipop, Buck, a new kind of soda. Yeah, and our good friends over at Woods Comfort Systems, it's nice and cool in my house today. It was humid yesterday, as a matter of fact, and, a, and it is going to start to get humid, and you want to make sure that your air conditioning system is working to perfection. You don't want to go and all of a sudden have everything going really nice, and all of a sudden, Smoke starts coming out of that thing. There's all kinds of stuff from you not cleaning the filters. Which Comfort Systems has everything that you need. They have the right folks to come out and make sure that everything is working properly. I've got a contract with Woods Comfort Systems. They come out once a year. That's all I need. Yep. And then they put it on me. Here's the filter that you need, Mr. Godbolt. Don't start going and bringing 75 different filters back. Here's exactly what you need. Or we'll bring the filter ourselves so you don't have to screw up anything. I love the folks over there. And those guys do a fantastic job over almost 70 years of service. And now they do plumbing. It's yeah, not just it's not just air conditioning and heating. They also do plumbing. And if, if they're as good as they are in what they do with the heating and, and air conditioning, they're going to be as good or better with plumbing. Believe me. For sure. 512-842-5066 or go to their website, woodscomfortsystems.com. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on Texas Sports Unfiltered. It's Woods Comfort systems all right buck let's talk some cowboys football shall we yes sir shifty adam Schefter broke this story yesterday dallas cowboys wide receiver cd lamb is not expected to attend the start of the dallas cowboys voluntary off-season program while he awaits a new contract so cd lamb entering the fifth and final year of his rookie deal he's in that option year he's set to make just over 17 million dollars in this coming nfl season but he is looking for a new deal and he is not showing up right now and he might not show up until he gets a new contract any surprise on this and do you think the cowboys should and do you think the cowboys ultimately will 
give CD a long-term deal this offseason? Yeah, I think they will. I think they'll they'll get that done before. You know, I think he'll be back in, in a matter of uh, a time. I don't think he's going to miss the whole offseason with this. I think they, those, as I said, between him and Micah Parsons, they're going to get that deal done. They're going to have to do something with Dak Prescott's, but they can't afford to have C.D. Lamb take a step back. He was magnificent last year. I mean, he made he made all the catches. He did everything he had to, despite his family getting involved in his business. That guy himself, when he was on the field, there were no there was nobody better at wide receiver. I thought last year in the NFL than C.D. Lamb. So yeah. you have to get that deal done. You can't even play around with that. That's one that you have to get done. Micah Parsons is one that you have to get done. You're going to have to do something with Dak Prescott, but C.D. Lamb's not going to sit out much longer. He'll be, uh, and and if he does, who cares? See, that, that deal will be done before the summer, before they go back to camp. Yeah, this was the least surprising headline I read all day yesterday, sure. right? I mean, it makes no sense for C.D. Lamb to show up to voluntary workouts on his current contract. Um, he's going to get paid. He has earned a new contract as well, sure. and the Cowboys absolutely should give C.D. Lamb a new contract. I mean, he set team records in receptions and receiving yards last season. He may have been the best receiver in the entire league I last he was season. Last year, yeah. And, yeah, he's a huge part of the Dallas Cowboys offense, and he's a huge part of why Dak Prescott was the runner-up for MVP. So do what you got to do to make sure that that guy is a part of things this year. As dumb as the Cowboys are, and we've spent all offseason talking about how dumb they are, uh, they're not that dumb. They're not going no. to not let C.D. Lamb play this coming season. Uh, yeah, he's first seeing of Michael Parsons. It's like, how much do you want? We'll get it to you. Yeah. Don't worry. We're doing all these other things, but you know we're going to take care of you. I mean, there shouldn't be any question about those two players. Yep. You know, yeah. Despite what their family does, despite everything, those guys are, are, are the, the cornerstones to what they do offensively and defensively, and they got to get it done. I agree. And the, the Eagles, they got a deal done with Devontae Smith yesterday. They gave him a three-year, $75 million extension on top of his rookie contract. So uh, that's where Philadelphia's front office is really good, and that's where the Cowboys' front office has been really bad in recent years. The Eagles, they pay their guys early because once right. you pay somebody, it kind of resets the market. So now C.D. Lamb looks at what Devontae Smith just got, and he's like, well, I'm better than him, so I need at least that. Like you better give me more than that. So the Eagles are smart. Like they make sure they get their deals done. And they've done this a lot under their GM, Howie Roseman. And then other teams just kind of have to follow suit. So the price tag was already going to be sky high for the Cowboys to get something done with CD. I think it just got even higher because of what the Eagles did. And now there are a few other receivers that could be up for extensions. Your guy in Minnesota, Justin Jefferson, another they'll one of the best that receivers. That's another one they'll get done. Yeah, he missed uh, day one of voluntary OTAs for Minnesota. He's going into uh, the last year of his rookie contract. So uh, that one's out there. Uh, Jamar Chase could get paid in Cincinnati this offseason. There are a few other wide receivers, too, that are in line for big money deals. If you're Dallas, you don't want to wait that long because the longer you wait, the more you're going to have to pay. We learned that with that. Yeah, you're talking about Hall of Fame. We're talking about Hall of Fame receivers. Yeah, you know? yeah, these guys are awesome. They're, they're they should get paid, and receivers are really important because there's more passing in today's NFL than there's ever been. So I think all of these teams are ultimately going to pay those guys. But if you're Dallas, I think there's you want CD Lamb back in camp number one, but number two, you you want to. Save as much money as you possibly can, and that. Yeah, on a personal early. note, I just think it's 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 nice when you know, like you said, Philadelphia gets it done. You know, they got AJ Brown done. They got that. They got those deals done with their players, and you don't hear very much bitching from guys' families about their quarterback. You know what I mean? They're not jumping on Jalen Hurts. I know it's he's a couple years younger, obviously, than Dak Prescott in this league, but they're not bitching about that dude. And he That's didn't have a great year. I mean, that, I mean, yeah, he was in the Super Bowl the year before, but. Do you, do you hear that their families talking about that guy? Like, let's not pay him. We need another quarterback. They're not bitching about that guy. And they're getting, they're getting paid. I don't know if the families are, but the fans certainly are. I mean, J Jalen Hurts is, you know, he had a slightly disappointing season this past year. As oh, did yeah, the, I mean, the fans, yeah, the fans are not going to be satisfied unless you win a Super Bowl. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen any Eagles players, family no. post or tweet, but also those things don't make the news like the Cowboys do. So maybe it did happen. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, the Eagles, look, they've been a better, they've won a Super Bowl within the last five years. The Cowboys haven't come close right. to winning a Super Bowl. And the Eagles have been to two Super Bowls in the past five years, and the Cowboys haven't been to one since the mid-90s. So yeah, I mean, historically, the Cowboys are a much better franchise, but it pains me to say that Philadelphia has been much more 
organized and way better run than Dallas has over the last decade. And they pay no their contact. people. You're right. They pay them. They get them paid, get that done, get them in camp and get them going. You're right. Yeah. That's one of the things that they do right that uh, the Cowboys don't. And it's very, very frustrating. So they'll get the CD Lamb deal done. Micah Parsons, once again, he could get a big money deal. Now he's got an extra year. So CD Lamb's entering the final year of his rookie deal. Micah Parsons still has two years left, but the Cowboys can pay Micah Parsons. Once again, he did skip uh, day one of voluntary OTA. So that's two long term contracts that I think Dallas wants to get done and hopefully will get done before this coming season gets rolling. Yeah, I mean, those two players know they got the Cowboys where they want them. Sure. No, that's not where they want them. And they're just good. They're just good players. Yeah, I think it's, it's what you do. And those guys play very important positions. Uh, you know, you, you pay guys at those spots. Uh, you know, the quarterback's the most important position on the field. And to me, the second most important position is the guy who can sack the quarterback. Right. right? And that's, okay, that's edge. That's what Micah Parsons does better than just about anybody in the world right now. And you also have to have good receivers. So, yeah, those are two very important players, two very important positions, two high-value spots in the NFL nowadays. And, uh, yeah, they have the positions of power in these negotiations right now. So, We'll see uh, when they get done. And the but, fans uh, want that. The fans want that. The fans aren't saying, no, don't pay this guy. Don't pay that guy. Well, yeah. The only one they bitch about is the damn quarterback. But that's that's been from the beginning of football. That's that the good. guy they're always going to bitch about. Yeah, the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, hell, Cowboys fans were booing Troy Aikman at the end of his career. Right. It's, like, it's been two years since he won a Super Bowl for us. Get the hell out of town, you know? So that's, that's how it goes. Heavy is the head that wears the star is what yeah. I always say. And yeah, I mean, the Cowboys have had such a disastrous offseason. They can't quadruple down on it by saying, oh, we don't need CD Lamb. We don't need oh, no. Michael Parsons. Oh, no, they can't do that now. They can't. They can't. Once again, they're so stupid, but they're not that stupid. No, right? they're, they're not going to do that. Yeah. yeah they yeah, are yeah. not. They are not going to do that. Will they yeah. draft a quarterback in this draft in the second round, though? No. No. You think, you think they will? I think there's a possibility, depending on who's sitting around there. They don't draft quarterbacks when they need to draft a quarterback. There's no way they're drafting one when they don't need one, right? They take a shot on a guy like Bo Nix if he's in that second round, which he probably will be. No, that's where Jonathan Brooks is going. 56 overall to the Cowboys. I'm seeing like every mock draft I look at has Jay Brooks going there. That would be awesome. But yep. if there's a quarterback sitting around there out of those – those laggers that are lagging behind like Bo Nix and them because the rest of them are gone. Those other first four or five, even maybe six, you're going to go, that guy is at a first round draft pick. Yeah. When those quarterbacks go, they are going to tumble and fall. JJ McCarthy is going to go somewhere early. Sure. I think McCarthy is going to be a top 10 pick. He might be a top five pick. Yeah. Yeah. Four of the first five picks being quarterbacks. Uh, I, I don't think Bo Nix will make it to 56. I don't think he's a first-round pick, but I think he goes somewhere before the Cowboys are on the clock in round two. Yeah, I got uh, I, I to I gotta believe that somebody like Sean Payton, the Broncos or somebody, going to grab grab a hold of him. Yeah, Michael Penix is obviously out there as yes. well. Um, uh, no, they, the Cowboys would be a disaster if they selected a quarterback. The, the guy they have was runner-up for MVP last year, and he should have been MVP. You don't believe me? Look at his numbers compared to the guy who won. He should have been the most valuable player in football last season. And you're going to draft a quarterback in the second round to sit on the bench? You wouldn't, you wouldn't take a chance on Michael Penix if you were no. still in No, because I I still believe in Dak Prescott. So I want the he Cowboys to pay that guy. Was that scary at all? He plays for Washington. When you want him on your team? No, because he's not going to be good for me. He's only going to be good against me. If he oh, goes oh, to the okay, commanders... Exactly. If he goes to Washington in the NFL, then I'll be worried. If he goes to the Giants, I'll be worried. If he goes to the Eagles, I'll be worried. But he's not going to be good for me. He's only going to be good against me. I see. Yeah. He's going to end up in San Francisco or Green Bay and just keep torturing Cowboys. In other words, BK, it has to work out with Dak Prescott for the Dallas Cowboys. It has to because there, there's nothing for them to turn to if it doesn't work out this year. Right, um, they've got Trey Lance. Like who? They're not going to bench Dak this year. I don't. I, what are you asking me? Like no, they can, no, they can no, move on from him that. after this year. Then they'll have to figure it out next off season. But yeah, like, next off season. Could, that's what I'm saying. If it doesn't work out the way, they're not benching him. Yeah, if it doesn't work out. I mean, look, it could work out, and Dak could say, "F y'all for not paying me. I'm leaving." 
That's the risk the Cowboys are running here. Like they're either costing themselves a lot of money if Dak goes out and has a great year and wants to come back, or Dak goes out and says, I don't want to be here anymore because you guys keep pulling my leg here. Well, every other team is doing what they can to lock up their franchise quarterbacks. You guys no, it's time for me to pull my finger. You guys pull my finger. Yeah. See what happens now. You guys are doing the same song and dance with me again. So I'm out. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, it's got to me, it's got to work for them this year with him. I don't yeah. even know what that means. That means winning two games in the playoffs. What's That's working? Right. I don't I don't understand what working is at the Cowboys because it's not championships. Right. Well, it's, it's, just, it's just not. I don't they, know what they, works for them. They have been a championship contender, but they have flamed out in the playoffs in each of the last three years. I, I don't think they're going to win 12 games again this season because, um, you know, they, they've lost a lot and they've spent less money than anybody else this offseason to try to replenish what they've lost. And they still so, have the same coach. They still have the same fat, uh, fat guy at coach. Come on, man. Sorry, Mike. Not sorry. He's, he's fat. You know, I got to call a spade a spade. He's, he's, he's fat. He's just round shouldered. Nah, no, he's fat. Like some people are round shouldered, but McCarthy's he's, he's fat. That's not why he's a bad coach. You can be fat and be a great coach, but that, that ain't McCarthy. That ain't McCarthy. So there's your Cowboys topic of the day. Um, Buck, do you care at all about the NBA play in games? Not really. Okay. I, mean, I, will, I will watch them. I will watch them tonight. I'll, I'll check both of them out, but I don't really care until they get down to the semifinals. Okay. When I really start checking out the NBA and the finals, yeah. that's when I start to watch that. But I do care about Texas baseball and who's going to start on the who's getting up on the on the bump. Yeah, I, I thought this was like a parody Twitter account yesterday when I saw it. Can't be for real, can it? Apparently, it's for real. So Texas baseball is back at it tonight. At the dish, taking on UTRGV. It's UT Rio Grande Valley for those of you who care. Not and the CCs. They're not playing the CCs. They're not playing AM Corpus. Nope. They already lost to them once. I don't think they want to schedule those guys again. But it's UTRGV coming to town tonight. And I was curious who the starting pitcher was going to be for the Longhorns in this midweek game. Well, they are starting Jared Thomas at pitcher tonight. Jared Thomas has been this team's best hitter all season long. He's one of the best players in the conference. He might be one of the best college baseball players in the country. He's got an OPS over 1,100, 10 home runs. Uh, He's just been a beast for this Texas team at the top of this lineup all year long. And in a year of inconsistency, he has been one of the consistent things for David Pierce in 2024. Um, He has never pitched in college, and he is – taking the bump as the starter for the Longhorns tonight. I don't like it. I don't like messing with the guy's arm. I don't like messing with his mojo, with his bat. I don't I don't want him to be disturbed or be disappointed if things don't work out when he gets on the mound against Texas Rio Grandes. You know, I, I just I just I don't I don't like that. I mean give me something different, coach. That's I know that's different, but what is it? Why are you doing that? Are we doing bits now? Like, is David Pierce giving up on the season, or is like, oh, this could be fun? That's a bit. Let's just throw our best outfielder out there as our starting pitcher tonight. Yeah, let's go wreck his arm. Yeah, look, he pitched in high school at okay. Waxahachie, but uh, to my knowledge, he has not pitched in college. Um, you can't just screw your arm up pitching. Of course, of course, you can. Now there, you know, look at Shohei Otani, right? Like there are injuries you can suffer as a pitcher that don't affect your ability to hit. So like Shohei right now is not pitching for the Dodgers, but he's still hitting. But that guy also doesn't field. So right. That's what yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what this is. I mean, they they must it's feel bit. it's a bad bit. It's they must feel like Jared bit. Thomas can help. I mean, the pitching staff has not been good this year. They don't have enough arms. And they miss. They must feel like Jared Thomas can actually give them something on the mound. Right? He's they got to have a do pitcher this. on that staff that hasn't got out there. He's still young. We're just not – we're afraid to put him out there. Well, don't be afraid. Put him out there. Don't take your your guy that's having a good year, stick him out there and hurt him. Don't do not do it. That's a don't do it, BK. That's not – that's a bad bit. Yeah. It's, I'm going to say that's not, that's, not worth, that's not worth the chance. Yep. He was a very good high school pitcher, but this will be his collegiate pitching debut – and so how many did, has he been pitching for weeks now? He's been ready and getting ready for weeks, or did he just go to coach and say, I think I can do this coach this week? 
on a Tuesday. Let me put my arm out here for you on a Tuesday. I would hope that this has uh, been practiced, right? Like maybe this was discussed a couple of weeks ago. Maybe Jared Thomas, who seems like the ultimate team player, went up to Coach Pierce and he's like, let me try my hand at pitching. Our pitching staff hasn't been good. Let me see if I can pitch a little bit. And hopefully they, they did a couple of bullpen sessions and maybe David Pierce liked what he saw from Jared Thomas. He must have to give him this chance. And Jared Thomas at one point in high school threw back-to-back no hitters at Waxahachie. So he was a very good pitcher in high school, but wasn't recruited as a pitcher. And once again, has not thrown an inning in college baseball. So it's just a sign of the times for this program right now. This is- no, that's just one of those deals like Ricky coming and saying to me, he goes, you know, I, I said, I know you're all state linebacker. He said, Buck, you know, I can go both ways. I'm going to talk to, I'll talk to John about getting in the game and playing some defense for us at linebacker. And the head coach to me saying, what do you think of this idea? And I'm like, no, it's a bad idea. Yeah. It's a terrible idea. I just I'm I'm looking to see if this is like a two week late April Fool's joke or something that Jared Thomas is is starting for Texas. So um, I'd it's like to think it past a year. I'd like to think it can't get any worse compared uh, compared to some of the other guys we've thrown out there. But that's the risk you run, right? Like I'm going to be on pins and needles watching this game tonight, just hoping that nothing happens to Jared Thomas. I don't care if he gets shelled on the mound. I almost right. prefer that he does, so he just doesn't want to become a full-time pitcher because he's too valuable as an outfielder and as a bat. I don't know if I want him to do that well tonight, uh, but I'm going to be just anxious, like something bad is going to happen to him. I just don't I just don't like the risk. The risk's not worth the, the reward. On a yeah. Tuesday, no thank you. Yeah, so that's tonight. UT Rio Grande Valley, the opponent. That game is at 6.30 on Longhorn Network. If you want to watch the collegiate pitching debut – of uh, one of Texas's best hitters, Jared Thomas. I we'll see what the lineup looks like. Like I don't know. When Shohei pitched, he would bat too. So I wonder if Oh, like he's Jared, got a bat. Well, I'm expecting he will be batting. I don't know. I don't know if that's too much for him. I don't know if he's gonna do both or if he's just gonna pitch tonight and you know he'll get back into the lineup as a hitter this weekend. But we'll and you know they only have him pitching a couple innings. He's not he's pitching maybe two innings at the most, and then they're bringing him out of the game. I, I don't know what to expect because I didn't expect this. This is already the unexpected. So whatever happens tonight isn't going to surprise me. It just sounds way too desperate too soon. Maybe Ace Whitehead is going to be batting third tonight. Maybe Le- LeBra Johnson, as you call him, will yeah, be this bra. team. Come maybe on, LeBra. Maybe he'll be the first baseman tonight. Let's just move everybody around. A little musical chairs here at give the him, dish. Give him, a, give, him a, give him three outs and go sit down. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the effort. Yeah, I don't yeah. want your I don't want your shoulder hurting. I don't want to screw up anything that has to do with you in the outfield. You're having a good year. Let's not do this. So that's tonight. Um, the NBA play in games. You, you do have some star power. You've got LeBron and Steph playing tonight, yeah. not, not playing each other. It's the Lakers and the Pelicans in the first play in game. The winner of that will be the seven seed in the West. The loser of that. We'll play the winner of the second play-in game. That's Golden State against Sacramento. Plus the chef for the Pelicans, he's got to eat. He'll eat yeah. a table. Big boy Zion. Yeah. Man, I like if you're the Lakers, don't you want to lose? Because Denver's the two seed in the West. So whoever wins this game will have to play the defending champion Nuggets in round one. I don't think it's better to be the eight. Now, obviously, if you lose tonight, you've got to beat somebody else to be the eight right. seed. So there's no guarantee, and there's a huge risk that you run if that's sort of your strategy. But, shoot, I'd rather play Oklahoma City, who is the one seed, than play Denver, who's the two seed. So, yeah, congrats. If you win tonight, you're in the playoffs, but your reward is you got to go up against the likely MVP. He should yes. be. Luka should be MVP. But the likely MVP and Nikola Jokic and the defending champs. No, I don't like that. That's not good. Yeah. You got any 5,000-unit plays on these play-in games? Yes, OKC. They're not playing tonight. Okay, I'll take uh, I'll take the Lakers. <laughs> I just gave you the four teams who are playing tonight. I'll take the Lakers. Okay, the Lakers. I don't. Have, why do I not see a line here? We don't have Cousins anymore. No, nobody takes any bets on the NBA. And there you go. Uh, the Lakers are one and a half point dogs in New Orleans tonight. You're taking LA. I'll take LA on the road. How many units are you going with here? Just a little two thousand unit play. Cool, two thousand. Okay, nothing on Warriors Kings. Well, I, I'll take. The, I'll be going to take the Kings. Okay, if 
Five thousand unit play. Whoa! Let me get you a number on that. Golden Golden State's favored, so you're getting two and a half with Sacramento. You want that? I'll take Sac Town. All right. So Lakers plus one and a half for two thousand. How have your NBA plays been this year? Not good. Okay. You always tell me you can't bet those. You can't figure out the NBA. I'd like to uh, congratulate the Pelicans and the Warriors. Then, well, because you know, I know college basketball, so we we all know that. I know you didn't give us any five thousand unit plays. You kept we, promising those. That's the stuff that helps the people. We can't see your bracket until you know, it's already submitted and everything. What a bracket, too! That was. Yeah, hopefully you, you called your cousin and put some money on those picks because you'd be rich right now. I should be really in the money for that bracket I threw out there. And you didn't do it, but you did no. win a TV. Oh, no, you didn't win a TV. Oh, no, I gave that away. I hope that was going to a a, a, a classroom for education because I'm all about the education. Let's oh, go. a classroom, 65-inch TV? No, give, yes. them, give them the big-ass tube TV on the rolling cart. No. They don't have a, a flat the, screen. Roll it in there on the cart? Yeah. Oh, come on. I've seen that enough. Roll it. Here comes the TV in there. Yes. Oh, my yeah. gosh. All right. It's 10 o'clock. Uh, I think we – oh, Sue Patrick tomorrow. Don't forget to join yes. us. Don't forget. Yeah, 5222 Bryant Road. Come join us tomorrow morning, please. Yes. All kinds we of great – hey, we'll have sale items. We'll have hats. How about the hats that we'll be sporting tomorrow? Some Speaking of baseball caps, Jay's got a bunch of those over at Sue Patrick's. And what time will they open up? 930 probably? 930. Yes, indeed. Come join us. Bring me a Starbucks cream only. Tall cream. Cream. Hey, you, want, you, want, you want some baristas cream from Starbucks? No, I just want cream only. Don't, <laughs> put, sugar. Don't put sugar in my coffee, coffee or in my britches. Just cream. That's it. Over there at 2242, huh? They got the spinning helmets over there. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have that shit there anymore, Wag. The spinning that, helmets. That must, be, that must be for your holiday special stuff. No, they've got the Walmart jelly cat. And hey, snow globes are still available. Snow, oh, oh they got oh, got to get out there and see those snow globes. Oh, yeah. And you gotta have that, man. And uh, lots of books. Remember that book? Uh, always make your bed. It, it, always that, uh, make your bed. Remember that's that right. one? Maybe a couple of a couple <laughs> other little bedtime stories I can Ronnie, see. I, oh. Ronnie, last night, Madonna was at the Moody Center. And let me was tell you. Late? Somebody said she was two hours late. So, so Can you imagine well, sitting around and then they have up and they have that picture of her up on the big screen. She's <laughs> she's here. She's in the building somewhere. She wants the air conditioning off in that place. Are you kidding me? I was I was actually going to buy my wife tickets for Madonna um, before this whole trip that we just did, and it was like, what in the, oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's is that, her. Is that an onion ring on her ear? <laughs> <laughs> this is the same. Are, are you kidding me? This is the same woman that I had like a poster pinned up like right yes. above my bed. Are you that's kidding her. me? I mean, I had her yeah. Playboy edition. That's the material girl. Was she a yeah. Playboy? Oh, yeah, man. It was I don't remember, old. Uh, I don't remember uh, her posing any skin for Playboy. I, remember, I mean, well, like, I remember her doing race. A, uh, it was it was pictures. Before. It was pictures before she was famous when she was uh, just a regular okay. girl. Before okay. she was the material girl. Yeah, but, I don't know uh, what happened right there. Yeah, I was. Uh, it was like yeah, well, months I mean, ago. Months ago, I was going to buy my my wife tickets, and she's like, "No, she's always late. Um, she's kind of a bee. Um, I, I don't want to do that." She's like, "Save the money." She's like, "Save have, the money. Um, Spend it on something." We else. have really failed somewhere down the line. <laughs> what what has Madonna's parents done? She has. We have. Um, she's been failed. We've really failed somewhere. That, yeah. um, no, I'm not putting that on Madonna. I'm putting that on the fabric of society. We are. Oh, we have, really? It's our we, fault. <laughs> really? I mean, have you seen? Have you seen some of these fashion shows where what what the dudes are wearing? The dudes are wearing skirts. I mean, oh, I know that. No, well, that ain't nothing. And, and they're not from Scotland. They're not kilts. <laughs> oh you man! I mean? well, welcome back, Double R. First and foremost. Hey, hey, hey good, good to have you back, have you back Double R. Good and it is back, it, it is a hypothetical Tuesday, gentlemen. Oh, you, that's right. If there you, you guys want a, want a quick hypothetical question before we I'd wrap up, cross talk, right on. We'll go with a pretty easy one today, gentlemen. Would we or would we? Would, would we, we have Madonna? Madonna, <laughs> Madonna what, or Kim Mulkey? I would what, say Kim Mulkey by out. Give me Kim. Mom. Give me Kim. Uh, Kim looks better go. than Madonna. There you go, BK. There's a man. There it is. Yeah. Plus, plus Madonna's all skinny. 
And, like and you twig. know what? Kim ain't, like Kim ain't dying from COVID. You know that. You know Kim ain't afraid of COVID. We, I got uh, a cough I can't get rid of. She and I would hit it off perfect. There you go. She no <laughs> sissy. You ain't no sissy. All right. If you Easy one here. If you could go back and be any age for a month, what age would you choose? All right. Is it, it Okay. Let me piggyback on this. Is this a clean life or are we reliving our one of our years of our lives? No, you get to live it however you want to live it. You are just the age that you want to be. I think it was 20 on the nose. 30. 20. 30. Okay. All 30. right, Buck, you first. Why 20? 20 is, is that I was still in college. I was doing things at the 50-yard line, you know, that I shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. I was getting all penicillined up, but I was still, I was still, I was still fit. I was still fit. I was still making really good decisions. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't over the top. You know, once I hit that 21 stage, when everything became legal, that's when things got got bad. I I I dipped down to some really bad stuff. But at 20, I was just having fun. You know, I was going down to the poop deck down in Fort Lauderdale, taking a trip from from Boston College and driving. Really cold. You know, is it really called the poop deck? Yeah, yep. it was. It was just. It was just a hotel. It was out on the beach, but the name of it was the poop deck. But I was having fun, man. I mm. was getting. I was putting baby oil on my body, you know, for 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 tanning. I was tanning. I was putting baby oil on. You know what that stuff? That was like putting. You might as well have been putting just Crisco on yourself. And Look, I thought, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask a serious question, and this is out of ignorance. And I feel like I should know this because I grew up around a lot of black people right yes i wanted to get darker i wanted to have a tan. okay i didn't know that that i didn't know that that was a, i didn't know that black people actually sun tanned i wanted to tan i'm a light-skinned black person and i always have been and at that time of the year i was even lighter living in boston so when i went back from spring break i wanted to have a darker i wanted to have a little darker tan and i would put baby oil on and dude <laughs> i got sun poisoning and i thought i was going to die mm. in fort lauderdale then again, I was laying on a beach towel with a bunch of dudes in front of the poop deck, and my friends. Saw whoa, whoa! Have you never heard this story, Wags? It's awful, Wags. It's it's just Wags. It was awful, just yeah. awful. A guy from my hometown caught me laying on a on a beach blanket with like four other dudes from All my college. All lathered up in, in, in cocoa butter we and baby oil. We weren't lathering each other. We were just coming in, hitting the beach. Oh, that's hot! Driving oh, in, I, I would have seen that. That's Damn. hot. That's oh, not hot. That's oh, that was, that is, that, that's sizzling. That's glisten, glistening. And oh. the story never got back to my hometown, but all around us was dudes lathering each other up on the beach. <laughs> and but I didn't understand. I'm I'm just there. All I'm doing is trying to get some some shut eye because we just rolled in there that morning. Like We're a goddamn there. navy ship, huh? Oh, oh man. <laughs> no, I was not one of the village people. I was oh, man. <laughs> young man, no. young man. Come on, man. No. Oh, it was, oh, it was young a, man. You got to be careful. Scene. It was a bad scene Need for me. To have <laughs> a good time, young man. No, dude, yeah, yeah. be careful yeah. there, man. That's a yeah. uh, that's a good way to get slipped something that uh, you'll never forget. Yeah. <laughs> and right. I don't mean a I don't mean a Mickey or <laughs> one of those things. You know what I'm saying? I guess I would be in my twenties. You know, I would want to live, relive my twenties too, right? I mean, like when I was in my twenties, I was in the Marines, so I didn't really didn't really get to go out and. Well, I mean, we partied, we fucked a lot of shit, or excuse me, we messed a lot of stuff up. But I mean, um, I don't. I was never like a civilian in my twenties. You know what I mean? Like I remember sure. I, I loved my thirties because I got my freedom back. You know, that's what it felt like. And also you could, you know, you got your, the gift of free thought, you know, nobody was telling you where to go and what to do and whatnot. You could actually go and be who the hell you wanted to be in uh, your own person or whatnot. So, I mean, 30, the thirties were pretty cool or at least 32 was actually really cool. Uh, but it was weird because I was a, I was a I was a freshman or no I was excuse me I was a senior on on campus of the University of Texas so hmm. a little bit a little bit different but yeah the, um, the, I don't know probably probably 20 22 23 that era Wags, Wags I got a question for you I know that I've been out for a couple of days but why would you want to relive any of those days when right now you're living this shit <laughs> Yeah oh nice spin though <laughs> How about that slice point dropped by the way teardrop oh, How about the Teardrops. fake step the false step you took there 
I got faked out, and then that gust. While me getting faked out in the gust of wind, it's just a bad combination. And Rodney, I'm going to tell you right now: when you're an athlete, you leave it all on the court. There you go. I know. I know. Every bit of it. Every. Oh, we got a randomizer coming. Whoa! Whoa! The randomizer is working. It's about to. Here we go. Uh Oh, hold on, boys. The winner of our first fifty dollars Cabo Bob's gift card this week is. Mike Torres. Good job, Mike. Congratulations, Mike. Hit us up on the code of text line, 512-222-9328. We'll get into contact, and we'll get you your prize. Listen, boys, have a good day. I have to go urinate. There he goes right there. BK, what what, what year would you want to be, BK? Uh, 21, for sure. 21? Just because it's legal? I feel like the thrill is gone when it's legal. It it is, but like twenty one, it's there's still I don't know, it's cool. It's still awesome. Like, ah shit, I can actually do this. I can't get in trouble. We can do whatever we want. I was still in college, which for me did not involve actually going to class. So I was just just drinking, hanging out, doing whatever I wanted in college. Uh college girls, yes. And yeah, you know, my parents were still financially supporting me, thankfully. Yeah. So <laughs> all, 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 all good things. Yeah. Double R, you yeah. said 30. I'll get yeah, out of here 30. in a second. You said 30. So for me, it was like when I when I turned 30, I got married and 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 had a and had a baby. I didn't actually have the baby. Somebody else had the baby. Okay. But it but it was kind of one of those things to where it was in the wrong order. You know, we, we kind of did shit in the wrong order. And just but but in the 30, my 30s were amazing. And there are a couple of different things there that I'd like to change because 35, I had a life transformation. I got in great shape, became a like a distance runner and all this stuff. I'd like to redo that to where, um, you know, the 20s, I just kind of blew them off. I just kind of blew them off. And that's like, OK, but now I I'd, I'd just like to reset the 30s in a better order, if you know what I mean. Just kind of a lot of good things happen in the 30s in the thirties, in my thirties. I just kind of want them to happen the way that they should happen. And then maybe, maybe change some things. I didn't realize it took you till like 35 to have a kid. No, 30, 30. Yeah. It was 30. Yeah. And that was, uh, well, well, let me, let me preface that by saying, uh, um, 30, I had my first kid that I know of. (laughs) <laughs> okay yeah that's all right that's better that's better. yeah that's, that's, that's the other part that, more that, of a realistic com- uh, comment right there I, i'm waiting for i'm waiting for a girl with a beard to show up at my house one day <laughs> saying hey dad what's up uh you'll there see her at the state fair uh, and, yeah, and, and, yeah. Geez, with a corn dog all right guys y'all have a good show be good man. Later, man there he goes good to have you back my guy welcome to chaos theory we are up and rolling already on this hypothetical tuesday uh with the gentleman from the morning bk and bucky uh if you guys are mobile make sure you're hitting us up on that uh code of text line 512-222-9328 hit us up on our socials i'm at not the fake wags rodney's over there at the rodney r and then on instagram at the underscore rodney r i'm on the instagram at the wagner wire what is up everybody that's in twitter make sure you're smashing that subscribe button already like we know how to do Oh man. Um, yeah. So you seen the video? I did, my man. Um, out, out at an event, you know what I mean, with uh with Pick Sports Gear. Um, BK was there. Obviously, he was the cameraman. Um, it just seems it always seems like whenever I'm on film, the worst happens. Like, I mean, none of my home runs were ever captured on on film. It was only it was always like when I was pitching or when I was catching and I would make a an error and throw the damn ball into uh in that into the outfield or whatnot but yeah nothing ever nothing ever gets called on film or or maybe you know instead of making you know getting the sack you know called on camera you know i get the the tape where i let the tackle up you yeah. know i mean it's just always well, it's always the wrong film man i've got to tell you what what you did that the i was backspin. you saw the backspin though double r did you not i, I saw that i saw that but I, I gotta tell you what what was so impressive about that and i saw it during the weekend because i was kind of checking in on stuff just to see what was going on but it was like you know a lot of times like when you fall i, I mean even if you're drunk i mean you fall I down was drunk. And, i was sober i swear no, to no, god no, no. but but a sober. lot of times a lot of times when you wipe out it just kind of seems to be it's like natural instinct to like pop right up and look around and be like who who saw that you know or whatever but oh, i, I like you, you planted dude and you were like like the snow thing or what's that Star, thing starfish that's that's yeah. the man yeah. I suck at life pose. That's what that Dude, was. That was um, holy shit. I suck at life. And I'm here to tell you. So every time you do that, read about pickleball and talk about how good you are. I'm going to play that shit in the background. <laughs> no, you can hold on. I, I, I misstepped right there, but you could see the skill. The skill is undeniable. 
on the court with the backhand slice. Now, look, only you can you can only do that kind of slice with a with a pick sports gear paddle because it's 13 millimeters width. Did it break if you your got fall? a 15 millimeter paddle? You're not gonna the just the the nature of the paddle and how it goes against the wind with the aerodynamics or whatnot, it's just not going to allow you to get that spin like I get. You got to have a 13 millimeter paddle, Rodney. Uh, I'm here to tell it's you. USA, that. It's USA pickleball approved. I'm here to tell you, used, you, my brother. If Absolutely. you use the uh, if you use the promo Radio 10, or I think it's right, I got to pull it up. I think it's Radio 10, but it's if you use that, off. then hey man, maybe you'll get a little bit of a little bit of a promo gift too so they ought to have promo code wags is what their promo code ought to be now uh, they ought to have promo code bk because he's the best damn salesman of all the damn land here well that's for damn sure i I gotta tell you though the one thing that i took out of that when i saw that because i know we've had a lot of talk about you know getting together and playing and doing all this different stuff and i think we should have a tsu uh get together and do that shit um what i did determine especially in my older uh chubbier time that i am in uh, that i'm in right now that pickleball is definitely the sport for me. That's um, so that's what I was telling Katie. I was just like, hey man, you know, I was running my ass off all over the court, and you're you're supposed to be playing doubles. Um, it is something that double that she and I can do. Of course, you know, my wife, I I'm pretty sure most people know that my wife has uh was um diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis uh when she was growing up. So um it's hard for her to get out there and actually do like a full yeah. tennis game for a long time so a uh, pickleball is just it, it's the perfect sport for for both of us man because we don't have to be running all over the damn court and now we got to get you and tracy out there and do a double stick well she's all so, and, and and dude rodney i'm telling you right now you're gonna love the locations where they're at that you're gonna love the scenery at oh, the location, nice, nice right? trees nice trees and, and nice stuff trees like that. really really good trees I great mean, trails road bushes yeah, uh, yeah. Just couple the of hilly, hilly just spots. fantastic and well put together. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, the architect, the architecture yeah. is just fantastic. You're yeah. really gonna love the site. Nice, today. firm, tight walking trails. Very good, yeah. Firm, yeah. firm shrubbery, firm shrubbery. Firm Let me tell you. Shrubbery, yeah. Um, and possibly some that, bare yes. areas. Yeah, Jake, yeah. When and we are in, my guy. When and we are. In, there's no. It, it's not a coincidence while I'm wearing why I'm wearing this. I'm trying to give us a little bit of fame. I keep looking up at the. The gift that BK gave me, the the championship po- um, picture that we have, where we went on our magnificent run here. I keep looking up at that and trying to wish, you know, happy thoughts. But yeah, it all comes down to this, and it is a, it's a tough spot. It's you know, it's between three teams to get in, you know, the last spot here into the East for uh, Lord Stanley's playoff here. So we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But yeah, man, we're just I'm catching up with my guy, dude. It's it, it's. It it sucks. It sucks having you gone. I was cool. Well, I was cool rolling with Keenan. I'm not gonna lie, but it's not. Yeah. It's not the tandem, man. It's not. Yeah. The tandem. When I when I saw who was actually going to uh, be with you, I don't mean that in a bad way, but uh, when I saw who your partner was going to be, I'm like, holy smoke! That that's a good combination right there. I said, yeah, uh, I used to have Keenan on uh, a lot yeah. for um for the Wagner Wire. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good I was like, uh, that I knew right there, be talking a lot of basketball. I knew that we'd be getting a lot of basketball in. But hey, man. Um. You know, I've always, you know, now that you're back, I want to get your thoughts on Texas baseball and whatnot. I mean, I don't know if you've actually given up. I've, I've, I have them on, but I don't pay. I'm not sitting here biting my nails or anything anymore like I used to in the, you know, in in the second week of this of the season when I was actually worried about it. I've kind of mailed it in, Rodney. I think it's kind of, I think I'm kind of done. Um, I know I said this. I know I was the same way. I had the same attitude. I was very really, really lethargic with the Longhorns. Um, and they're, um, I guess. Can I can I call it pedestrian type of sea? Even though they went to the tournament, can I call it a pedestrian season for the Longhorns? Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, I can't. I can't. Um, they didn't. They didn't underperform. They performed right. They didn't underperform. Um, we knew. I didn't think that they would be getting back to the Sweet Sixteen. Um, but they did get back to the tournament, so I can't really underperform. And they had a lot of roster turnover. Um, but I I do think that that the Longhorn seam heads are are underperforming at this point. Um uh yeah. the pitching's not there. It looks like uh it looks like you know a hometown hero of Ace Whitehead's gonna is starting to emerge um as you know the Friday pitcher, even though that you know LB you, you'd like to think that LBJ is still our you know the you know the smoking gun that he is and he can go out there and, and hopefully relive the season that he had last year. But man, it's um it's kind of it's kind of daunting, Rodney. I don't it and it almost looks like we don't have an answer. So um yeah. I, I leave it to you, my guy. Um 
trip to Omaha, even in the even in the sighting here? I doubt it. Uh, I yeah. mean, and then you know, tonight. I mean, I, I know it's uh, UTRGV or whatever, but I mean, you can't say that because hell, UT or A and M Corpus Christi already beat this team. You, you know uh, the fact. I, that I, I'm saying, like, I want to say it's. I want. I want to say you should win, right? But I mean, should, I don't but... want to come on here tomorrow and and look like a more, a, you know, eaten crow and a bigger idiot, you know, and saying, hey, you know, you can't even. Yeah, beat the cupcakes. You know, uh, it, it's it, and what's curious about this game tonight—a Tuesday night game at that. And again, no disrespect to uh, RGV, but the whole thing is right here. You're you're moving over Jared Thomas from first base to pitch, and that um, I, I followed that kid in high school. You know, because I did play by play for Lake Travis for a lot of years, so it was like I had to stay and okay, who are we going to play or what what's going to happen here? What's going on around the nation? And uh, the the fact that you're rolling that dude out to me seems extremely desperate. And I mean, if it's one of those scenarios, you know, he, you know he can throw though. I mean, you, sure. you, you know, I mean, absolutely. Well, he could. Kid, well, yeah, he's thrown yeah. before. The he kid's can thrown before. He can, but it's it's a and I know that 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 your rotation is depleted. Not at this level, though. We, you've never seen him pitch at this level. This this is all different. And if this is some sort of experiment, I mean, I got to tell you, it, and and I can totally relate to this because with the Lake Travis stuff, um, I think it was probably four or five years ago, uh, one of the last years that I did that. We had Brett Beatty, who now plays for the the Mets. You I'm, know, he, dude, he, I'm, this dude stud. I've unbelievable stud. third base. Very impressive young man. Yes. Yes. His family. Uh, I mean, great friends of mine. Uh, Mike Rogers, the, the skipper at the time, a great friend of mine that I hold in high esteem. But with that, you had a pitching staff that was kind of getting a, a little um, a little rusty, a little rough towards the end of the season. So Beatty comes in and he becomes he almost becomes your game day starter. Well, he does become your game day starter and you were relying on him to be your pitcher. And he does a lot of things, um, but pitching is n was not his forte. Right. He developed right. it really fast, and it just seems like to me what what David Pierce is doing right here is he's he's really stretching. He's kind of reaching right here, and and honestly, to me, especially like you said, for the senior fans, do you, do you feel here, a, little bit, a little bit better that it is a pitching coach kind of taking note of this though? That's that's the one caveat or the one I guess you know silver lining thing of all this that i'm trying to see like hey if anybody's gonna notice it it's pierce right like well or or it, is it, it or is it or is it desperation well i'm kind of seeing it more as the latter in, in that situation and i think yeah, a lot of it was optimistic. A, a lot of it was. <laughs> this is this is where this is where baseball is kind of different because you know it's like in football or basketball you talk about these guys as athletes i mean in in in, in football, it's like running back, quarterback, he can play all these different things. He's an athlete. He's just an offensive weapon. And this, I mean, it had to have been when he came here. They knew that. They knew that he could pitch. But I don't think it was ever the intent. And again, situations happen to where it's like, okay, we have this dude that has pitched before. Let's put him out. Right. On a Tuesday. Yeah, but this is worst case scenario. This is right. like. Well, you, you said know, it. If, 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 if Air Force One goes down or if, um or what what's the damn thing where, uh, with Gerald Gerald um, Butler or whatever, where he was the White House gets sieged or whatnot. Oh they got a yeah. yeah, I can't even remember that damn movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I've seen it one time. But anyway, there's there's some movies out there that I won't even give a damn mind to. But yeah. anyways, yeah, it's kind of like that where you got to move move on and go to the last the last plan available yeah. or, or you know the emergency situation possible. So, and 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 what's going to happen here is you know let's say this goes off well. Let's say this goes off well. Um, then are you going to put this dude in the rotation? Are you going to be relying on him? Um, and I think if you are relying on him. Can you I supplement mean, that at first base? Right. Then, yeah, what do you do over there? Uh, I mean, we're sitting here. Look at the Astros. You have a huge problem at first base. Jose Abreu can't hit the fucking ball. Or, God dang it, can't, can't hit the ball. And now you're starting to figure out, okay, we got this dude in the minors. Do we move uh, Mauricio Dubon over here? What, what what do we do with this? John Singleton, who do we put at first base? I mean, if you're going to rely on, the, if you're going to be relying on this dude to pitch, I mean, what do you do over there? Because that that's an extremely important position. And of course, now Abreu's making errors. Uh, but anyway, it um, I just see it. I just see it as as desperation wags. And and I'm sorry. It's I know that. And this is where baseball is different because we can talk about football when we talk about football tradition here. Yeah, we had a really good football tradition for a while. It went away. It came back for a little bit. It went away. And I think we're heading in the right direction. Spring game is going to be massive. Basketball. People go ape shit about basketball. Texas is not a basketball school. Uh, R.I.P. to the Irwin uh, Center. Uh, um, 
Oh, hey, hey, we're we're not getting, dude. We're it's getting not. there. Hey, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. We're there. <laughs> Damn it, we're there. We're on the doorstep. We're on the door. We're getting, Don't take uh, that away from me. Don't take it away from we're me. We're a basketball man. school. We have a basketball team. We got a basketball program. <laughs> got we got but, a basketball program. Dang, dude, have you seen the pictures of the Irwin Center? I was actually looking uh, at something no, on, no. on on Horns two four seven this morning. It is like down to a shell. And I remember going there watching, you know, Lance Blanks and Travis Mays and those kind of games. And it was like, dude, that that's when when Penders was here, and he'd get all crossed up with uh, Nolan Richardson and all that uh, from Arkansas. Man, that, that's the stuff I miss. People are talking about concerts and all that. That sound in there sucked. But uh, those bands. I ain't been to a concert. I, I think the last concert I went to was um, it don't laugh. Uh, <laughs> was um, damn Trans Siberian Orchestra. I think was that ain't nothing concert. to laugh at. That's a good concert to go to. I, I saw TSO. So. I, I tell you what, you, you we that. No, that's but I'm talking about of all the of all the people that have toured Austin yeah. in the in the past year or two. Of the last person of the last group I've seen was TSO, who didn't come last year. They didn't come this past year. Oh, they like did, didn't they? Every year. Yeah. Well, you know what we need to do? We need to get together one uh, again. We're over here trying to set up pickleball matches and all that. You need to because like my wife loves going to concerts. I'll go to concerts with her when it's like some of the you know 80s or 90s or early 2000s stuff. But she goes and hears all this other stuff when I, I have no clue who they are. But uh, we we do that one night. Go catch it. We need to go to the hot spot. It's out there in in your what neck is the of the woods. That's what over there to, in. Uh, you to pour syrup on me or something like that. What are you to <laughs> the hot spot. It's a uh, it's a swingers club. No, I'm just kidding. It's um, I, the, knew the, it. the, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. The hot the hot spot is actually over there in Cedar Park. Um, I forget what the place used to be. It's on the right side of uh one one eighty three A. It's an outdoor venue, and they do a lot of really really cool concerts over there, man. Uh, I think you guys, it's a good place you can go hang out, get a table, and just enjoy the tunes. Um, Check it out. Yeah, it's Check fun. It it's a lot of fun. You know, I mean, I got after <laughs> after that little rendition we had on uh, Sunday there with uh, with Pick Sports Gear. Um, yeah. there there's. It's pretty noticeable. I need to make some changes to my lifestyle. Um, I need to get out a lot more. I need to get back on the treadmill. And that's the only thing that kind of does it. Like swimming, swimming keeps the weight down for me a lot. But usually if I'm not running, like cycling doesn't keep weight off of me. It, it just doesn't. Like I have I, I have to run. Like lifting and re like resistance training is going to help you burn fat. It just will. And then running will help you burn calories. Like that's yeah. just, that, that is kind of like the the scientific method that goes through my body. I know a lot of people says running burns a lot of, you know, fat for them. That's scientifically, that's just not true. Um, Cause running burns calories and, and calories store fat lifting actually is what burns all your fat. I just need to get back into it. Um, after seeing the video and just being disgusted with myself, um, it is time to actually make some, some Dude, life changes. I, Maybe you, you know how you had your epiphany and your revelation at like 35, I'm having it at 43. I've been in fantastic shape all up until, you know, what, the past two years, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, oh, my God. And this taking this job, like having a, a sedentary lifestyle to where I'm just constantly sitting in a chair and looking yeah. at, at, at screens. Um, I sit here and, and joke around with and say that I got weights and I do curls, but that's not enough. That's absolutely not enough. You got to get out there and get active, man. Yeah. Hey, did we, uh, uh, where'd Longhorn Bear go here? Uh, he said, Chow, did we piss somebody off? Does that say Chow? I can't see my contacts. Chow, yeah, Chow, is, it's high and by. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like dude, Aloha. It's I'm like Aloha. You. Like Aloha is, is high, high and okay. by. So got it, Chow got is it. high and by. Come on, man. You're oh. cultured. You're cultured, dude. Anyway, how was your trip, dude? I didn't even, have, I'm so rude to me. I didn't even get to ask, dude. Well, um, and, and I thought you scoping out the scene. What do you have going out there on, on the beach it, there? It's along the conversations of what you're talking about. We just, we, we had, we had some miles we needed to burn on the, on the, on the credit card with airlines and stuff. And we um, had been wanting to go to different places and we honestly didn't really have time to do this, but it's like, we got to do this or we're going to lose it. And so we did it. And so we went to, to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and we fit in that? well because it was a bunch of older people. It was How like Tracy and, I, Tracy and I go south, rolling. South Myrtle or North Myrtle? Uh, south. South. Okay. So, so we go rolling up there and we're like the spring chickens, you know, I come walking in and it's like, all right, here comes, here comes the youngest dude to the mall right here. And I come walking in. That's pretty damn bad. But, but, hey, there. But, yeah, but I'm with you. Up. But I'm with you, you know, because it's like, you know, I was a runner for so long and, and then, you know, I had to start cycling and now, now I don't cycle because I do this and I've got other stuff. I would cycle early in the morning. 
And it's like, I've totally gotten away from that. And I drink too much beer and my diet is horrible. And it's like, I was looking at myself this weekend wags. And I'm like, well, I'm so with you. Got, you. Really, you got a street bike, right? No, got, no, no, no. Every, everything. No. Well, I did. I did. I got rid of it. I mean, everything for me is, is indoor cycling studios, but oh, it's like, why, why, why don't you get out on the road? I'm curious. <sighs> Uh, it seems like every time I would get out on the road, I I'd fall. Oh, so damn. it's like, uh, okay, yeah, let's, let's, damn, I know I get that. a lot of flats, especially out here. I get a lot of flats. That's, um, that's the other part about it. That's the other part of it. Indoors just better for me. It's like one of those things where we talk about all the time to where I like sitting in here and being alone. But when I'm doing that cycling stuff, I like being around people and don't start that. It's all women. You guys don't, you people don't start that. That doesn't hurt. I think that's got a lot to do with it, but well, it helps you get a lot of energy. You get a lot of energy from being in, in group exercise. Thank you, Ruse. Like, Appreciate you, bro. Make sure like, you guys are subscribing to Ruse channel too on Instagram as well, man. They got a really good podcast, especially if you uh, like entertainment and you love to jump into the clouds, man. It's a really good yeah. show. I'm walking around this weekend on the beach and I'm like, I'm not sure I want to take my shirt off. And that pretty much, and that pretty much, and it ain't, and it ain't because I didn't want to get sunburnt because I'm inside so much. They used to tell me in, in middle school, you're not a Mexican. You're too white. Well, that's the way I look now because I'm always, hey, man. but, but now it's like, man, I got to lose this gut. <laughs> Yo, I, didn't, so, I didn't really, I didn't feel that way when I was at key, like in key Largo though. Like I was rolling around, like I felt like I was okay. But when you see yourself I on know. video man you maybe the video adds 10 pounds like chris farley says i think not i think i'm really just like that big but yeah. oh my god no. like it was it was an epiphany it was a revelation it was just Dude. like okay it's and time like and usually like my wife i feel like my wife would say something right like she'd be like bro like let's get it together let's get it together well, maybe she just loves me that damn much what? well i think in my wife now because my wife and i have flipped my wife never worked out never had to and I mean, now, now she like works out four times a week and, you know, I'll still do stuff. It's just not, not near what I used to do. And she'll tell me, Hey, we did this new whatever. And I'm like, okay, sounds fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, it, it is. And, and, and it, I think about it when I'm doing race weekends, because, you know, I have to run downstairs and, and go do victory lane. Oh, yeah. interviews. Yeah. And, and it's like, here's the camera panning down. And I'm like, who's that fat ass with the microphone? Oh shit. That's me. Well, I'm <laughs> so, going to tell you, like, I was, I was out of breath. I was kind of I was kind of smoked when we were playing pickleball, and you know, of course you you are running back. I wasn't playing with a partner; yeah. I was playing singles against BK or whatnot, and against Tina. Um, and yeah, we were having a great time, but yeah, I was kind of kind of smoked, man. So uh, it's yeah. just it's it's time to make changes. Um, one you know one one change that I can do right away is start drinking Olipop and and drop the damn Mountain Dew, right? Like I've been I drink probably like three or four Mountain Dews a day. That is not an exaggeration. Um, yeah. I drink a lot of calories. I don't, you know, I, I hardly eat, honestly. Like, I might eat, like, a meal a day. I do the Warriors yeah, meal. Both. But I yep. drink a ton, a ton of calories. I don't even drink beer anymore. I just drink soda. And yeah. I didn't drink soda until I got out of the Marine Corps, which is so fascinating. So fascinating. So I'm going to drop the kidney stone in the cup. Been pounding water for the past two days now, man. Just trying to get back to it. Trying to shed it all of it out. Water kind of just kind of dumps a lot of stuff out anyways, man. Um. You go a month with drinking water, you could probably lose about 10 pounds easily, especially if you're a dude. You Just know, I think, uh, and that's a great point. How do we turn into Dr. Phil and Dr. Phil over here? Dude, but yeah, look at the, and look at these teeth. I've that's only good. had one cavity all my life. One cavity, man. Never yeah. had braces either. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, hey man, some, some so, sometimes you just got gifts. That's all, man. Yeah, I, I got the pound, wrong. I got I the wrong to, gifts. I used to pound water, and now I, I think I constantly live dehydrated. I think that's my problem. Oh you know, yeah, I go, I go take a piss, and it looks like I mountain. My, I can smell my piss when I pee. It's so oh, bad, dude. Dude, I know, <laughs> I know. It's like uh, the other day I went in there and took a piss, and, and then the wife comes in afterwards, and she's like, "You know, if you were gonna take a shit, you could have sprayed some spray." I said, "I didn't take a, I didn't take a shit. That, that was, was piss. piss. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> oh, you so, had to, or you had to let one loose, right? No, man, it was just my piss. But uh, all anyway, right, so, you gonna watch your basketball your, tonight? There's your health moment. Do what? Yes, I'm gonna watch. You okay, watch yeah, I, that I, was your want, PSA I, health I, seminar right there by Chaos Theory. <laughs> I want to. Okay, look, if I'm the Lakers. If I'm the Lakers tonight, I think I find a way to lose this game. I think you do too. I think you want to be the eight going into this, right? I don't think you want. I I, I would rather play, um, uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Than, oh, damn it, 
damn it, we had a chance to hit it. I would rather play Minnesota oh. than I would rather play Denver. I agree. Um, I agree. Minnesota, like, I mean, Minnesota's got some studs. I mean, you, but if if you can honestly, if you can shut Edwards down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you like to think that you that's that's a very winnable series for for the Lake Show, right? Like if if you're approaching this thing, you kind of want to you kind of want to play Minnesota instead of playing Denver. I think anybody that gets Denver, anybody that draws Denver is drawing dead. Yeah. Um, uh, Jake is right. You get New Orleans, isn't it? New Orleans. You okay. get New New Orleans. New Orleans. No, who do you get? Who's one? I think you get you get the one. Do you not? Yeah, New Orleans is number seven. Yeah, OKC, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma oh, City's number one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still on beach time over here. Um let me pull up, let me pull up the standings because yeah, I thought Minnesota yeah. got the first. Did Minnesota not get the one? Yeah, it, it's OKC and then Denver. And I mean, I don't want to play Denver. <laughs> I mean, if I'm oh if damn, I'm Minnesota's right. the third. Okay, so yeah. I thought I thought Oklahoma was the three. I, I thought Minnesota was first. Thank you very much, Jake. I appreciate that. Damn, we Ooh. said Minnesota four times and we still haven't done it yet. Yeah. Yeah, there, boom, there Who it cares? is. We don't need to bring that guy up or the other guy. Well, but I mean, yeah, regardless, man. regardless, man, I'd, I'd much rather play Oklahoma or Minnesota um, than Denver, right? Like, even if you're playing. Uh, Minnesota it's, or um, Oklahoma, it's kind of the same thing. Like SGA, I, I'd like to think if you stop SGA, you'd be able to handle Holmgren and whatnot. You, st- you yeah. if you handle SGA, you shut down the two man game between SGA and Holmgren. Um, and uh, like also like if you kind of get that same type of vibe with Minnesota, they're kind of built. Uh, I won't I won't dismiss Oklahoma completely, but Oklahoma and Minnesota are kind of manufactured the same type of way, yeah. right? Yeah. Denver is the is the team that you got to worry about because you got to beat them seven games. Like yeah. that's just it. And and also they have um tremendous defense and they you know what they play. I think they play damn near nine, almost ten guys at you know, or they can go that deep. So Denver's just they're a loaded squad. You, you everybody that's watched basketball all damn year knows what you're getting with Denver, anyways. And if I'm LeBron James and company, I'm trying to play for at least um. It, it, you know, it, at least after the playing game, I'm trying to get in, you know, to play Oklahoma instead of Denver because you're going to be yeah. next stage, right? Yeah. If, if I'm the Lakers, I come in as flat as um, New Orleans was on Sunday or whenever that was um, it, it, and play that way because, uh, yeah, I mean, and that's, I mean, you talk about trickery, you talk about strategy and all that. I mean, it's just better to not play the number two seed in this scenario here. So uh, I don't know how you do this without making it too damn obvious that you're not trying to win. <laughs> so I, I don't know. And, the, you know, that's LeBron. I mean, do you tell, I mean, I mean, if you get too cute with it, though, you're, you're going to be, you're not going to be able to get into the damn playoffs. So, I mean, exactly I, I right. think you do what you need to do. You secure whatever you have to, to get in. And then you just face, you know, you cross that bridge whenever you get there, Rodney. I mean, that's the safest way to play it. Um, uh, and and if you're what if you're LeBron James? Uh, look, I, I kind of talked about this with Keenan. Like, uh, you got a pretty good season out of Anthony Davis this year. Yeah. You like to think that yep. your your dynamic duo can kind of make a little run at this thing, and hopefully, Reeds gives you a little bit of perimeter play to to help you know get you some get you some wins, get you, get you some winnable games in like in in one point margins or two point margins or whatnot, games that you can steal or games that you can steal when you're on the road, right? If you can steal a road win, pretty big for the series, man. And hopefully, you know, that can play in and what if, you know, if the hypothetical plays out to where they're playing Oklahoma, you win in yeah. Oklahoma, man, there's a good chance that you can actually come out of there and take that series because I don't know how dominant Oklahoma can be on the road. Yeah, and here's here's another great point from Jake when it comes to that. I mean, the Lakers. I mean, they're they have struggled against the Kings. So, so I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, so I don't know, man. And then that right there. I mean, what what happens if we end up with Golden State and the Lakers not in the playoffs? Yeah, that that'll be. I mean, that you know what you know what that you call that the West. You call that the Western Conference in the NBA. Uh, the best conference by far in the NBA. So I don't know, man. I think, These are going to be I fun games. Lakers, I think out of the play-in games, I think the Lakers and Warriors get in. I know that, you know, you guys are running for the hills whenever Bucky gives you the picks, but I think I think Rocky, Bucky's right with the Warriors. Or no, did he take or did he take Sacramento? Um, I, I swore I heard him say. I don't know. I meant that. I'd walked away I, for a I little bit. I thought I heard him say the Warriors. I'm going to take the Warriors, and I'm taking the Lakers to get in. Like, I know that – I know that – um you know, they, that, that Zion Williams is playing out of his gourd right now. And, you know, Ingram's one hell of a stud too, but Hey man. Um, and I think Oklahoma is actually 
or not Oklahoma. I think New Orleans is actually favored in this game. Let me, yeah, New Orleans is actually yeah. favored. It's a point and a half, but still, like that should that should give you a little bit of a, a a tale that hey, New Orleans might actually have you know LA's number here. But still, if it, if LeBron has anything to do with it, man, you want to take a little bit of a steal. Take the Lake Show tonight. Mm-hmm. Take them as the dogs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That might, might put some coin in your pocket. Yeah. Well, you got Ingram back. I mean, it, it I don't know. Laker, it, I think the Lakers should win. But the question is, will the Lakers win? I think so. I don't know, man. Who, who uh, are they going to put? My, my question is, who are they going to put on Zion Williams? Like, that, that, that's, I don't even know. I don't even know yeah. if AD can stay, can stay with yeah, Zion. No. Like, I almost he think, can't. and uh, like AD can't stick with Brandon Ingram either. So that's the problem. Like, it's just a matchup nightmare. It's a matchup, uh, matchup nightmare scenario for him. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, that, that's going to be a fun one. Good one tonight. 6 30 on TNT. Make sure you guys are checking that one out there. I'm going to take the Lakers. I'm going to take them on the little bit of an underdog little tail here. See if I can get a little bit of a flyer. Did that pause. All right. Finally, that pause. What's the line? Before. What's the line on that? One and a half. One and a half. One and a half. Huh. One and a half uh, Pelicans? Yeah, New Orleans. Favored. Favorite, favorite. Hmm. All right, let me tell you about audiovisual consultations real quick before we get into some baseball, my guys. It is the best audiovisual automation. They've been setting the standard. The best company in all the land, not just in Austin, Central Texas, but in all of America. You just get the exclusively. You just get them exclusively here in Austin, Central Texas. But for the past 35 years, they have been studying the uh the standard in audiovisual automation give them a call at 512-255-8678 that's avconsultations.com if you want two tv screens or if you want four tv screens it's all deadly you get it done with avconsultations.com i got a dream theater system downstairs i got two arcade cabinets that you guys can see hey i'm telling you right now man if you don't know what you want in your house go to the gallery of projects that they have on their website at avconsultations.com and you will get an idea i guarantee it maybe it's a golf simulator Maybe it's a baseball simulator. Ask the questions. You're not going to get it done unless you ask the questions. Give Tom a call. He just turned 60. Wish him a happy birthday and have him out to your house for a party, man. And then he'll make the party happen in your house. It's avconsultations.com. Absolutely. Good dude right there, Tom McKay. And, of course, let's uh, get a word in from our friends at Covert BK. Hi, I'm Dan Covert with my wife, Hayden. Welcome to Covert BK. Our newest location in the gorgeous hill country includes Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, and hundreds of pre-owned and certified vehicles for you to choose from. We have three service departments that are ready to take care of your car, truck, or SUV with 86 service bays to accommodate any repair and get you in and out quickly. Come visit us today to select the vehicle you've been dreaming about. Covert, born and raised in Austin. That's right. Since 1909, the Covert family of dealerships, nobody beats a Covert deal. Not now. And sure as hell, not ever. That's right. You all right? Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, the Astros? Astros? Yeah. You know, it. Um, it's, you know, we're over here talking about the uh, Texas baseball team. I mean, I don't want to. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to go yet. But it's just, you know, I'm sitting here watching this game last <laughs> the night. The hill's getting steeper. Dude, I get so superstitious. The hill's deeper already, man. I get so superstitious because while we were gone, I seriously sat and watched four days of golf. Um, and of course, on Sunday, how about I did. That? Do you, did you see how much money that dude's won over the past month? I, that guy, it um, that dude is just methodical. That dude looks like a machine. Um, Let me see right if there, I can pull this shit up. Let me see if I can pull this. Go ahead and keep talking yeah, while you're r- right there at the end where he kind of showed some emotion. Finally, I'm like, golly, oh, and yeah, ro- instead of being a robot. Right. I'm like, okay, he is human, but it's like watching all these guys just fall off the map and watching all these guys implode and watching what that guy did. I seriously, I'm like, look, I love golf. It's like a lot of people. How can you watch golf? Well, it's fucking very, sorry. It's very interesting to watch. I mean, to sit there and see what these guys do, but this guy, unbelievable. What he did on on number nine, Longhorn. So, well, well, yeah, that helps. What just, we, can he play baseball? Um, what he did on number nine and what he did on 14 or whatever that was, it's like, and and that really was the thing where it's like, everyone's imploding. It's like, okay, it's going to be Scotty's time. It's going to be Scotty's time to mess up. No, never did. Never did. And then he takes the green jacket from the live guy. It's like after uh, giving it to the live guy. That's right. That's right. He put it on the live guy. He put it on on the live guy. 
That's right. That's right. John Ron, boy, I didn't see a lot of interaction right there. It was like, man, can we get this? It's like when you step into the same room with your ex. It's like, boy, this is no, very. That didn't, I mean, um, that didn't. I, I mean, I saw the the post interview at or yeah. um when they were in when they were in the clubhouse, or whatever. It seemed cool. I didn't see. I didn't think that there were any antics or any bad blood between yeah. them. Yeah. Well, what, maybe. Th- why did you hear something different? No, I mean, it, they just look uncomfortable. Well, I mean, if I'm John Rahm, I'm un- uncomfortable anyway because I got to give the jacket away. So maybe that's what I'm reading into. But I can't find this stat on how much, uh, Scotty. how much Scotty Shuffler has won in the past thirty days. But it it is an ask. It is a a generational amount of money. It, like and I'll, change, and I'll change you. your life, change, change generations of your life. And, and I'll tell you what what really sucked is. We're sitting there, or I'm sitting there watching, you know, four days of golf, I guess three and a half days of golf by the time we got over there. And uh, so we're like, I was talking to somebody in one of the bars there at the hotel and they're like, oh yeah, they're going to be here. The PGA tour is coming here May 25th through the 27th or something like that. I'm like, damn, I'm a month early. I might have to come back. But um, yeah, so kind of my long winded thing, what I'm talking about right here to your baseball question to me is it's like, okay, I didn't watch the Astros. I, I didn't pay attention to the Astros for a little bit. And they won a couple of games. I flip it on last night, and it's the same old shit like when I left. I just um, – and, and the bad part for me about the Astros wags is, man, that offense is great. I think he got the best offense in in, in the majors right now. God bless him, man. Yeah, you just can't get the arms together. That's the problem. Dude, um, man, you got like... Altuve, Altuve, you know, when you got to rely on him. Uh, here's the telling story. I was kind of joking around with about this with Keenan yesterday yep. when mm-hmm. – when they gave, I, th- I think Altuve hit one really early in the damn game, right? When I'm listening to the game, a lead off, I think it was a lead off, as a matter of fact. Um, and they go, and that right there is uh, the hit of the game and the home run of the game. I'm like, guys, it's only, it's, it's, you know, we still had a lot of, a lot of ball came to play here, man. But yeah. dude, and, and of course, you know, Altuve goes, goes yard a second time. Um, I think Alvarez even, um, even went yard or whatnot. But look, uh, if the lumber hasn't been sizzling or hasn't been hot at all, like the wood's not just getting hot, man, and you're you're giving away, you know, pitch of the game or hit of the game and, and home run of the game in the first damn inning or the, the first couple of innings, it, it, it's telling about your ball club, man. Like the, the lumber just hasn't been there. It hasn't been able to wake up yet. When will it wake up, Rodney? Hopefully it does soon because you're dropping – I mean, you had a, a, a heartbreak series to the, you know, to the inner ball club, the, you know, an interstate ball club with the Rangers there, defending champs. But still, you know, uh, it, it's one that you would think that you would like to come away. If you can't get a sweep, you'd like to, you know, take the damn, uh, you know, take the damn series or whatnot. And now you're you're dropping you're dropping some games to the Halos here, and mm-hmm. we can't we we can't be having that, Rodney. We well, just can't. And, and as I mentioned, you know the the whole Jose Abreu situation there. I mean, it's just uh, his batting average is pathetic. I think it's like 0.067 or, or or somewhere in that vicinity, somewhere in that general vasectomy. So it, it's not very good. Did you say vasectomy? Yeah, general vasectomy, not general vasectomy, <laughs> general vasectomy. Okay. So you have well, that. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. 12 million in the last month. 12 million. That's yeah. a damn nuggets. Um, and then you have, and then, then you know, Josh Hader last night. I mean, there's your big money acquisition that you make uh, to solidify the bullpen. That dude comes in and gives up four earned runs. I, I think he's given up more earned runs this year than uh, to now than he did all of last year. And I'm not trying. I didn't want to say this when when you guys made the, you know, the transaction or whatnot. And I was just like, hey, you know, you guys bring in Josh Hader, and all he's been doing is just giving away runs this past season, and. I mean, I, I, that, I wasn't trying to be tongue in cheek. I wasn't trying no. to be cute or not. But I mean, <laughs> hell, Rodney, I didn't know that it was actually going to come to fruition. But but it's like, dude, it's early. The Orioles have their struggles too. You know what I mean? Well, and it, great point by Jake. The AL West. Uh, I mean, it is called. Uh, I mean, it is all a little. Excuse I, mean, me. I said Halo every- Bravos. My bad. My bad. Yeah. I said hey, you guys are. You guys got to match up with the with Atlanta. Not um, yeah, yeah, Atlanta. Anaheim. Well, and, and that's the other part of that. I mean, looking at this, this has been a pretty tumultuous schedule to start. You start with the Yankees. You've played the, you played the Rangers twice. Now you got the Bravos in there. The Royals are not anything to laugh at at the moment. I know it's very early. So it, it's, been, it's been a you know stacked schedule. But, man, 
I think the biggest thing to me is you're not seeing anything fixed that you were running into last year where you're running into the same right. thing where you get that. Okay. Early Jose Altuve home run. You're leading one to nothing, getting into the sixth and seventh inning. You're very comfortable. And, and it's like, it, it's like, you know, watching a movie over and over and over, you know, what's going to happen. And that's what continues to happen. You go to the pen, you go to the relievers. You, I mean, at least Montero was, has been a little bit better. Another big money acquisition. So, you know, I, I don't know. Way too early. Way too early. But, geez, man, it's a um, little concerning. You got Brown versus <laughs> Lopez tonight on the bump today. You got any uh, You got any hopefuls or any pr any predictions for tonight's matchup? Well, uh, hopefully Hunter Brown is going to respond from uh, his last outing. That was just an epic collapse. Your best pitch has been Blanco. Your best arm has been Blanco. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then with Hunter Brown, I mean, when, when you want to talk about imploding, when you want to talk about just completely shitting the bed, I mean, that's what Hunter Brown did. And, and hopefully that's, um, he will rebound from that. Um, I was talking to an Astro friend this morning and he's like, well, the good thing is Verlander's good. We'll be back probably by the weekend or Sunday or Monday. I'm like, is that really a good thing? I mean, what, what are you going to get from him? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. The good thing is the West is kind of stagnant. The West is kind of stagnant. Everybody's kind of staying, kind of staying within earshot right there. You know, you just go on a big run. All you got to do is win about 12 in a row and you're going to be fine. That's it, Wags. That's all it. you got to do is win 12 in a row? Yeah, That's win all. 12 in a row and you're just throw it together. Just piece yeah. it together, my guys. That's it. It's easy. No, man, baseball's tough, dude. Baseball, um, it's a uh it's it's a love hate relationship for most teams and for most fan bases, right? With their with their clubs. Um, not if you're a Rangers fan. It seems like you know the Rangers almost seemingly have everything figured out. They're winning close ball games. They're winning um, blowouts, man. Um, everything seems to be going right for the guys up up uh, up north on 35. Um, yeah. Uh, they, they got a, a nice little bout that they'll be playing tonight, too. Who you like between uh, the Rangers and the Tigers there? We got Gray and, um, and Mize on mm. the mound today, buddy. Well, got to go with the Rangers, man. Yeah. Um, and it's, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you would think, I mean, you think you should go with the Rangers. Isn't that the nice thing about this is you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I mean, it's, you know, you can look at football and it's like, okay. I'm going to take the Tigers. You know what? I'm going to take yeah. the Tigers here. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think uh, from a cousin standpoint, um, yeah, go with the Tigers. Absolutely go with the Tigers. Tigers plus 120? I'm going to take Tigers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. From a cousin standpoint, I'm definitely going with the Tigers there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, great call right there, uh, Gabe, uh, with uh, with Singleton. No, uh, you know that that's not an answer. That that dude's not an answer at first. Uh, the yeah, the kid at Sugarland. That 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 I think uh, would would be your call up right there. Of course, my whole thing is you still got all that Abreu money that you got to deal with. I mean, I've said Dubon, and you know, folks that I've talked about putting Dubon on first. It's like, well, he hadn't played there very much. It's like, well, I, I don't care. I mean, he's going to generate a little bit of. I mean, he's going to hit the baseball at least. Um, so I don't know. Long way to go, man. Long way to go. Uh, yeah, Jake. I mean, but at least you guys got your arms figured out and that's what you need, you know, especially in the, the beginning of the year, I would think. And it kind of makes sense with pitchers and catchers reporting earlier than, than the lumber, but I, it's like we talked about, you know, a couple of weeks ago, usually I think that the, the lumber has the advantage, right? And it seems like the lumber hasn't had the advantage this past season. It seems like the hitters and the hurlers usually have the advantage, regardless of of them coming and reporting early. Um, but it seems like this year, man, they are they're they're getting the smoking wagons and 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 uh, the smoking aces or whatever you know up and rolling. Um, real quick, let's tell you about my friends at Pick Sports Gear. You guys already know about it. Um, hey, it's it's the it's the apparel that's designed right here in Austin by by people by our 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 home partners here with Pick Sports Gear that are right here in Austin, Texas. Man, they make the best paddles. They make the best apparel. They got a hat, you know, hats out there that allow you to, to breathe, so you're not sweating and getting sweat all in your eyes because you're not going to be able to see the ball when it gets in your eyes, right? And I've already mentioned the paddle. The paddle's fifteen. It's not fifteen millimeters. It's thirteen millimeters, and it's uh, it's licensed by uh, USA Pickleball. Um, so look, guys, it's got a little bit of uh, an ergonomic dimensions to where you don't get the arthritic um, feeling in your wrist like you usually get if you're holding, a, you know, a paddle or like I usually get when I'm holding a paddle or holding a power drill for a long extent of time. And it's super lightweight. It's uh, it's got aerodynamics to where you can actually have breathable holes through the damn paddle so it doesn't the air doesn't get caught up 
and the paddle, you know, it just feels lightweight and no, no resistance with the air at all. You got to get out. Oh, and the spin. You guys saw that backspin that I was able to do with Pick Sports Gears paddles. You got to get out there, man. And also, make sure you're using the code that we have. Right, uh, I think it's Radio 10, but I don't actually have it because I don't have my, my glasses anywhere near me, and I don't have the damn email pulled up. But you guys, go to the video. You see them right there, PickSportsGear.com, and make sure you're, uh, you're subscribing with us. So there you go. They're most the worst ter- the worst read of all of the year, Rodney. Um, but I'll make up for it. I swear to God. Well, I got to tell you. S- speaking of the, and I can totally understand. You know, having the holes in the paddle. Um, you know, for you know, for aerodynamic stuff. Had a principal in junior high. His name was Mister Polson. And Did when you went butt with the paddle, yes. When you went in there to get when you went in there to get paddle, he had the little hole saws, little hole saw holes drilled into the into the paddle, into the wooden paddle, oh. and it it's like when that son of a bit or when that gentleman would swing back, and it was coming for your ass because I got those. It was like you could hear it coming. It's like thankfully oh. that was outlawed by the time I was in school or whatnot. But no, the one thing I will say about the paddle, like I, I, I might have to bring that right? back sometime. Um, I used <laughs> I used one of the paddles that they had at uh Boone, at Boulder Acres or whatnot. Yeah. Um, a little bit, it, it, you can tell the difference in in weight distribution, right? You really can. <laughs> um, used a pick sports gear paddle, didn't put it down. And oh, by the way, everybody else that was you know at demo days usually bought a paddle. I think what out of the four people that came up out of three or four people that would come up three would buy it you know Mm -hmm. that's just the stats that they would give of course more than four people came up to the damn table i'm just giving the stats that they provided man so they had tremendous success out there make sure you're hitting them up pick sportsgear.com my man gabe over there in la not los angeles lockhart area remembering mr polson it was always you want detention or licks and it's like who's giving the licks it's like who's giving the licks it's like Polson's giving the licks, not Mr. Schultz. I'm like, I'll take detention. Mr. Schultz is giving the licks. I'll take licks. <laughs> licks. That's what they called them. Licks. You know no, what's curious you. to me about the AL is we were talking uh, at the beginning, uh, beginning of the before opening day, where we said that the central was going to be kind of the one that it was going to be. Yeah, you know, pick of the litter. Well, it it, it is the pick of the litter. But man, you got the, I, I said at the beginning of the year that the Guardians with those young arms, if they could keep those young guys healthy, they were going to be pretty good, which they've done so far. The Walgreens are 11 and 5 right now, sitting really good. Kansas City's only lost six games. Um, the AL Central has one, two, three, four, three teams with better records than the West. And we were sitting here talking about how good the West was going to be. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, man. Um, look, and of course, you give me my, if, you want my pick out of it, man. I'm going to tell you, I think from the AL Central, I still like the 20s. I think the 20s are going to do it. But from the NL Central, give me the Reds. Give me the big red machine, man. Um, I, I I don't know if the Pirates are going to be able. To, well, hell, the Pirates, the Pirates, kind they usually kind of drop towards the end yeah. of the damn season anyways, right? Like usually the Pirates kind of get in their way, but. I mean, the Pirates have been looking pretty damn good. They've been, they've, they're kind of like a club like the Orioles. They're probably like three or four years away, or maybe not even that, maybe like two or three years away from producing what the Orioles are doing. They got a pretty good farm system as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, hell, you guys, you, you know, the arms that are down there on the farm system for the Pirates there. Uh, the Baton, the Baton Bucks, I think they can get something going there in the Central. I, they, they might be my sleeper team. Um, but right now, I like the Reds coming out of the NL, the NL Central. Yeah, and you know the Brew Crew always hangs around. You know they they always make themselves relevant. I think I think the Brewers and the Reds are going to be. The they ones. gave the Orioles a nice little series, man. Yeah, they did. They did, man. Um, and I I, I do think I, I was actually talking to a dude on a plane. He had all his Reds gear on, and I asked. I was talking to him, and he he was talking about their farm system and and what they have in the works right there. So yeah, I think uh, that that could be something right there. That that I agree with the Reds right here. Cleveland's always got the arms. It always feels yeah. like Cleveland has the arms. Yeah. 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 Cleveland to me from the, from the beginning has kind of, kind of, kind of been a little bit of sleeper team right there for the old Walgreens. I think that, uh, that they may be don't discount those guys, but it all depends on staying healthy. That that's the other part, like he's talking about right there. Um, when those arms start going down and, and, you know, I think once we get to the all-star break, that's when we'll really have a good idea. Cause that's, that's when teams begin to kind of come back a little bit. Not just that teams start making moves too, right? Like you see the actual shape of the roster start to form. Like, you know what you're not going to be able to get uh, or, or what your farm system can't provide. So you're going to have to go out there and start making moves on the free agent yeah. market or not free agent market, but just 
trying to see uh, what teams need in, in terms of trade and acquisitions that way. Um, yeah, we're along. Like oh, uh, ag- yeah. again, we're we're. I don't want to be doomsday. I don't want Astro fans to be doomsdayers or anything like that. And I know, hell, I think the the Rangers are are kind of you know flirting with five hundred. I think too. They're they're they're. I think they're just above five hundred, maybe. Um, yeah, they're all locked in right there together. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah, not, they're they're nine and eight. Yeah, um, they're nine and eight. They're, yeah, they're just above five hundred. So look, it's guys, it's it's the start of a you know a young campaign. In the world, like the Orioles only got ten wins, so it's it's not. It's not like the Orioles are kicking ass, anyways. The, the only two teams that are kind of running away with with things right now are the Yankees and the damn uh, Dodgers. Which, you know, surprise, surprise. You know, well, actually, yeah. it, I, I, I'm, I'm honestly taken back by how good the Yankees have been right out of the gate. I, I honestly yeah. am. Yeah, they're they're really damn good. They they are really damn good. And and without Garrett Cole too. So. Without Garrett Cole, that's right. And and with with Houston, I mean, it really is. If you go back and you look at the uh, the deficiencies or the problems that you had going into. You know the playoff, the the postseason last year. You know, kind of as a, as a regular season ended, none of that's been fixed. I mean, it's like you know the inconsistency on the offense. I mean, it's it's like you score two runs or you score thirteen, no in between. I don't um, even think Degrom's going to be back this year, though, Jake. That's the thing. Like, how how long's the recovery time for TJ? Yeah, like after, I, I don't it, expect that. He ain't coming. Back. He's not coming back at least until after the All Star break, if that yeah. is if that is even a timeline. I don't know the timeline on Degrom. I, yeah, I just don't. But I think that this is where it bodes well for for Texas in a situation like that. That the West is so tight right now. I mean, I think if everything stays in a cluster as it is right now, once you get to the All Star break and you, you can get some of these dudes back to where that's you know beneficial for Texas. Where with Houston, it's like okay, you, you've got some guys out. I mean, you got Framber and the, and these guys that are that are injured as well. I mean, get them back, but still, it's just the inconsistencies. You know, it's like Texas, you get those dudes back, you are going to be immediately well because you're going to get production. Where with the I Astros, thought Bradford, I thought Bradford's been the saving grace for the Rangers so far. He I absolutely has. He absolutely has. Yeah. And that's where, I mean, I think the Rangers are sitting in the best spot right now uh, in the West. I, I mean, unless uh, Seattle, I mean, I, I don't know. What are you going to get out of Seattle? I mean, they're seven and 10. But but they're two games back. I mean, the Astros were crying a river here for them. All concerned. What happens, when, what happens when Valdez comes does come back though? I think Val, I, I think there's something wrong with Valdez. There, there really is do. something wrong with Valdez, and that's that's why I really hope that this isn't something where they're going to rush this dude back and, and make it worse. And and yes, there is definitely something wrong with with Framber Valdez. Um, I don't know if that I don't know if it's physically, mechanically, or emotionally. I don't know what it is, but something is not right with that dude. Something is not right with that dude. Yeah, we, well, I we're, mean, we're I, Dr. Phil today like crazy, Wax. Hey man, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV, that's for sure. Hey, you want to tell them about autograph real quick before we gotta yeah, get out of here? Man, let's let's talk about autograph. Uh you want to get rewarded uh for listening to Texas, listening and watching Texas Sports Unfiltered, our friends at Autograph co-founded, you know, I call him the congressman, but I may be calling him NFL quarterback because I heard that he said he no would way. gladly pop in if needed. He would come back if needed hey. for a little bit. Tom Brady is who I'm talking about, my friends. Co-founded. I know uh, who you talk about. We can get to that here in just a second. Uh, autograph. <laughs> yeah, grab the wrong thing. I'm all thrown off right here. It gives you access to all yeah, of your favorite my glasses. I don't have my phone. I don't have my glasses. Longhorn content in one place, uh, exclusive tickets and giveaways, all kinds of cool stuff right there. You're already listening to TSU. You might as well get rewarded for listening to some of this chaos and uh, debauchery that you get uh, right here on this uh, on this network. Head over to your app store and you can download it for free. It's autographed, just like autograph, just like the song, just like all that good stuff. And download it today. Don't forget to use that uh, promo code TSU, like Texas Sports Unfiltered, TSU. Check it out. But yeah, Brady, I, I saw something where Brady said that, uh, you know, if needed, no, he didn't say if needed. He was like, if he got a call asking him to come back, like if a quarterback got hurt and they needed from, a fill-in. From which team, though? Like, it's got to be the perfect situation, doesn't it, Tom? Hey, Jerry right? Jones. Like, he ain't Jerry he's Jones. Not, he's not coming. Actually, he might, you know what, say, say the Vikings call Tom Brady. Atlanta. <laughs> so, something like that. Where, well, yeah. where, wait, where's he at now? Where, where's where's Tom living at these days? Where's, I think he's where's in California? I, th- I think he went back to California. Is he in Cali? So, so it wouldn't be the Rams. 49ers. Shit, 49ers call. I'd be like, 
Oh, uh, you just call Tom Brady in the <laughs> league like, got problems. You want 49ers me to drive? call Tom Brady in the league's got some issues. I'm telling I mean, you right like, now. You want me to drive or you want me to fly? You want me to walk? What do you want me to do? I'm headed your way, says Congressman Tom Brady. 49 the 49ers called Tom Brady <laughs> up and and we got some issues here. That was Can his Tom dream job. Could Tom that was still his... do it? I think he can still do it. Like he said, he's always in shape. He said, oh, I stay in great shape. Even better shape than I am, man. That's for sure. Uh, he said he wants to play pickleball with you, as a matter of fact. That's yeah, what he said he in that interview. He better. He is rocking the pick sports gear. That's for sure. <laughs> he said, he I want to play a lot better than I. He ain't, he ain't put anything else on his body but TV 12. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, and it'll be TB12 versus the Wagner Wire mm. on the pickleball court. Well, let me tell you something. His knees are going to hold up a lot better than mine because mine, <laughs> mine almost shattered when I fell on it, my guy. Uh, yeah. It was bad. Yeah, so, uh, it was bad. Yeah. Yeah. 49ers, I'm sure, uh, would be a great uh, landing spot for him. There's my man. Hey, Jeff. How you doing, brother? I heard the word autograph and I didn't hear the motions out of you, Wag. Oh, sorry. No, that's Rodney. Rodney does the motions. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> I was all thrown off there. Oh, I, was, I was just making up for Rodney being gone. There you go. There you go. Oh, hey. were you doing the motions? I no, I did the sound. I didn't do the motion. I did the sound effects. Oh, yeah. nice. That's good. Speaking of autograph, y'all know I'm a card guy. I happen to have one of my favorites on my desk. Rodney, you'll appreciate this. Mm -hmm. A little Jimmy Johnson action. Oh, <laughs> Signed yeah. too, man. How much Ring of that honor one? member. You, yes, got a, you got a price Find on that? What, you got a price on that? Do you have um, a price on that card? No, it, I'm I'm not selling it. That I got I got that. My my dad and I got that at uh when the Cowboys used to practice at St. Ed's. Yeah. We go down there and uh, that when when you're poor, Wags, you gotta have uh your summer vacations take on a different angle, different. Oh summer. no, I feel you. I feel so, you, man. That, hey, that was good enough for me. My dad's like, hey, let's just drive. Let's just get up early one day, drive down to St. Ed's and go watch Cowboys practice. I'm like, that's good enough for me. Yeah, for that's awesome. vacation. Yes, I'm that's right there Christmas with you, man. We in were some uh, houses, That's a Christmas gift. Li living in Lockhart when the Oilers would come to Southwest Texas. Yeah. We'd kind of we'd kind of take the jaunt over there, maybe get some Herberts and then go uh, go watch oh. more moon and those guys. Get Dude, Herberts. Herberts is uh, I'll take Herberts over any Mexican food place in our general area. Man. I knew I loved you, my man. Me are all these are too. all these venues still intact? Is oh, yeah. Herbert still here? Yeah. Oh yeah. I I, yeah. I, I ain't got. I, yeah. Dude, I'm I'm dude. the guy from out. Of, I, I'm the out of town guy here. That place is the shit, <laughs> and it's it's caught fire. There, people have driven into it because it's like tight parking and all this. Yeah. Shit. That place is unbelievable. I think they opened one in New Braunfels, but it's they like did. they did. It's kind of it's a little bit new, but I love the San Marcos one because. Oh. Like you walk in and you can like, you know, you're at a good restaurant, a good greasy spoon, good hole in the wall when you walk in and you smell the grease on the walls, but it ain't like nasty grease. It's like, That's man, right. there's some good eating going on here. That's right. And the floor is shaky because man. it's like, it's like two built, three, four buildings that have been. Yeah. Oh, don't try to use the bathroom at Herbert. It's like, oh you gotta, <laughs> dude, if, if you have to take a dump, you will not get up. Before we get out, real quick, before we get out, Rodney, I don't think I don't know if we gave our picks real quick. All right, I got Lakers, Lakers for uh, tonight, and I also got the Warriors of the Kings. Uh, I, I'm going with you, Lakers and Warriors. Yeah, hey, yeah. sounds good. All right, guys, I don't don't want to leave you too much. Um, you know, I don't want to steal too much thunder or whatnot, but I got to get the hell out of here, man. I got to actually, yeah. I got to blow mud, man. So I'll see. Uh, That's gonna happen. you. Guys. Happens to the best of us. Hey, Rodney, yep. you know what else uh, Herbert does? They use that like government cheese, mm -hmm. you know, the cheap cheese, and I don't know, I don't know what it is. The Mexican places that use like the government cheese, you can taste it, and it yeah. tastes so much better than like highfalutin cheese. Yeah, dude. And and the other part about it is, you know, people say, oh, the salsa at Herberts. No, that's chile. The chile at Herberts is, oh, man. I man. depends on you know. <laughs> I think it was last yeah last week. Uh, my brother, his wife, my wife, uh, and me and my daughter, we went and ate at Herbert's after my daughter's t-ball game, and this the you know it was salsa because I was like, if I can eat this, no problem. Like somebody back there, whoever made this, had a really good day today. Yeah, but you you get there on when somebody had a bad day. It's Ooh. it's uh. Mm. Hot for the sake of being hot. We, we, we would always joke around about that with, with my grandmother because it's like we'd, we'd always go to Sunday lunch, and it didn't matter if we were having turkey or, 
you know, whatever Mexican food. Yeah. It's like, okay, grandma's pissed off today for some reason because <laughs> it's just so hot, you know? So, uh, yeah, God love that. I gotta, I gotta get back to Herbert's. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Double R. Thank you for your service today, sir. And, yeah, uh, good to y'all see y'all you back. back buddy. Yeah. Good to be back boys. Yeah. Y'all, y'all uh, I'll be checking in. See y'all in a little bit. There he is. Chaos theory is officially in the books. It's only an hour. It's Jeff. It's Jordan. Jordan portals open. Oh yeah, not um, Texas though today. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. So the uh, the winter portal window, I uh, woke up at five o'clock, and I remember Kyle McCord went in the portal about like five oh six or something like that. He went yeah. in at the crack of dawn. I set my alarm for six this morning and wake up and see like nothing big is broken. <laughs> <laughs> and just kept pushing the alarm back an hour until I got up at like eight and was like, all right, I, I need to be up now. Um, but yeah, it's been like slow compared to uh, the winter window. But um, I mean, yeah, we're, we're going to see more guys enter. You know, a, a lot of the, a lot of the, the the players, the kids are not really advised on how the uh, portal necessarily works. Um, so. Most of them have been planning to go in the portal for several days, if not weeks, if not months now, but uh, they won't actually show up to compliance to turn it in until the day it opens. Right. Um, and then uh, when that happens, you know, it, it could take two hours for them to show up. It could take two days. Yep. You never know. So um, as far as Texas goes, uh, Peyton Kirkland is officially appearing in the portal. Uh, Samaj Burrell tweeted that he is officially in the portal. Haven't seen anything on Billy Walton, but Jordan, I, uh, I'll put you on the spot. I don't know if you want to shed light on where you feel like Billy Walton's heading next. I know you and I talked about it. I don't know if you want to drop any hints, but feel free, or if not, go ahead, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the, the the source I spoke with, there's, I mean, I actually spoke with multiple sources um, yesterday about Billy Walton and Pretty much everyone liked uh, SMU's chances. Some people had some more of their details. Some some other people are just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know where he's going, but he has a cousin at SMU just like he had a cousin at Texas. And, you know, SMU, they've – I don't want to say made their money um, because I don't I don't know if necessarily anything's returned – they've gotten any return from this yet. But, like, yeah. SMU is the king of going and getting these players from Dallas and then play a snap in year one or year two or wherever they originally went to and going and bringing them home. Um, yeah. And I mean, that that looks likely for Billy Walton. If you kind of remember it, he had a, a very interesting recruitment, um, you know, kind of the mid power five, lower, lower power five type offers. Texas evaluates him in the spring of his junior year. Um, they love him at that point. They were already going all in on Malik Muhammad, who uh, even though they have different last names, they come from the same family. So they're yeah. their cousins. Um, and they, they started going kind of all in on Billy as well as this, this tweener edge rusher that they liked a lot in the class of 2023 to kind of combine with Colton Vlasic as, as the two edge rushers in that class. Mm-hmm. And they were uh, recruiting him that spring, recruiting him pretty hard. And then Oklahoma State, they uh, got him on an April official yeah. visit. You know, it's, it's very interesting. So the whole month of May is kind of a dead period, um, and, and it's because coaches are out on the road during spring ball. So you'll see a lot of schools like try to get these April OVs and some will land early commitments. But, you know, like in Billy Walton's case, it didn't really matter because he ended up still taking his other officials. And with Billy, he kind of just got up to Stillwater and Gundy. I remember he gave like he kind of he explained it all to Mike, who explained it all to me. Mm -hmm. But Gundy and Oklahoma State were like, hey, buddy, you're never going to play at Texas. Like you need to come here like all this like this is. Texas doesn't develop. Look at all these. I remember they showed them like this thing about how they had more players drafted in recent years than Texas and how that was a big thing for him. And then Texas stuck through it, kept recruiting him, got him in on the OV, and he flipped on the OV, and he was solid the rest of the way. But, you know, uh, I like SMU's chances a lot. Um, He has a lot of cousins that that played with him on that SOC team. But the the two main ones were Malik Muhammad and uh, Abdul Muhammad, who also goes by Atrey. And Abdul Muhammad was a three-star defensive back signing in the 2023 class that ended up at SMU. Um, not sure. I, I can't remember if he redshirted or not at SMU last year, but I, I believe – I know he got at least one interception in the SMU spring game this year, if not two. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's at least supposed to rotate, if not start. I know that for a fact. So, 
Uh, I like SMU a lot for Billy Walton. Uh, as far as Samaj Burrell, I haven't even checked in there. Um, yeah. That one will kind of be hard uh, just because obviously, you know, everyone knows um, what or why he's in the portal. Um, and then Peyton Kirkland, I haven't checked in with anyone there, but uh, I know Michigan State was kind of a school for him. That whole staff is gone now. That's the Mel Tucker staff that was recruiting him. Right. So not looking at Michigan State and, like, again, I have absolutely no intel here. But if I was a betting man, probably like UCF. That, that's probably what yeah. I think. Um, yeah. He's from it's, Orlando. Uh, that program, UCF, they're kind of doing what SMU and Houston do where they're bringing these players back home. Um, and also, like, UCF doesn't have the strongest NIL, but they will spend more money in the portal than they will anywhere else, um, which you would kind of assume is a, a normal thing, but not necessarily. Um so UCF, I, I could totally see Peyton Kirkland posting a UCF graphic in the next few weeks. But again, that's off absolutely zero intel. Yeah, so. when you said it, uh, you know, Michigan State to me jumped out, and, and that I was like, well, I mean, they were one of his finals. I I actually thought that's where he was going was Michigan State initially, but like you said, that's an entirely different staff now. That staff got run out, and it's Jonathan Smith. And that staff that came over from whoever came over with him from Oregon State. So, yeah. And also, like, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but, like, man, so this is, like, an example of how recruiting so much of it's for show is, like, you look back at his top five that didn't include Texas. Mm -hmm. I seriously – I don't remember what logos were in there outside of Michigan State and Ohio State. But, like, I remember getting told as soon as he posted it by Hudson Standish that it was going to be Texas, even though they weren't in there. And I remember looking at all the schools on there and being like, outside of Michigan State, I don't know which of these would take it. You know what I mean? Uh, In like Alabama, now, Alabama, Florida, Miami, Michigan State, Oklahoma were his top five. Okay. Oklahoma, maybe. I know Miami that cycle. No. Florida, maybe. Bama, no. Um, but like now, like it makes it a lot harder for anyone to look at his older, you know, recruitment and be like, okay, where could this guy be going? Yeah, just because, like, what I said, he probably wasn't a take. And like, all those stat, all those schools are gonna have different staffs. Um, by the or not, not all, but Florida will be different. Uh, Oklahoma, I mean, they won't be different, but you have no I faith in Billy Napier, Jordan. Yeah, I don't. I made that very clear, and I feel bad because he actually follows me on Twitter. Um, so. Seems yeah. like a good dude. There's a lot of guys who are great dudes, but are just bad football coaches. I think Charlie Strong's a great dude. Chuck Strong, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah. So now with the with Peyton Kirkland, Samaja Burrell, um, and Billy Walton in the portal, Texas is now at 86 scholarships. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to need at least one more guy to come out with an announcement. Um, and we anticipate Texas adding at least one guy, most likely two guys, to the portal. So yeah. that means at least two to three more guys probably have to announce. So um, it's got you know the second the second portal window mirrors the second high school recruiting window. So everything got done in that that before the December signing period. You know, Phil Simi and all the you know the guys that got added at the end, and then we're sitting here in January and February, and it's like, well, it's just nothing really going on at that point and I, everybody knows what the needs are you know it's it's into your defensive line and if you have a surprise defection like we talked about yesterday maybe you go best player available if something pops up in the portal that's just too good to pass up you know you could look at it but there aren't there aren't any pressing needs for this team right now other than into your defensive line yeah um and speaking of into your defensive line um and I guess before I get into that, if you want to show uh, on the transfer portal, and I, I try to be as unbiased when I say this, um, and I think it is unbiased, but the 24-7 sports like transfer portal show blows all the others out of the water, and it's mm -hmm. not, like, pardon my language, it's not fucking close. It, it's just not. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an amazing show, great production. Um, and we have the best people that cover the portal in, in the industry work for 24-7, and they're on air talking about it, so... Uh, if you want to check that out, it's over on the 24-7 Sports YouTube. Um, but as I was watching that show this morning, 
Chris Hummer, who's, you know, our main portal guy, talked about Bill Norton, who's the uh, interior defensive lineman from Arizona that actually uh, entered. Uh, I still don't know if he's actually entered the portal. I know he announced his intentions, but I never saw anyone on Twitter post he's actually in there, but I do assume he is. Yeah. So with that being – He enters as a grad transfer. Yes, yes. So um, with that being said, if I remember correctly what Hummer kind of said, I, I don't remember the exact words he said, but – uh, I think he sees he, he sees Texas as a favorite for Norton, but pretty much every SEC school you can think of is trying to get involved. So, like with that being said, um, the price could be going up, and you know, like I talked about yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot more teams that need D linemen than there are D linemen who are talented enough to play at those teams. Um, so, a lot of these guys are going to have ridiculous markets uh, yeah. for them, and that that could. This could be a cause of it. You know, there, there's not a ton of Bill Norton's walking around in the portal. So all the other SEC schools, they need them too. So um, still like Texas chances there. I'm, I'm going to ride with Chris Hummer and anything he wants to ride on. Uh, just that's how much I trust him. That's the type of journalist I look at him as. Yeah. Um, so still like Texas's chances, but I don't think that one is as much of a slam dunk as – uh, many thought it was originally. So Yeah, you know, interior defensive line is always one of those places where – very, very rare is a school that doesn't need either offensive line help or interior D line help. Uh, you know, so I would expect the usual players to be. I mean, hell, you look at Texas last year. We talked about Texas having the best interior D line in the country. They still took a transfer in the in the spring window when they added Trill Carter because Sart just wanted to be a thousand percent sure that they weren't going to be lacking kind of a worst case scenario type deal. I would expect Jordan, the typical players, to be involved for Bill Norton. I mean, Florida State's always heavily involved in the portal. Uh, you know, he's from the state of Tennessee. You know, Tennessee hits the portal hard. Auburn does really good in the transfer portal. Alabama needs a little bit of yeah. everything right now. The so. only the only school off top I can think of that like, or the two schools I can think of off top that are like, okay, we're, we're probably this dude won't play. A and M and Ole Miss. Just because AM, and m like – and I thought it was kind of interesting. A Hummer brought this up <laughs> before he started talking about A&M. But he's like, everyone in our industry loves to talk about everyone who left A&M. Like, they yeah. actually signed a, a, a decent secondary portal class. But as much as – as much talent that they called Station lost because of Jimbo Fisher's exit or firing, mm -hmm. um, they still got a lot of NFL bodies down there. And yeah, in fact, like uh, not trying to necessarily rub any Texas fans the wrong way that might be on here, but like there is probably more NFL talent in the D line room at AM, interior D line, than there might be at Texas currently. And no, it's that's like, not a stretch. That's not look, a stretch. Back, look back at what they recruited, um, and how they recruited. We know how they got them there, you know, and yeah, I always talk about what's important with D line recruiting. and it doesn't just pay dividends with recruiting rankings. It actually improves your football team as well. So, um, yeah. yeah, but – so, yeah, I, I wouldn't see AM or Ole Miss necessarily getting super involved with Bill Norton. Uh, I know Oklahoma um, talking to uh, Colin Kennedy. It seems like the, the coaches at Oklahoma have really liked uh, how the freshman D-line class that they signed has come on in, in, in spring football. Uh, Jaden Jackson, who we had ranked as a three-star and actually was silently committed to Texas at one point over mm -hmm. this summer. Hank and I did our best to be like, hey, we know this kid's a three-star, but like, they, they don't look at him like that. Yeah. And there is a serious chance Jaden Jackson starts as a true freshman by the end of the season at Oklahoma. Yeah. Not because Oklahoma is necessarily weak at that position, but because he's that good. And yeah. like, I remember he goes to IMG. I remember seeing him play when I went out there with Colin Kennedy uh, in Nashville to go see IMG play Lipscomb Academy. And IMG had David Stone, who finished as a five-star also at Oklahoma, at edge. They had Jaden Jackson as one of the D tackles. They had um, TJ Lindsey, who was another three-star D tackle out of Arkansas, transferred to IMG. He ended up at Auburn. And then I forgot the other kid. It was some kid who ended up at like Georgia Tech or something as an edge rusher. They had four Power 5 D linemen, and Jane Jackson was by far the best one, and one of those D linemen was a five-star. So coming away from that, I, I knew he was pretty special, so I'm not surprised to see he's kind of doing amazing um, so far through spring. But, 
But yeah, so Bill Norton might be some comp there with the SEC, but don't really see it being uh, the main schools Texas could or wouldn't necessarily compete with for is, uh Sorry, is Nigel, is Nigel Smith going to be an interior guy for OU? Or is that, TB, is that TBD? Uh, yeah, so he was always kind of a tweener in high school, but uh, I actually did ask about him in, within like the last week, and uh -huh. they're working him out at D-line. And he yeah. was always um, – I always, I, to be honest, I was never in love with Nigel Smith as a prospect. Um, I didn't really love our ranking for him. Um, and the way I always viewed him is super high floor, but just like decently close to a ceiling already. Um, not that he's physically maxed out, but like he's so much further ahead in his developmental process than other kids are that play the same position. So, yeah. And then, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, I'm looking at a story right now on the OU site uh, about David Stone and Jaden Jackson kind of living up to the blue chip billing early in spring. So it's going to be interesting for OU. So, yeah, but the point is, man, you know, Bill yeah. Norton, Bill Norton, it, let's say Bill Norton was in the winter window. He would have been a big target because he's got length and size and all the things you can't coach. But to Bill, your, to your he's point, a smart man. Yeah, to your point, uh, he's – He's making himself a little more coin, you know, going waiting and going in into this portal right now when there are the the choices are few and far between. Yeah. So, well, look, the only way I would ever advise someone to wait till the spring window is if like you know you're a guy like Bill Norton that the SEC will be in on. Yeah. If you're a guy that hasn't played any snaps, you're host. You need to go in the winter one. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, like if. <laughs> If I ever meet a player that, like, I know will get picked up in the portal 1,000%, it's like, buddy, you got to go in the spring. Yeah. Because you're getting paid way more. Yeah. It's, so. uh, you know, but for the guy, I, I, I worry about the guys. Um, you know, we saw a couple of guys, two guys at Texas that entered during the winter window. Xavion uh, Bryce, the BJ, BJ Allen. Allen. Yeah. You know, they, they ended up at, at North Texas. You know, had they waited, had they stayed through the spring? Like, I don't know if they would be. Yeah, no, UNT no, they, they, they didn't have the luxury to stay to the spring. Yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're good and same deal, and then up at uh, uh, San Jose State. Yeah, and and so with with Billy Walton, you could say like he should have just left in winter as well, but Billy Walton was a summer enrollee. And he only played in the Baylor and Wyoming game, and he didn't record a single stat, so he kind of needed film. Yeah. Um, Samaja Burrell was also a summer enrollee. Um, Peyton Kirkland had the knee injury and didn't play at all last year. Ex exactly. I was blanking. I'm like, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't want another maybe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, we, yeah. <laughs> if, we see any, if we see any of those guys from the 23 class enter, it'll be guys that played – very little, most likely, last year. Yeah, and I mean, that's – look. Any any comment section with uh, Hayes Fawcett, if it's a Texas player, it's going to get spun somehow by their fan bases. But, like, man, it's it, – if you watch the show regularly, I assume you watch Texas and pay attention to the football program regularly. You don't need any reminder of the type of contributors these guys are. Um, and we wish them the best going forward but yeah, for sure. you know the big i like i couldn't tell you who the biggest loss would be if you asked me to go through the portal exits this year you know what i mean like well, even going back to the winter like probably malik murphy just because he's a quarterback in yeah, that position jordan you know like you you can't you can't have multiple scholarship quarterbacks that can actually play you know yeah you know, I was just trying to think, like, look through the guys Texas has lost. None of them were ever super big-time contributors. So, like, it's genuinely kind of hard to pick who the biggest loss is. Like, at least Malik Murphy actually contributed to winning you some games and played major snaps, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, Jaron Thompson is a grad. Sure. Uh, you know, Keaton Crawford ends up at Nevada. Trill Carter. Yeah, I mean. Auburn. It's really it's Casey Kane. Yeah. Really, your contributors are. Dude, it's Malik Murphy. It's Jaron Thompson, and then help. 
maybe Jalen Catalan might be three in, in compared to how much he played because of the injuries, that would be a distant third. Yeah. Um, Jeff, I want to ask you about this because yesterday we didn't really talk about it. And all I saw on our board was people getting excited about uh, the basketball additions. I saw in the group chat, it actually, you know, so the, with us, the way we cover things, our content, it will always appear we're excited about every edition. That isn't the case. However, in the Horns 24-7 group chat behind closed doors, it seemed like Chip Brown, Eric Henry, you, Hank South, were all pretty pleased with the additions uh, oh, our man. team made. Whereas me, I'm like, I've never heard of any of these guys. So, yeah. like, what, what are we looking at here? Are these no, have, no is, college basketball watching ass. Is Texas um, going to the Final Four next year? Like, what, what are we thinking, the Mr. Tremont Mark, the Tremont Mark move was welcome, man. Uh, you know, I hope people realize now, I said this yesterday with BK, you know, anybody that was questioning, oh, man, look at Cam Scott asked out of his in, in, national letter of intent and blame RT. I thought everybody loved RT. Well, that was the staff wanting to do right by Cam Scott and Cam Scott realizing, yeah, I, if I want to play minutes as a freshman, it ain't going to be at Texas because you're going to pair Tremont Mark with Trey Johnson and you're going to have one hell of a scoring tandem uh, on the wings. I, I like – I'll just go through the moves, you know, uh, with Kent. Kent, you've got to have bodies that can gobble up front court minutes right now because you've got Shedrick, you've got Onyema, and whatever Dev, Devon Pryor is going to be, and, and that's it for your front court. So we know they're going to need to add another big, but you just you need somebody that can eat up front court minutes and that has some experience so, because I don't know when Nick Cody's going to be coming back off the ACL. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking – probably closer to the start of conference play, like maybe mid-January, something like that. Maybe that kind of that full – because I think he got hurt in mid-February. But I, I don't know Nick Cody's recovery time or whatever. You know, he, some guys recover, take longer. Some guys bounce back quicker. It just depends. So you need somebody to need front court minutes. And then with Julian Larry, I, what Texas had two years ago, when, that, when you had Tyrese Hunter, Marcus Carr, and Jabari Rice, you had three Sir. guards – Jabari Rice. I'm, I just, I'm just shorthanding it. Yes, Sir Jabari Rice. Talk about our king the right way. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that, uh, my uh, favorite Texas basketball player of all time. I'll stop. Cutting love me off, some Sir bad. Jabari Rice. But you had three guys that could all play on the ball, could all be your lead guard, and you could have one of those guys running the second unit. You could have two of those guys starting, and you could kind of swap them out as you went. And, you know, we'll see what happens, you know, uh, when you look at how things are trending for Texas right now. Uh, and Eric Bossy's mentioned this, you know, uh, Jordan Pope from Oregon State is a guy that is going to start his official visit to Texas today. Texas is the odds on favorite to land him. Man, if you get Pope with with Larry, uh, that is two guys. Again, you've got one guy who's definitely going to be your lead guard, Jordan Pope, if you get him. And then Julian Larry, a veteran guy that can run your second unit and and you can do some different things with him. So I I'm I love that move. And I talked about Tremont Mark. So the additions have been good and there's still work to be done. Trust me. With the departures, I'll say this, man. It's kind of it's bittersweet for me because I, I've never had more fun being around a team since I've been doing this than being around that basketball team that went through the Elite Eight. Just a good group of dudes like I've talked about. And for Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell, I think the biggest issue with both guys, it wasn't really an issue, pretty much 10 games into their first season at Texas, that wasn't what they signed up for. Tyrese Hunter came to Texas to play for Chris Beard. Uh, Dylan Mitchell actually committed when Yurik Malley was on staff, and Yurik went to be the lead assistant for Jerome Tang at K-State. So Yurik's gone before Dylan Mitchell plays a game, and then Chris Beard's gone before Christmas. So, you know, those guys had a tough first year from that standpoint, and, you know, Dylan's on court struggles were, were documented. Tyrese dealt with some injuries. Bottom line is, Jordan, I don't think either of those guys expected to be at Texas for more than a year. I think they both thought they were going to be one and done 
headed to the NBA. And I think at times you probably saw that this last year, that neither one of them expected to be back. I'm not saying they sandbagged it or anything, but you could tell just the same juice wasn't there at times. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I think it's more of a change of scenery. I think we do both guys well. I think it's kind of a career reset for both guys. I think they both still have a chance to be really good players, but their time at Texas is done. And it just, it's, it's weird that, you know, we were sitting here two years ago, two years ago, celebrating the Chris Beard hire. And now in terms of the roster, those two guys were the last two guys left with any attachment to Chris Beard. And now two years later, it's an entirely different regime. You know, you've had some assistant coaches come and go, and obviously RT is in charge, but it's crazy how fast things can change in college basketball. So it's, it's bittersweet just to think about still what might have been, but can't do that. Got to move forward. And I, I really dig the roster RT is putting together. Like I said, they're going to, they need to add a big, uh, you know, they've got two guys on officials right now. Jordan Pope, I think, would be a massive piece. I mean, if you, if you go into the season with, a backcourt of Jordan Pope, Trey Johnson, and Tremont Mark. Too, you're you got one of the best backcourts in the country. No, no question. And then it's all about can Caden Shedrick stay healthy? What are you surrounding with in the front court? All that stuff. So, I don't want to say it was addition by subtraction with Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell. That's I don't think that's fair. But mm-hmm. I do think that this this team right here is really going to be the first team that we get a chance to see, okay, how does Rodney Terry really want to build a roster? And I think what you're seeing is kind of what RT told me when he first got back to Texas, we were talking about recruiting and he said at guard, he said, we need to get longer. We need to get more athletic. And I think with the guys they're targeting, the guys they've landed, they're getting longer and they're getting more athletic with those additions. So I dig it, man. I I like where it's headed. Yeah. So um, with Dylan Mitchell out, Tyrese Hunter out, Brock Cunningham out of eligibility. Um, Desu out of eligibility. Desu. Smith out of eligibility. Abe Smith, that's five. How many uh, other – was the first guy who went in the portal, was he a walk-on? He was, right, Adam McKinney? Oh, so Adam Perryman was on scholarship. No, not him. The, the, the kid went to McKinney. Oh, uh, Alex Anamekwe. Yeah, he yeah. was on scholarship. Anamekwe was a scholarship kid. Okay, so that's seven then that have left. So how many guys have they added through the portal? So you still got the returning. You've got Kendall Weaver. And by the way, I didn't mean to speak ill of Kendall Weaver. Uh, I'm just trying through. to figure out how many scholarships they have right now open going right. into next season. Because so they only have one freshman, Trey Johnson, since they're not taking camps. No, Nick right? Cody. You got Nick Cody. Nick, okay, up. that's right. So you got Nick Cody and Trey Johnson returning. You've got Weaver, Anyema, uh, Devon Pryor, Shedrick, uh, and then the three new additions. So you got eight right now. Okay. And then my dog from uh, Westlake, Preston Clark, he's walk-on, right? Okay, got it. I assume so, but I didn't know if he'd maybe earned it because wasn't the kid from McKinney that went in the portal? Like, was he not walk on originally? No, Adam Eckway was a scholarship guy out of the gate. They they took him as a a, a developmental forward, thinking okay. that maybe he could at some point fill that that Brock Cunningham role, maybe, but mm. just didn't work out. Got it, got it. And I'm sorry, how many? Scholarships to basketball teams at the Power Five level usually carry 12, 13. Uh, you can have up to 13, but yeah, usually you're, you know, if you're carrying 13, usually one of those is going to be, like you said, that walk on that might have earned it. You're not going to usually carry like 13 scholarship dudes that can all play. Probably, Probably your last, your last two, one or two scholarships will be walk on guy, walk ons. Got it. Got it. Well, yeah, no, just wanted to uh, talk a little basketball because I didn't know anything about uh, who Texas added. Um, so, but yeah, that's uh, that's it. So, I guess is Cream Abdul Jabbar still on the market? Uh, as far as I know, what's his actual name? I, I, dude, I don't even know. 
<laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. I figured you might know. Um, yeah, I don't know. So one thing I kind of want to talk about, and I was just saving it for a slow day, I guess, because honestly, I expected today to be a little more active in the portal. Um, but man, in 2026, running back recruiting. So Texas currently has one commitment from uh, Alito. Uh, Alito's racing gallery. He's unranked by us right now. We only have 100 kids ranked in uh, 2026. Robbie Avila from the kid from Indiana State. Got it. Um, we only have 100 kids ranked right now in our uh, 2026 rankings, but yeah, just double checking. April 24th, our uh, 2026 rankings will update to about 300 or so kids. Uh, it'll be a top 247. It'll be a couple unranked four stars. Uh, several three stars. There should be about uh, 30 to 40 ish kids from the state of Texas that get ranked um, during that time. When that happens, we expect Racing Guillory to get his stars. He'll probably, if I'm being completely honest with you, probably towards the back half of the top 247 if he makes it. Um, they might also just un or keep him unranked and wait until he recovers from his injury and we can see what his times look like because it is incredibly important um because it is draft projection rankings but as long as Tashar choice is at texas texas is going to sign two running backs every cycle um they already have obviously one in 2026 racing gallery and as much as i talk down about the 2025 class being incredibly weak being incredibly strong at some positions 2026 is pretty damn weak so far but the good thing is the running back class for 2026 is really, really strong in Texas because outside of racing gallery, you also have JV and Osborne at Forney, uh, Tredarian Ball at Texas High, and then Texas hasn't even offered this kid yet, I'm pretty sure, but his name is Davian Gross. He goes to Frisco Lone Star, and he might actually be the best one out of all the kids I just mentioned. Um, but, you know, yeah, double-checking, Texas has not offered Davian Gross. Um, he's got pretty much – most of the other ones except Texas. So maybe we'll see a spring eval there. Um, but the, the dynamics in running back recruiting are interesting because racing gallery has continued to visit like pretty much just about every other school. I know since his Texas commitment, he's off the top showing up to TCU, Georgia, uh, I believe maybe Alabama as well. Um, he's getting around and he always told choice in Texas. That's what he do. Uh, I don't want to say they're necessarily cool with it. I know they probably wouldn't prefer he does it. Um, but, you know, they they took his commitment knowing who he is and, and what he's about. So I the reason I bring all this up is because Oklahoma also already has a running back commitment. And it's Cibolo Steele's uh, Jonathan Hatton. And he's also, of all the names in 2026, he's got to be the first or second best one. He has mm -hmm. verified 10-6 speed as a kid who's actually supposed to be in his grade, that's every bit of what he's listed at. Um, I think I believe he's six foot and in the 200s too as a sophomore. And Jonathan Hatton was my favorite running back at the time whenever Texas offered him, but the thing is they took too long to offer him. He was already going to Oklahoma. Um, he just wanted to shut down his recruitment that early, and I honestly think that kind of set the dominoes for racing Guillory as well. But with both of those schools already having a guy – you talk to Tredaria Ball, you talk to JV and Osborne, the two main schools for them seem to feel like it's OU in Texas. And it's a lot of these schools also like, or a lot of these kids love to Char Choice, they love to Marco Murray, and there's not going to be enough spots for all, all of them. So uh, the way Choice in running back recruiting works usually around um, spring, of a cycles junior year. So around like February, March of this year was whenever choice kind of decided that Ricky Stewart was who he viewed as the number one running back in the state of Texas, um, Texas. I, a lot of programs do this, but Texas specifically, they'll use the month of February during the dead period to really do deep evaluations on guys from their first three years of high school. And that's when, that's when they'll decide on some different kids they're recruiting. Like, Hey, we are done talking to this kid or he's done visiting, like, we've already made the choice. We're not taking this guy. Yeah. And that's also whenever – not only are we not taking this guy, that's whenever the board's getting reshuffled. And 
that's whenever everyone's getting evaluated. Um, and it's the deepest Texas has gone on them at that point. And whenever that happened with running backs, that's when Tashar Choice and, you know, the running back personnel department came up with a conclusion that they viewed Ricky Stewart as the number one in-state back. And from that point on, they kind of went all in on him. They, are, they had already offered him uh, previously that junior day. They knew Texas was his dream school. And not that it'd be easy to get done, but easier than others. And they kind of turned up the heat and they got his commitment whenever he came and visited again. Um, so we're probably not going to have a ton of concrete uh, standing, I guess, on what the board looks like for 2026 is uh, at running back up until next spring. But like it, it's going to be something to monitor um, for sure. And another thing I want to circle back on that I talked about last week about how it was important that Texas A&M lands who saw on Longstreet. Uh, for the sake if Texas wants to go get Keelan Russell. Mm-hmm. And it's it ended up pulling through for AM. They got their guy, which is best case scenario for Texas if you're thinking Keelan Russell. Um, so just wanted to circle back to that because I know most people who are watching this aren't paying attention to AM recruiting. So but uh yeah. So Jeff, I don't know what else you got top of mind. Well, uh some <clears throat> some Tidbits are starting to trickle out from Sark's availability today, which started shortly after 11, thereabouts. And we'll have that for Horry and Horns 24-7. By the way, if you're not a subscriber at Horns 24-7, get over to the site right now. Take advantage. you got a transfer portal special, 60% off of your annual VIP subscription. We only offer the 60 a couple of times a year. This is one of them. So if you want to subscribe to the site, get over there. What you got to love about 24-7 sports is – if you subscribe to the Texas site, you're a, an annual VIP member. You still get access to other message boards. You can go look and read VIP content on other sites. So you want to get a heads up on you know anybody on Texas schedule, Florida, Georgia, A&M, whatever anybody's got going on, Arkansas. Uh, we got some really good sites in the SEC. Really happy to be joining that SEC network of sites we got. Uh, get over to Horns 24-7. Check that out right now. Again, 60% off of an annual. Uh, one of the things... Jordan, that's trickling out from Sark's availability. Quinn Ewers was tremendous on Saturday in the close scrimmage, and Arch Manning probably had his best practice of the spring today. So it's a little quarterback, a little quarterback intel for you from per per Steve Sarkeesian. That is per Sark, sir. That is not sourced information. Yeah, well, my ass, that's... buddy. Like, come on. No, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, uh, love to hear it. Um yeah, well, I mean, I don't know what what else to say. Love to hear it. It was funny. I did. <laughs> Are we all ready for uh, Arch Manning to just shove down our throats again this weekend? For whenever he throws a slant to man, whatever uh, receiver. If you're not, you know, gonna, you know, right. they they need this B roll, baby. You know, he's not. He doesn't play a ton in the real games. They need the spring game footage. And so. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell our news desk on Saturday because I know they'll you know I don't know who else has spring games this Saturday, but A and M and I'm gonna, OU. I'm gonna tell news desk like, look, y'all want anything on Arch? Y'all can have it, man. Uh, we're we got plenty of time to write Arch Manning content at Horns twenty four seven. Yeah, I I hate it because it's so like the this everything that gets said about it and all of it but like at the same time when you're looking at it from my perspective it's like it's guaranteed engagements every time it is it is so it is. like i'm i'm running the horns 24 7 instagram like every time it's doing numbies every time but yeah. oh antoine so i actually have something for you uh these two guys are in different classes right now uh booby feaster who uh, I mean, it'll probably pop up if you Google Booby Feaster, but his real name's actually Ethan, uh, or at least that's what his 24-7 profile says. Uh, and then John Tarantine. So they're in different classes right now, but Booby Feaster, it's kind of like the worst-kept secret in Dallas. He's working on reclassing. Um, so he's likely eventually going to be a 2026. Uh, don't know when that move would happen. Uh, it usually happens whenever guys are going into that summer during their uh, – their junior year, so potentially next summer he can announce it. Um, but, I mean, yeah, Booby Feaster's next up. That's uh, the next Jonte Cook, DeCorin Moore, whatever you want to call it. That's the next elite receiver out of the Dallas area. Um, and I mean, he already is elite. He started as a freshman at DeSoto and is over six foot, 
just understands the game that, that freshmen don't uh, at a level that most freshmen don't. Um, and as far as turn team, uh, I, I really like Texas chances already. And mostly just because it kind of feels like Texas is already um, focused in on him as the number one lineman in the, in the state of Texas. Uh, not that that decision is done and that that's a done deal. Like, obviously, you're going to continue evaluating other guys and there are people who could pass them on the board or you could drop from the spot on the board for whichever reasons. But um, Turrentine is going to be one of the biggest targets in the state next cycle and a lot to like about him as a prospect. Um, his father played at TCU, offensive line at TCU, and uh, John is actually John, T- John Turrentine III. Um, but a lot to like about that. Uh, in my opinion, he's the best offensive tackle I've seen from the state of Texas so far uh, in his cycle in 2026. But, if, you know, in full transparency, I haven't gotten a ton of exposure to the offensive lineman in 2026. So I think he's really good. Uh, as far as number eight overall prospect, which on three has him at, I don't know about all that. Um, but, you know, I think he is a bona fide top 247 kid. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, so yeah. And Blake Griffin, I mean, I assumed he was already retired. I, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw Blake Griffin. On TV. <laughs> so like, what has he been, has he been playing overseas? Yeah, or? no, Blake Griffin. Uh, gosh, Yo, Blake what? Griffin last like how many, Celtics? how many, how many max contracts do you got to have and you're playing overseas? I would Blake, just get up. Blake Griffin, Blake Griffin had except for the illegitimate children and he didn't blow up to like 330 pounds is a very Sean Kemp like fall from grace for Blake Griffin. You have any idea you know, when I say Sean Kemp Jordan, does that name ring a bell like at all that do anything for you? Yeah. Well, I know he was with the Sonics and had a crazy fall off, but I never remember what the crazy fall off doesn't, he uh he had Sean Kemp had all kinds of problems. He, he had alcohol he does, problems. He, I, yeah. I was about to say, I lady. know, I know <laughs> the one thing I actually saw about him recently, it was somewhere on social media. I don't remember what platform, but I think he's trying to start like a, a weed brand or a dispensary or some shit and something involved with uh, legal marijuana and THC. And I believe in the state of Washington. So, um, yeah. So Sean Kemp, uh, according to the all always reliable source that is Wikipedia, um, has fathered at least at least seven children with six different women. Rookie numbers. Yeah. He yeah he probably has nightmares about Antonio Cromartie <laughs> and Travis Henry and just go down the list. Nah Real man, the people. Blake, Blake Griffin's one of those guys that uh, I think when you look at the numbers for Blake Griffin's career, I think you'll realize that he was better maybe than you thought, a little more effective than you thought. It's just. He's one of those dudes, man. When the physical, when the physical stuff went away, you know, his ability to jump out of the gym and be the best athlete on the floor, when when that went away, uh, it fell off real quick. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to pull up John Turntine's numbers right now from Under Armour. Oh, you have that, do you? Maybe. Um, he's six three point six. Like, look, he, he's really good, but it is too early to say he's going to be better than anyone in 2025. Um, look, again, he's really good, but, like, there are three bona fide guys – or th- three guys who I look at, I'm like, that's an NFL player in Dallas alone at offensive tackle this year, and it's Lamont Rogers, Ty Haywood, and Michael Fasusi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Do I think turn team could be better than them? Yes, but, like, I'm not – gonna come out and say that right now like turn team there there are multiple times where like he was on the bench at north crowley last year um so again i I think he's the best in state lineman haven't had as much exposure to the other guys at the same time uh no one in the market travels more than me or and sees kids in person more than me so um but yeah i I agree with jerry and that i think he will be the top but as far as the last current two cycles I think it's too early to say that, but I could see it being true. And Blake Griffin and Matt Leinart having the same baby mom is kind of scary. But um, so man, here's here's something. Gosh, man, this is crazy. So Blake Griffin didn't play at all this year. He played last year with the Celtics. Um, Blake Griffin 
in his f- five of his so he met, he was technically a rookie in 09 didn't play that year because he had micro fracture surgery the tw- the 10 11 season is his first season uh he's rookie of the year he's an all-star so in his first let's say one two three four five five of his six first five, five of his first six years in the league he's a five-time all-star he makes three four all nba teams rookie of the year finishes in the top eight in the mvp voting twice in his last 12 years in the league his final 12 years in the league one all-star game one all nba team it was a third team when he was with detroit in 1819 damn like and, and it is the numbers the numbers are fine like you look at that 1819 season with detroit He's 24 and a half points, seven and a half boards. Uh, let's see, just over that's about one stock a game, five almost five and a half assists. So, but then after that, it falls off a cliff. He's never over over 15 points a game at that yeah. point. So um no. This this isn't what we'll remember Blake Griffin about. At least it's not what I'll remember Blake Griffin about. What I'll remember, the legendary commercials he had with Kia. Wait, what? What was the one where you, he you like kicks the, a football to like the moon or some shit, and is like stick to football thing, or something? The best Blake Griffin thing you'll ever see has nothing to do with basketball. You know, Blake Griffin. I don't know if he still does it, but there was a time where on the side he would do stand up comedy. <laughs> Go when you get when we get done with the show. Go to YouTube, see if you can find Blake Griffin on the Alec Baldwin Comedy Central roast. It's legitimately funny. Like he's on he's on that that panel with like some really funny comedians. I think Anthony Jeselnik was on there. There's like there's some really funny people on that panel. Nikki Glazer was on that one. Blake Griffin was freaking hilarious. Mm. I don't think yeah. Jeselnik was on that one actually. It's Nikki Glazer, uh, Chris Red from SNL. Was there Jeff Ross is on all of those, but dude, Blake Griffin was freaking hilarious. Yeah, that. I mean, man, he he was fun. Like this might just be a super casual take because uh, I don't watch a ton of the NBA, but at the same time, like it, it's hard to get into the NBA now. Like it's so hard. They don't give a shit about anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like there's so much BS. Like then there that that there used to not be. Well, the playing and, games, the playing games start tonight. So yeah, I'll, I'll be watching those. But like. And get in line with it but like think about lob city right cp3 blake griffin uh deandre jordan shit they had jamal crawford too a, a really fun team is there a team remotely close to as fun to watch as them nowadays that i like there's a player wemby because he's just better than everyone but like you know, you know what uh, it, it might just be the nostalgia too, where you're, you're like yeah, looking back at something like true. that. You're gonna view it as being I, better than it is. I will. I, you talk about Lob City. I, I I had more fun watching the Clippers back in like my late high school, early college days when it was Darius Miles, Lamar Odom, Quentin Richardson, that that group of Clippers. Uh, Sam Cassell was with them for a minute, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I about CB, that. I just want to circle back to this. Can you please elaborate on this? Like, what do you mean he was trying to get memorabilia back? Did he sell it to someone for money and then was like, hey, I'm actually like, I'm just curious because I, I know you're up there in Washington too, or at least I'm pretty sure you are. So I figured you're going to know more than us and you're going to know more than what we could probably get on Google. All right. He, so here's, uh, I'm just reading the story. He was booked. Uh, okay. Hold on. There's a tweet from the Tacoma police department about this incident. Uh, it said, uh, this was on March 8, 2023 it said at 1 58 PM, an altercation between the occupants of two cars led to shots being fired at a parking lot in the 4,500 block of North Steel street. One car fled. No injuries were reported. A gun was recovered. A 53 year old male was Kemp was booked for a drive-by shooting. The investigation is ongoing. Uh, so the Man, camp on the figure in the Seattle area with local business, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't see where it talks about memorabilia, though. Hmm. I don't know, dude. Like, I know it's not all of them, but, like, 
so, some of these athletes, dog, it's like you are one of the most recognizable people in the earth, and you're like six six and look like a Greek god. You know, like you're you're gonna stand out. You're gonna get caught. And Sean Kemp's six ten, so you yeah. Know. And dude, you're in freaking yeah. you're in Tacoma. Like people are yeah. gonna know who Sean Kemp is. Yeah. No, but I, I'm just talking about like the. I don't know. Like Jelani McDonald isn't a recognizable face or name, but like if Jelani McDonald was to walk past me down the street in Chicago, I'd probably look at him being like six three with yeah. a seven foot wingspan and be like, "Hey, looks like a football player." Or something yeah, like, like you know uh, what I mean. Like Mo Bamba couldn't commit a crime. Yeah, ex- like <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So you know, so, and I love Mo by the way. But yeah, he, he Mo couldn't get away with a crime. And also, it's like yo, like y'all got the money, go pay someone else to do that dumb shit. You, like, come on, you don't got someone you grew up with that says yes to everything you ask him to do. Uh, most of Sean Kemp's money probably is going to child support. For being yeah, honest, true, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shit. He only got two more than he can have a whole ass AAU team. Man, uh, that's that's wild though. Now, uh, yeah. So, so you liked watching Blake Griffin with the the Lob City? Clipper? Oh yeah, yeah. Good times. And, and I mean, they they had the commercials. They're churning them out too. Great, great way to uh, strike while the you. iron's hot. Yeah, hang on. Yeah. You're good. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Like the, the NBA has just been hard to watch. Like I'm a LeBron guy. That's that's who got me into sports. Um, Libra. But yeah, and yeah, I mean, I'm, shit. I'm the uh, the Lakers are. Are they in playing games? They are, huh? Or no? I'm about to look. I don't think they're. Uh, yeah, Lakers and Pelicans tonight at six thirty. Is Damn, that that's a eight, wild? Is that a nine game or the nine ten game? No, that's seven and eight. Warriors and Kings is nine and ten. That's at nine. Ooh, ooh, that actually be good, man. The West, the West is back to being kind of what it was again when I was like late high school, early college, where it was like, all right, what JV team is going to get sacrificed from the East to whoever wins the West? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw. I think it was Antonio Cromartie. Uh, I saw him like asking people on Twitter for a job the other day yeah i saw that like he being was, like who has analyst jobs open that, like, yeah i'm like, like dog weren't you an analyst for like 10 years like don't you have to graduate at some point <laughs> was he not like i know that? at some point AM was like cutting corners and they were having him as a as a ga yeah and it's like okay like please show me what curriculum this guy is going to class for i was gonna say was he not at jimbo with jimbo at AM for a minute yeah no he was so um but yeah, and, 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 I, and I'm not CB. I'm not picking on you with the Blake Griffin comment about the dunk over the car being overrated. But I'm I imagine there would be a healthy show of hands in the chat or on the coded text line of people that don't like Blake Griffin for one reason and one reason only. He's a sooner. Yeah. Oklahoma. Well, also, uh, here's the thing. I don't know if this is the most overrated dunk. Most overrated dunk might be uh, not LeBron. Michael Jordan's dunk contest dunk. Like, that's oh, like a warm up whoa, in every dunk contest whoa, nowadays. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I get it. It's nostalgic. Whoa, but no, uh, 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 uh. Time out. Time the hell out. We're not, we're not going to sit here on the, on this show, on this YouTube feed and disrespect the goat, Michael Jeffrey Jordan in any way. I'm not trying to, but Jeff, answer this. Can high schoolers not jump from the free throw line and dunk nowadays? Can I don't they know. Not? I don't watch too much high school basketball. I'm not. I'm not hating on Michael Jordan. I'm just saying, I have seen high schoolers jump, jump from, from the, the free throw line. Is the most overrated dunk ever. He was the first to do it. I understand why it's special, but like, is there not a dunk contest with a jump from the free throw line or around the free throw line every single year now? Like, is that not a correct statement? Yeah, but that's like saying, uh, that's like saying, oh, so uh, you know, Jesse Owens ran really fast, but it's overrated because people have run faster since. Well, no, it's pretty freaking special when he did it. Yeah, I'm not saying it wasn't special. I'm just saying it's not as special. If you if you really want to know my opinion, the most the most overrated uh, the most overrated dunk in the dunk contest, honestly, and I don't really have a problem with the guy that I'm going to bring up, but 
I didn't understand why everybody lost their minds with the Dwight Howard Superman dunk. That yeah, really he didn't even to touch the rim. He threw like, that yeah, bitch. Threw the ball through the basket. Like, that's not really a dunk. The most underrated dunk ever, most underrated dunk without question. I don't know if you remember this. You remember the year Gerald Green was in the dunk contest? They mm -hmm. lit uh, a cupcake, put a candle in a cupcake, and put it on the back of the rim and yeah. blew the candle out. Like that was, that was like, oh yeah, that's cool. I'm like, that's freaking amazing. Like nobody else thought to do that. My favorite, the, the only dunk contest I've actually watched every single, uh, <laughs> the only dunk contest I've watched every single uh, dunk in it was the first Zach Levine, uh, Aaron Gordon uh, dunk contest. Those were those they were, did back to back years. Those were like fun. I remember Aaron Gordon sitting up in the chair like eight feet in the fucking air. When he did uh, under the legs, I don't know what that dunk is called because it's under. Like that one was awesome. Uh, Levine was awesome. Um, Jason Rich Zach Levine is like to this day one of my favorite players to play with in two K because he can shoot and he can just run around you and then dunk on your center. And it he's was, like an eighty three overall for no reason. I'll be honest. When I was a kid, people were like, "Oh man, when, when we were younger, the dunk contest was great." No, it was kind of there was some cornball stuff going on in the dunk contest when I was a kid. Yeah, like also the, the athletes back then weren't the athletes they are today. Right. After the after the the Michael Jordan uh Dominic Wilkins era, like D Brown like putting his hand over his eyes. I'm like, okay, it's all right. Cedric Sabalos won it one year with a blindfold. I think Harold Miner won a dunk contest. I'm like, yeah. Okay, you can't you can't talk about how corny that shit is and then like, oh, Michael Jordan won it. for. He jumped from, from the, the free throw line. line. He jumped from the free throw line. It's an athletic feat. He jumped from the free throw line. All right. Uh, yeah. Also the Dr. Spin. J did it first. <laughs> now I know it gets Jeff riled up. So it's no? it's over now. You messed up. Oh. Uh, but hey, uh, fun fact, if it's I'm pretty sure it's the same Gerald Green, but he's actually missing like half of one of his fingers. Um, the hell did yeah. he do? Fireworks. Uh, it was something that happened to him when he was like a kid. I remember reading about it. It honestly might have been his finger might have gotten stuck in a net or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do you like one of those JPP bits? Have a bad maim yourself in a Fourth of July accident? Yeah, I don't know. the The best thing was who was that USC player that he he like broke multiple bones and both Josh, of his legs Josh Shaw. Josh Shaw and it was like yeah sorry I was uh saving my drowning nephew and I jumped from like the fourth story of my house or something Same and they were the like they're the like dude you your house isn't even four stories or something dude uh Sark was, like was the head at USC when that happened yeah <laughs> okay what, what was the full story again just so we can get it right man let me look let me look up Josh Shaw's Wikipedia because uh I, you got it right. Like it was a house fire, and he jumped. Let me see. All right, Shaw was he suspended by USC after he lied about how he suffered injuries to both his ankles. He had originally told the team he injured himself while jumping from the second story of an apartment building to save his nephew who was drowning in a pool. Okay, so Jordan, you actually had it right. In reality, he suffered the injuries after jumping from his balcony to avoid police who had been called by a neighbor after hearing an argument between him and his girlfriend. Mm, Detail. No, no ch charges were ever filed due to insufficient evidence. He was reinstated in November 2014 and played the final three games of the season. Just just details, fellas. That's it. I mean, he, the crux of the story was right. He did hurt himself jumping out of a apartment complex. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he did anything wrong there. Well, Sark thought he did something wrong. Mm. Sark yeah. dropping the hammer on him. Uh, BK, you got any thoughts on Blake Griffin's retirement? Any thoughts on Blake Griffin's retirement? Um, he was a hell of a player, man. I mean, those Lob City Clippers teams, I didn't like them, but they were so much fun to watch. And it just goes to show you the ineptitude of Doc Rivers as a head coach that they weren't able to even get to a conference finals, let alone an NBA finals, because – and Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan on that same team with Jamal Crawford coming off the bench. Like that team should have won maybe multiple championships and they never got close. Yeah. So he was a hell of a player, man. He really was. Uh, obviously, his legs gave out and, on him early yeah. and, and that 
caused him to fall apart pretty quick. And it's it's wild for the Clippers too, because like you think back when that when that team had all those pieces, LeBron was on the other side of the NBA. He was on the East, and the Warriors weren't really the Splash Bros yet. Mm-hmm. They were just coming together. And like you look at the Rockets, and it, that was when it, really before Harden started cranking up the MVP years, right? So it's like they just kept. Like I, I can't remember who would knock them out all the time, but it's like yeah. they can never get it done. Their 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 closest chance they were up three one on the Rockets one year and they blew it. And it was like right when the Rockets were kind of starting to take off. But like the Clippers were the better team. They had no business losing three straight. And that was like that was the year. I can't remember what that was. Uh, I don't know, 15, 14, 15, whatever. But they they had some chances and they just they never got it done. <clears throat> CB, you, oh, CB, uh, BK, you want some? You want some interesting Blake Griffin numbers? Sure. Uh, eight seasons with the Clippers. He's twenty-one point six a game, nine point three rebounds a game, one and a half stocks, four point two assists. The four seasons in Detroit, he's twenty point seven a game. Uh, rebounds go down to six point seven, but he's up to five assists a game. About 0.9 to about one one stock a game. He's also at that point in his career shooting about 76% from the foul line. And the this all-star year in Detroit, that 18-19 season, he was third team all NBA. It it's kind of kind of makes you wonder if he doesn't have the injuries where his career goes. Cause at that point, he's shooting 36% from three. Yeah. Taking taking yeah. seven threes a game and making two and a half. Yeah, I'll give him credit. Like, I don't know if the injuries kind of caused him to reinvent his game, but he did reinvent his game to, like, make sure he lasted a few more years in the league because mm-hmm. those injuries, I mean, yeah, he lost his athleticism pretty quick, and he just he wasn't a high flyer at all during his time in Detroit, but he still found a way to be really productive. So he gets credit for that. But, yeah, I mean, if he, if he could have had that athleticism with that three-point shot that he kind of developed in his uh, heyday, then yep. he would have been even more of a problem than he already yep. was. Hey, yeah. Jeff, I, mean, I, I, I want to ask you, Jeff. Sorry, Jordan, but before I forget good. this. So talking about the uh, dunk competition, how can we not go all the way back to 1986, the legend that was Spud Webb? Spud Webb. Spud yeah. Webb. That's, a, that's a nice novelty. You know yeah. – uh, I compare Rodney, you're a pro wrestling fan. I compare Vince Carter's dunk contest to like that heyday of wrestling where like ECW was popular. And it's yeah. like, look, man, I can't watch an, a match where like dudes are taking arm drags and then there's like guys in exploding barbed wire matches and <laughs> dudes getting yeah. like put through nine tables and kicking out of finishes. Like, uh, nothing it doesn't I'm, I'm desensitized to it at this point like vince carter desensitized me to the dunk contest like yeah. it's never gonna get, i'm like it's never gonna get better than this this is great and it's awesome but this is where it's gonna peak yeah 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 that that right there i mean that really seemed to me because you know spud web then I, I remember like going to church's chicken and you could buy the spud web meal it, it was uh, you know Do, uh, dominique wilkins was on the same team with him and and it's like you know neek knew nothing that he didn't even know that he could dunk and it's like okay this seems kind of shady yeah. but uh, mm-hmm. any, anyway whatever but yeah i'm with you that that kind of ruined all that the vince carter thing that's like all right whatever not the bad kind of ruin it's just like no no wow, yeah the serious. good kind of thing yeah yeah it's like wow it's never gonna get better than this ever. never never yeah yep. you, you old heads man nothing nothing can ever get better than what it was back in the day i, 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 gotta, the I day. gotta defend jordan because those aaron gordon zach levine dunk contest were awesome and nate robinson was awesome but if something happens one time in your life it's like ah that's it it's never gonna come close to this ever again <laughs> yeah hey, I'm, I'm, hey. I'm gonna be like that too i'm just i'm taking my jabs while i can but i sure as shit know that i am on my way to becoming that exact person yeah yeah and um Jeff, by the way, soon in the next few weeks, I'm going to start getting out on the road, traveling, right, Mm since spring ball. A lot of times, some of these teams will also be working out in the basketball gym, and there's a few basketballs around. I'm going to ask one of these kids to jump from the free throw line for me because I know I can find someone that can do it. You you record you record that shit. You send it to me if you find it. Okay, well, when when Jonah Williams does that shit, and jump some of the free throw line, or I get Devin Sanchez or someone to do it. What are you gonna say? 
I'll I'll say today's athletes are are finally tuned athletic machines. All right. All right. That's what you call an athlete. A long way in terms athlete. of training. Yeah. Yeah. Athlete. Wow. See, no why you got to put a damper on? We're, we're having a nice. A nice conversation about the dunk contest, and then CB's got to be like, hey, you guys know oh, Nate Robinson's going to die if he doesn't get a kidney? Come hey, on, Hey, CB, man. give him your kidney then. Man, yeah. CB. Hey, why shit. Don't you, get, why don't you go get tested? We just lost OJ. Come on now. Calm down a little bit here. Uh, d- d- don't make it worse. Come on, CB. <laughs> Jeez. Still reeling from that one. Oh, I, lo- I love you, Me CB. Too. But, yeah, it's like, it's, like, it's like the Chan Gillis bit. It's like leaving George Washington's – uh, a state and the last thing you see are like the teeth and realize he had some slave teeth on the bottom row it's like what what the <laughs> hell is that yeah 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 somebody put him there yeah all right bk double r have a great midday yeah. program jordan we'll see y'all tomorrow hey, get the horns 24 7 60 off your annual sub plenty of transfer portal content whatever's popping off with texas we'll have it over there beautiful yes, sir go we'll check it there. out we'll be there see you guys Later, all right, Double R and I are both members at Horns 24-7, so right. we love yeah, it. If, right. if you're not a member, get over there. It's a great sale they've got going on right now and some of the best Longhorn coverage that you can find. Jeff and Jordan doing great work, plus Chip Brown, of course, is over there as well. I uh, love our friends at Horns 24-7, and we think you will too. It's Double R joins me for today's midday program. Welcome back. How was uh, – how was Florida, my man? How was the vacation? It was good, man. We had a good time. Um, I was telling, uh, I was telling Wags this morning. Kind of, I felt like the young guy there at the whole thing, so it was all good. Uh, you know, older folks, so uh, yeah, it's all right. Uh, not an old, old, uh, old uh, age home or anything, but uh, yeah, kind of, kind of nice being the spring chicken right there. I out drank them all at the bar watching the Masters, man, because that's that's really the whole thing that I did while we were down there, man. It was like I could, I was so encapsulated with the golf. I mean that 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 masters Scheffler what he did right there um as everyone imploded just yeah. kind of sit there and, and and wait for him to do it but I, I knew he wasn't I knew he wasn't going to mess up he just doesn't right not only did he not implode but he shot one of the lowest scores on the course on Sunday right he was four under so not only did he like come back to the pack a little bit to give everybody else a chance to catch up he distanced himself from everybody by going five under on the back nine like there was yeah. a point for about 10 or 15 minutes that he only had a one-shot lead over Ludwig Oberg from Texas Tech, but then it just felt like in the blink of an eye that lead got extended to four, and you knew with like three or four holes to go that this thing was over. So, yeah, we'll get to the Masters in a second, but I, I want to go back to something you just said. Mm-hmm. You you pulled the hot girl bit. You know, sometimes oh. beautiful women – will surround themselves with uglier women so they can stand out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you purposely surrounded yourself with older folks so you could stand out as the young guy. That is a nice strategy yeah. by you, my friend. That's what I did. You know, it's kind of one of those things where I looked around, you know, no, no matter where we went and it's like, man, I, I'm like the best looking dude here. And that's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that is pretty bad. I look around and there, there's dude, there's dudes with canes and walkers and all these different things. And I'm walking freely and like, I could pound down two beers, you know, within 10 minutes. And I'm like, I mean, the, the, some of these older women got to be looking at me. And when I'm talking older BK, I'm talking like 60, 70 years old. They got to be looking at me thinking this guy right here, this is the shit. This dude right here. I don't know where he's from, but my goodness. He's kind of rode in here as that uh, that stranger, that mysterious stranger that came in here and uh, is just kind of taking the town by storm. <laughs> I don't know where he's from, but I want to know where he's that's from. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're, you're fresh meat over there, Rodney. That's, and, that's exactly right. You know, I'm yeah. sure a lot of those olds live in retirement communities to where they see literally the same people every day. So when they do get out and about and see somebody different, then oh, that uh, perks their eyebrows up a little bit. It's like, hold on now. What do we have here? Let, let me tell you one of the one of the coolest things was that I met uh, I met a nice lady there and she told me she lives in Sun City and I'm like Sun City I'm gonna go look for that rock because you know they do that stuff in Sun City you know you know where it's like you look for that rock or whatever's out there and that means come on in mm. come on in so yeah I'll she be uh, I think she was telling you she wants another son and she was hoping you could uh, give it to her. <laughs> 
I think that's what you implied with that pickup line man. there. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> no, it's a good, good time to get away, man. You know, it's like every now and then uh, you get away. And, and I, I'm sure you're the same way. I mean, uh, of course, you go do young, cool dude things. But it's like you, you go off and, and it's like you can't you can't escape golf. You can't. I mean, Sunday, I, I found a way to watch the NASCAR race for a little bit. Um, hell, I watched some UFL for crying out loud. It's one of those things to where it's like, I mean, we, we do this. I mean, it's our job. We watch this stuff, but it's like, man, if you're going to get away, I mean, you, you got to relax, right? I yeah. mean, watch some sports. Watch Come some on. Sports. Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's uh it's cool rooting on one of your own, right? With Scotty Scheffler at the lifetime mm-hmm. long one, getting the job done. I did just see the TV ratings for the masters yeah. and they weren't very good. Uh, the least watched final round of the Masters since 2021, down 21% from last year. So I think maybe part of it had to do with the fact that Scotty had such a big lead that there wasn't a lot of intrigue towards the end. Um, maybe there weren't a ton of big names near the top, right? Like Ludwig Oberg is not yeah. a household name by any stretch. Obviously, Scotty is. He's the number one golfer in the world, but a lot of the other guys chasing him, maybe not the most well-known cats on the golf course. But uh, yeah, a pretty below average ratings TV-wise. Not that that impacts anything that happens, but you, uh, it sounds like a lot of people weren't doing what you were doing, and that's going out of their way to turn on CBS this weekend. Well, I think a lot of that probably was that on Thursday and Friday, people were more intrigued to see what was going to happen to Tiger. Yeah. You know, because we, we, we talk about it all the time. I mean, uh, Tiger Tiger equals, you know, big ratings. And and I think it really was, you know, as Tiger, you, you know, he, he couldn't play the full round on Thursday because it started late. He's going to have to play extra, you know, holes on Friday, which he did. He made the cut or whatever. And that was a big story right there. But I think you pretty much knew at that point that that was – going to be the end of tiger uh you, you know not not the end of tiger but but he wasn't going to be i mean he had to make up eight shots you, yeah. you know going into the weekend so that that's not going to happen so i think at that point that's probably when a lot of people kind of said okay you know scheffler's going to do this and 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 not that scheffler was messing with the field but you just knew that there was no lit up in that i mean when that dude's dr- draining putts it's like okay that that's that's the weak part of his game and he's doing that shit um, I think I know what's going to happen here. It's scary how good he is right now. It, really and is, it, it feels like there's a pretty sizable gap between number one and number two. And I'm not sitting here telling you he's going to win every tournament that he plays in this year because that's just not how golf works. But mm-hmm. it's just insane how competitive this guy is. I mean, he's just a lock to be in the top 10 every time he takes the course. And it's crazy. Uh, he only has two major wins in his career. But I think eight of his last top 10 majors have been top 10 finishes. So it's like he is always – Number one, making himself a lot of money. Good for him. But number mm-hmm. two, he is always going to be in the thick of things. And like you said, he's been doing a lot of that without being a great putter. Now it feels like yeah. the putting's starting to come around a little bit. And it's like, man, I mean, I, you know, it, it, everyone always does this. Like anytime the first horse wins the Kentucky Derby, it's like, oh, shit, is he good enough to win all three legs of the Triple Crown? And anytime someone wins the first Grand Slam in tennis, it's like, oh, is he good enough to win all four Grand yeah. Slams this year? Or is she good enough to win all four Grand Slams this year? And then with golf, it's like it, it happens too. The Masters is the first major, and you're always like, "Oh, could could this be a year where he wins all four in one calendar year?" With Scotty Scheffler, I think it's crazy to predict that, but he's going to be favored in all four. He already was in one. He's going to be favored in the other three majors. And betting against him, do that at your own risk because it it usually doesn't work. Yeah, no doubt. And and the one thing that I really figured out this weekend is is because I think a lot of folks. You know, Scheffler being, I mean, the face of golf right now. I mean, that is the dude. I mean, he's like we're talking about right there. He's so damn good at what he does. I think that, you know, he doesn't have he doesn't have the tiger effect. He's not Phil, some other names that I see mentioned right there. He's not that. This is one thing that I figured out this weekend. Scotty Scheffler to me is very much what Jimmy Johnson, not the coach, the car racer was to NASCAR to where this dude is winning five straight championships and and, and seven titles, and he would just do it methodically winning in different ways. Not a lot of pizzazz, not a lot of talking shit, none of that stuff. He's just, you get him on the course, which Jimmy Johnson, you got him on the track, and they're a different person. They're locked in. They're honed. A lot of people talked about Jimmy Johnson when he, he was in his heyday on NASCAR, on the NASCAR series. That dude's boring. I'm like, no, he's not boring. He's focused. Mm. And that's Scotty Scheffler. 
It's the yeah. same thing watching it's, those dudes. It's a great comp. And, and Scotty's personality is like not good for golf. Exactly. It's not, you know, like I, yeah. it's awesome yeah. to see how humble he is and just hear how much his faith means to him. Like he's such a yep. grounded dude and he's a great person. Yep. That's what ultimately matters more. But yeah, you want that. You almost want that villain. I mean, you want that like hate watching guy. And Scotty Scheffler ain't that at all. So, no. No. Uh, yeah, that, that's his personality. It works for him. He finds a way to get it done on the course, and he just goes about his business, and everybody knows how damn good he is. So Yeah, you, yeah. And, and, and the weird thing is, I don't know about Scotty, but you get you got Jimmy away from the racetrack. Get him away from his job, and that dude was the, 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 the guy you wanted to hang out with. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about drinking beer and doing all these crazy things. That was your dude. But – when it came time to go to work, when he had to punch that clock and do what he had to do and win championships and win races, he took care of business. That's what Scotty does. And for, I know that because I heard that a lot. I mean, and that's a weird thing traveling this weekend, BK. It was like every airport that I went through, you know, going through, uh, you know, we had to go to Tennessee. I mean, different, you know, whatever. Everybody's dressed in golf apparel. Everybody's mm. traveling for the Masters. And it's like, uh, you know, it's like, well, Scotty's kind of boring, but man, he just whacks the field. And I, I don't see no lit up right there, dude. That that dude is a bad son of a bitch. This is the worst week to try to play golf because everyone watched the Masters and Everybody. they're all like trying to get on the course. So maybe wait a little week if you're trying to book a, a tee yeah. time. Yeah. Um, some baseball news to get into. Well, I want to get your thoughts on some of the Texas basketball yeah. roster moves as yeah. well because we had a couple of departures yesterday and a few additions over the weekend. So we're starting to get more of a feel of what RT's roster is going to look like next season. But um, Rangers and Astros have both made some interesting moves this morning. The Rangers called up Jack Leiter, uh, former, what, number two overall pick in the MLB yeah. draft out of Vanderbilt, the son of all-time great baseball pitcher Al Leiter. Jack mm -hmm. Leiter, an awesome college player. He's been the top pitching prospect in the Rangers organization for a couple of years. He's getting the call up. He's going to make his major league debut on Thursday in the Rangers game against Detroit. And that's actually a nationally televised game. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're in Texas, it's going to be blacked out. So, you know, you got to watch it on Bally Sports. Good luck with there that. Is. But uh, that game will be on MLB Network. So a big audience for Jack Leiter's Major League debut coming up for the Jurors. And for the Astros, Forrest Whitley is getting called up. Uh, former first round pick, or yep. yes, first round pick of the Astros, former top prospect. He was the top pitching prospect in all of baseball back in 2019. He has dealt with a ridiculous number of injuries. And just every time you feel like, oh, maybe he's starting to put it together, he gets hurt and he just hasn't yep. been able to stay healthy. But he's healthy now. The Astros are finally calling him up. He's going to get his shot with the big league club. Both Texas teams are dealing with a ton of pitching staff injuries, so they're a little shorthanded right now. That's probably why these decisions are being made. But Forrest Whitley getting the call up for the Strohs. What, uh, what do you say about that one, Double R? Well, you know, uh, it, it's uh, – we were talking about that this morning to, to where uh, – I know a lot of Astros fans are panicking, but uh, we are way early. They're three and a half games back, and the whole West is kind of coming back to them. And, and the thing is with, with Houston, the, the inconsistencies that we watched last year are still the same things that concern me now. I mean, it's, it's like, you've got this, I mean, you're still, you're, you're still the best offense in, in the majors right now, but it, it's just so hit or miss with them. And so I, I really like, uh, I, I think the Rangers are in a better situation right now because what they are doing is they're kind of, they're supplementing for, um, for when you get your folks back. Um, where the Astros, it's like, I, I don't know who's coming back. I heard that Verlander may be back, but what Verlander do we get? Uh, I mean, how well is he Hunter Brown? I think is pitching tonight. And I was talking about that with wags earlier. He's like, well, Hunter Brown's on the mound. I'm like, yeah, the last time I saw Hunter Brown on the mound, I'm like, what in the hell? What, what happened to Hunter Brown? Yeah. So th that's, you have to go, you have to go to the farm. Um, and, and to me, obviously there, there's a, there's a pitching problem there for the Astros, but I mean, Abreu, what, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. I mean, it, it's horrible. I mean, it's a mess. I don't know what's going to happen there where I think the Rangers are in a much better situation to where you can pull guys up and, and, and put, them, put them on the major league club and then just kind of work that way because you're eventually going to get your squad back. Or Houston, it's like, man, you're still dealing with the same crap that you've been dealing with for the last year and a half. 
Well, it's different. I mean, the Astros are known for getting off the slow starts, but yeah. this, this one yeah. feels a little slower than what it has been in this yeah. dynastic run that started in 2017, and they've got some serious, serious issues right now. So the good news for the Strohs is the American League West sucks, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's the worst division in baseball right now, and yep. nobody saw that coming. Now we're one-tenth of the way through the year, so plenty of time for stuff to get more normal but right now, it's just the worst division in baseball. You've got one team over 500. That's the Rangers, who are nine and eight. Yeah. And there's only one team in the division with a positive run differential, and that is the Rangers. So uh, you would think Seattle figures it out. You would definitely think the Astros figure it out. But the good news for Houston is, yeah, as bad as they've been, they're six and 12 right now. They're like a good week from being in first place in the AL West. It's just been so bad. So. Um, yeah, I mean, the Astros would love to play the Rangers more often because they're four and three against the Rangers. They're three and nine against everybody else this year. So yeah. like they, they, they were amped up clearly to get some revenge against the Rangers, but for some reason, it's just not clicking against anybody else. So yeah, for Forrest Whitley, I mean, he's been bad this year. Like he's got an ERA of 12. This is not like, oh, he's been dominant. So it's like, let's call him up. This is like, oh shit, we, we, we just don't have enough arms right now. And we'll see what he's got. Maybe he can look better at the major league level than he's looked at the minor league level. That's kind of where the Astros are. So, yeah, they're, you look at some of the highest paid players on their team. Like, Jordan's doing his thing. Altuve's hitting over 400 right now. He's been yep. amazing. But Jose Abreu, you talked about first base being a problem. That guy should get DFA. If his contract wasn't what it was or what it is, he would have already been let go. But the Astros, you know, they don't want to eat that type of money, so they're hoping Abreu can figure it out. But it ain't good at all for him. And then Josh Hader, the big money acquisition this offseason, he's been terrible. I mean, he yep. you know, last night's game was close. It was two to one going into the ninth inning, and he gives up a four spot and only gets one out. His yep. ERA is close to nine and a half right now. So, yeah, some of the guys who are supposed to be carrying the weight for this ball club. Uh, aren't coming close to doing that. So there's there's some problems that need to get figured out for this thing to really turn around. Yeah, it's been some rough moves. And I mean, you got to throw, you know, Rafael Montero in there. Uh, yeah. I mean, he, he's been he's been better, I guess. I mean, he was okay last night, but it's still where you go back and you look at this. I mean, these big moves that I mean, it's hard to argue with anything that happens with the Astros because of the run that they've been on at this point. But this kind of feels like to me where this season, as we've started the year, you're, you're kind of starting to see that kink in the armor. You're starting to see that foundation crack a little bit to where it's like, and now moving forward, I mean, what are you going to do with Bregman? I mean, it, it's time to figure out what happens there. Um, Verlander, like we're talking about, I mean, he's supposed to be back with the team this weekend. So they say, so I'm being told, but I mean, I, I don't know, what are you going to get from this guy? And, and like you said, with, with the changes there with, with Hader, with Hader coming in, I mean, you had to think that that was supposed to be something that was going to solidify the bullpen. And it has not done that. I mean, it's like, I, I see Hader come out and I'm like, I, I'd rather see Presley at yeah. this point. I mean, give yeah. me Presley, but and, and like you're talking about there with the AL West, I mean, and, and we mentioned that this morning, I was the, the the central. I mean, the central is the one that I'm more surprised. You know, the Walgreens Guardians, I mean, they're sitting there in, in a really good spot. I mean, the Royals are one game back, and that's where, you know, a couple of weeks ago I'm talking about, man, the Astros are getting shellacked by the Royals. Well, you know what? They're flying out of the gate, and the Tigers mm -hmm. are sitting right there. I mean, that's – uh the AL is not what I thought it was going to be, and and it's the the Central and the West, the ones that have just rotated this thing around for me. Yeah, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. So two more for the Astros against the Braves, and that's not a team you want to play when you're trying to figure some things out. Uh, the Rangers have three more. They actually just started against Detroit, a day game, 0-0 zero, yep. zero in the second inning of the second of four between the Jurors and the Motor City Kitties. Um, so we'll see what goes on there. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, let's give some love to some sponsors here before we shift gears and get to some Texas basketball and some Texas football. Shout out to our friends at Covert Bee Cave. Mentioned it this morning. My old man is about to reach out to Dan looking for a new work truck. If you're looking for a new work truck or a new personal truck or a car or SUV, whatever, there's only one place to look. That is Covert Bee Cave. Of course, part of the Covert Auto Group that's been around the Austin area since 1909. Covert Bee Cave, their newest set of dealerships. They're all in one place, but there's three state-of-the-art dealerships out there off of 71 featuring seven different brands. They've got an unparalleled selection. They've got unrivaled service. And, of course, the prices cannot be touched. 
everything you're looking for in a car buying experience you can find out at Covert Bee Cave. Check out their website, covertbeecave.com, for more information and to see their weekly specials. But more importantly, go see our friends out at Covert Bee Cave. And also, go get you some Altstad beer. Well, maybe go buy yourself a car and then on your way home from the dealership, stop by 34 Wine and Spirits. Stop by HEB, Twin Liquor, Specs, wherever you go to get your beer and get you some Altstat beer. It's the best beer that you can find all throughout the great state of Texas, available in Austin and San Antonio and DF Dub and Houston. Wherever you're tuned in, you can get the greatness of Altstat beer. And this stuff is uh, spreading beyond the state of Texas in the not too distant future. It's starting to really take off and with damn good reason. It is a damn good beer. Get you some, one sip, and you won't go back to the other beers that you've been drinking in the past. It's Altstadt beer, no impurities, no regrets. That's right. All right, Double R, Texas Hoops. I'm going to get your thoughts on uh, some of the moves that have happened surrounding the Longhorn basketball program in recent days. Rodney Terry and company were able to get commitments from three transfer portal players over the weekend, and then yesterday we find out, well, they're losing two players who were a part of things last year. Dylan Mitchell declaring for the draft, but also entering the portal and Tyrese Hunter deciding to just enter the portal. So I kind of give you the floor here, my man. What's uh, what's your overarching takeaway from what has happened with Texas hoops over these last three or four days? Man, I got to tell you, I think with the guys that, that, that are in the portal uh, or, or, you know, Hunter, Hunter and Mitchell, I mean, those are, those are guys where, man, I, I kept waiting all year for Tyrese Hunter to be the guy that was, I mean, much to the same thing, like we're talking about with Texas baseball, it's like, okay, where's the consistency? When, when, when is, when is he going to be that third guy? You know, there, there, there were shades of it. It's like, okay, you'd have a game and it's like, all right. And then he's like absent the next game. I mean, the thing with Dylan Mitchell, kind of the same thing. It's like, when is that impact going to come in? So, I mean, looking at it, looking at it from the, from the program side, it's like, yeah, it sucks that they're leaving. Um, they never reach their full potential here. Um, and again, that, that that's different reasons. I mean, that, that's the player. That's uh, the uh, schematic. That's the program. I, I mean, it, it just didn't work out for those guys. Um, but for the two guys that we're talking about that are leaving, it's like, okay, let, let them go find, let, let them go excel somewhere else. And that's always kind of the bitch about it is like those guys leave and they're going to do better. And then you look at it and it's like, why didn't it happen here? I mean, it's it's like when you get somebody traded in the NFL, it's like, man, they went and did something special somewhere else. Yeah. But the good thing is you're bringing people in, but this goes back to a lot of butts in here, man, B-U-T-T. How are you going to develop them and put them into your system if you're Rodney Terry and that staff? And yeah. what is your system? What is the identity here? Because that's a question I had all year, BK. It's like, what's the identity of the program right now? And I think this is going to be imperative this year for him to figure that shit out because, I mean, I'd say he's on the hot seat. It's definitely warm, I would say, at this point. Yeah, I think uh, the identity for Texas last year was just hope Dylan DeSue and Max Asmus were good exactly. and hope exactly. that you got something from some of the other guys, right? I mean, you had yep. two sort of focal points of your team, and yep. those were the guys that carried Texas. Um, I will say this, like, I, I like what's happening with this Texas roster a lot. I really do. And I, I like, we will see if Rodney Terry can build that chemistry that you're talking about, but I, I do think he's doing a really good job of accumulating talent and look, Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell did some good things for this program. They were yep. both incredibly inconsistent and you wish they would have done more. And look, if they both decided to come back, then all right, you would have taken them back. But I look at. Year one of Chris Beard to year two of Chris Beard, which turned into kind of half year one for Rodney Terry. Yeah. Like Texas lost a lot from the 21-22 team to the 22-23 team. And they had some guys who were a part of the program for a while, some guys who had a lot of success, some guys who were some of the leading minutes getters, some guys who were some of the leading scorers for this Texas team that you wondered, okay, when they announced that they were going pro or they were hitting the portal, you wondered exactly what was going to happen, who was going to step up to replace them. And it ended up working out pretty well for Texas because they went from a six seed in Chris Beard's first season. And, of course, they won just one tournament game before getting bounced in the round of 32 right. to the Elite Eight in year two. And I think, once again, I don't know if Rodney Terry is a good enough coach to find a way to mesh all of these pieces together. I think this roster is going to look a lot closer to that Elite Eight roster that Texas had versus what we just saw last year. And here are the guys that I'm talking about, like Courtney Ramey 
Andrew Jones, Jace yep. Fabris. Those guys all did a lot of great things for Texas, but with all of them and Andrew Jones were different circumstances, of course. But it was just like you wanted more from them. You wanted more consistency from those guys. But they still were a big part of the program for a number of years. So when they all decided to leave, it's like, ah, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? Yeah. Chris Beard did a great job putting together a great roster. The next year, Texas made that run to the Elite Eight, which was as far as they've gotten in more than 15 years. That's what's happening right now. Like, yes, you're losing six of your top eight minutes getters. And yes, some of those guys are going to be tough to replace, namely Dylan DeSue and Max Asmus. But if Rodney Terry does this thing right, and I think to this point he is doing this thing right, then this roster, once again, I expect it to be better than last year's roster. And I think the potential for this 24-25 team is going to be higher than the potential for the squad that we just had this past season. Yeah, and I think, you know, like we've talked about a lot here on, on, on the channel is going into the season, the expectations were just way too high uh, because everything you just alluded to, I mean, all everything that you lost, I mean, everything. It was just it was just way too much to expect from the program, especially in the Big 12. I mean, I think if you were playing in a different conference, that would have been a different thing. But what I think that this offseason and moving forward into next year is going to do is it uh, it's a total reset. It's a total reset. We talk a lot when it comes to college sports where it's like, OK, my team, my players, wh whatever. This is where Rodney Terry is actually going to be able to, to get in here and put his team together. I mean, I mean, it really was. I think last year it was from the losses and the folks that were coming in. You're you're just trying to assemble and you're trying to find folks that are going to become, I mean, role players. For, for, like you said, you had Ace Miss, you had to sue. Who's going to be the one that's going to fill in and who's going to be that third guy? And, you know, we, we never found the third guy. And I think that this is the time to re-rack and restack, like I like to say, to where it's like, okay, you got the whole offseason right here. You've got these new pieces coming in, and you've got your pieces in place right now to where, okay, you build, you, you put your puzzle together. Put your puzzle together, lay this out there, and run. And I totally agree. I, I think that this, this is a roster that kind of rivals a couple of years back. And I think, and now going into the SEC, I think it's uh, because you get out of the Big 12. Like uh, yeah. this is the one major sport where it's like, let's get the hell out of the big 12, you know? So um, I, I think, but again, there's going to be a big microscope here on, on the program as yeah. to what happens moving forward. But I think they're going in the right direction. I do too. I really like what RT is doing. Uh, we'll see what the results are, but I mean, getting Trey Johnson is huge. Absolutely, He's, he's your centerpiece, Massive. even though he's a true freshman, he's going to be the best player on this team, mm -hmm. but surrounding him with, uh, with talent and experience. And once again, Texas has already brought in three players in the portal. Uh, they still have four scholarships open, so there's a chance they go get three or four more guys out there from the transfer portal. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, things are going well. Things are going well right now. Dylan Mitchell, I would have preferred to have him back over Tyrese yeah, Hunter just because you don't have too. front court depth right now. So that's like – it's on Rodney Terry. He's got to find the right pieces. And Teron Mark's a hell of a guard. Uh, Julian Larry, I think, is a hell of a guard. You've got plenty of guards right now. I still think there's space for one more. But you've got to make sure you add a big uh, to play with Caden Jedrick and also just some some more forwards as well. But there are guys out there, and uh, I've got faith that RT is going to get some talented cats in here. I really do. It, and I think that's the biggest thing that I took, you know, uh, watching throughout the tournament, throughout the throughout the March Madness, is the importance of the big and the lack there of it here with Texas. I, I mean, you, you've got to have that. You absolutely have to have that. And it, you, you know that. That's a big, I mean, that sounds kind of stupid, but that's a big, that's a big task. So you got to get somebody to, to got to have that tree in the middle and you got to have it a athletic tree in the middle. And uh, ho hopefully he's going to be able to supplant that because that, that I think will be a huge, huge determining factor on what this program does you yeah. know, in, in next season. I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Because I mean, you've got Caden Shedrick yeah. back, but can you rely on him? Is he the guy? guy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's just banged up all season. Like, I think he's a solid enough player to to maybe be a starting center at this level of college basketball. He was that at Virginia for a couple of years, but uh, he was clearly dealing with all sorts of ailments last season. Yeah. So is he uh, is he healthy or is he injury prone? And you just got to worry every time he takes the floor that something bad is going to happen to him. You can't put all of your eggs into that basket. So right now your two centers are Caden Shedrick and Zarek Onyema. Anyema was a transfer brought in last year, and he didn't really do a whole lot. That kind of feels like a portal miss to this point for Rodney Terry. So you absolutely have to find 
another big man. And once again, I think you need a couple more forwards as well. But you've got some spots to give out. And you've got a lot of big names in the transfer portal. There's a ton of available options for Rodney Terry and company. So, uh, yeah, I, I uh, once again, I'm going to feel better about this roster going into next year than I did this past season. Um, the expectations, look, Texas was a top 20 team in the preseason last year. I think there's a good chance they're a top 20 team in the preseason this year. They've got to do a better job of living up to those expectations sure. than they did this year. Whether they're too high, whether you think they're too high or not, Rodney, they are what they are. It ain't yep. Texas burnt orange Kool-Aid drinkers who are making those AP preseason polls or filling out those conference predictions. Uh, this is what the national folk thinks that this team is going to do, and that should lead to your expectations for what this team is going to do. I expect them to be ranked to begin the year, which means uh, they should be able to be a little bit better at least than what they were last season. Man, I, I just want consistency. That 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 was the frustrating thing all year long. It's yeah. like, man, what what are you going to get? I mean, like we're talking about the Astros. I told Wags this morning. It's like either they score twelve runs or two. You know, there there's no six or seven or whatever. There's nothing there, and and consistency is huge right here. And yeah. I, I mean, it, it's going to be a matter of flow. It's going to be a matter of personnel, and and I think it and it is. I'm glad that that now it's a time for Rodney Terry to where it is. It's it's a transitional year. The Chris Beard era has kind of passed. Um, you, you you kind of made your run off of that, but now you you had the season that you had last year. Okay, now it's your time. Here's your team. Make this your team. Go out there. Show us what you can do with these players. And hopefully it's a step in the right direction. Hopefully, hopefully it's not something to where you, we're, we're having the same conversation next year to where it's like, um, okay, who's the big guy? Where's the consistency? Who's the third guy? Uh, yeah. rotation what's that all about i, I don't want to be doing this again next year we shouldn't that's, have to be doing that again next year i agree and that's that's uh that's why i'm not too heartbroken about tyree center and dylan mitchell leaving because those were the exactly. two most inconsistent players on this texas team like that's right Ace and Desu, you could count on sure they had off nights at basketball but way more often than not those guys brought their lunch pails and they went to work uh hunter and mitchell you just had ne you never had any idea what they were going to do and that's that's what courtney ramey was to me that's what Jace Fabris was to me. Yeah, like There are guys, it's like, oh, some nights you feel like, all right, these dudes can be huge weapons, and some nights they're no-shows. That's why when they decided to leave, I'm like, all right, that's fine. Like, I feel like we can get better there. It's kind of how I feel about Tyrese and Dylan Mitchell right now. So this isn't yeah. – uh, you know, I'm not dunking that on them as kids. They're great kids, and they invested a lot into this program. And this is not, ah, oh, they're leaving, so I'm going to talk crap about them. No, nah, this is just like yeah, – I, yeah. I think Texas will be fine. They're not – they're not losing guys that are irreplaceable by any stretch. And if done right, they can get better than Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell. Well, and I think that was kind of the coolest things about watching UConn all year is, I mean, sitting there what they did. Yeah, yeah, you had some great players and, and you had players we can kind of sit there and rattle their names off. But it was like if one of those players had a had an off night or whatever you want, here comes somebody else. Here, here comes people making plays. That wasn't like we're sitting here talking about Desu and we're talking about two guys. It's yeah. like two guys. One of the these two have to be good tonight. UConn, you look at that, and again, that that's a very tall um, comparison that I'm talking about right here. But that's eight or nine guys right there, to where it's like, okay, if 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 your top two are off, one of these or two mm -hmm. of these or three of these are going to be your catalyst on your team, and that's, I mean, that's what you strive for right there. I mean, that that's perfect basketball. You do everything right. And can we you know, uh, can we get Dan Hurley here in Austin, please? No. God, how we about that? We found a yeah. way to make that happen, but yeah, Hey, that's absolutely. look. RT is going to talk about wanting to win national championships. And that's, that's what every team should be striving to do. And to win a national championship, you're going to have to knock off UConn. Uh, Cause you know, they're the creme de la creme in this sport right now. So trying to be like them. Yes. Like you said, a very tall task, a very tall comparison, but you, you want uh, what they've got right now. And you're right. They had so many different ways to beat you and so many different guys on any given night who could step up and beat you. You want a roster like that. That's that deep and that talented. If you get something close to that, that's how you get something close to the, the uh, results that Connecticut has had these last few <laughs> yeah. years. So. Yeah, and, and that was the dream. whole thing there, you know, coming to the national championship game. I mean, talking there with Purdue, it's like, yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much need to do a couple of things to stop them, and they did. And um, there you go. That's there it. You go. That is it. All right, we'll take your thoughts. The uh, code of text line, 512-222-9328. 
Uh, Texas having a couple of visitors in this week for basketball, so we might get some more news on the transfer portal front in the not-too-distant future. For the Longhorns, Jordan Pope, a name to look out for. Oregon State transfer averaged 17 a game for the Beavers last year. He's a guard, six foot six one. He's a guy who's been on campus, and he's a guy who might be committing to Texas pretty soon. So yeah. uh, I think uh, some more positive news coming your way if you are a UT Hoops fan. All right, um, some more love to some more sponsors. Quick shout-out to our friends at Olipop Game Changer. Game Changer. I know Double R is a big Olipop fan. What's your favorite flavor of Olipop? You got watermelon one? lime. Really? As a matter of fact, yeah. Um, when I got home last night, so um, ha- had to go pick up some stuff at the, at the local HEB right down the road, and I'm like, you know what? After the horrible eating that I've been doing uh, while we were gone, um, probably indulge in a few too many cold beers. It's like, man, I got to get myself cleaned out. So that Olipop, I mean, the stuff that's in there, the watermelon lime nice and cleansing you know that mm. that's what i love about olipop is it's good for you and it tastes good i mean because I've, I've had some of that stuff before some other brands where it's like somebody gives here this is for gut health and i drink that and i'm like yeah it's for gut health because it's giving me the shit because <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> yeah but yeah hey, i'm gonna lose weight because i'm gonna uh you know make myself throw up because this stuff tastes so yeah. bad so I'm yeah go crap out 10 pounds i mean yikes not yeah. Olipop, man. It's yeah, good stuff. It's, a, it's awesome, man. It tastes great. They've got a bunch of different flavors. It's funny. Like, I'm not a huge fan of the watermelon lime. I'm, I'm a huge mm. fan of like 10 other flavors, but that's low yeah. on my list. But oh, that goes to that the one. point. They've got a million different flavors for you to choose from. So, uh, something for everyone. And yeah, it's great tasting, healthy drink. I don't like that's That's a miracle for me. I don't like healthy yeah. stuff because it usually tastes awful. This tastes great. Tastes like soda or it tastes just like watermelon lime. And that's yep. uh, actually good for you as well. So pick some up wherever you buy your groceries. Double R said H-E-B. They've got them there. Walmart, Target, Costco, Whole Foods. Get you some of the greatness of Ali Hop. And also, speaking of greatness, I was on the phone with uh, Tom McKay. Tom McKay is going to be doing the midday show tomorrow with me. Nice. From, from 12 to 1. So uh, buckle up. Number one, set an alarm for 12 o'clock yeah, tomorrow. So you're good. tuned in listening. But also, yeah, buckle up and uh, get ready. Yeah for an hour of Lord knows. And I'm not even sure the Lord knows where we're going tomorrow, but uh, love Tom McKay, love AV consultations. You will too. 512-255-8678. And how about our girl, Leticia? She texted in. She was the winner second place of our March madness bracket challenge on Texas sports unfiltered. Bucky actually won, but Bucky was nice enough to give the second place winner, the TV. And uh, Leticia just texted in earlier today that AV consultations dropped the TV off at her place. So sweet. We're not lying to you people. When we do these giveaways, we actually give stuff away. Nobody gives away more than AV consultations. Nobody gives away more than Texas sports unfiltered and AV consultations is a huge part of that. Uh, So shout out to Tom. If you didn't win, you could still win by calling 512-255-8678 to get the home TV setup of your dreams. That's right. Okay. Double R. What's uh, we can get into some Texas football here, unless there's something else that uh, that's on your mind. Right I, I want to ask you because we were talking about this in ten o'clock hour. Uh, Texas tonight, uh, Texas baseball against uh, Rio Grande RGV. Um, Jared Thomas on the mound um, followed his pitching career in high school. You know, you know, working with all of that stuff. Um, is this? I mean, I hope this isn't a situation to where, I mean, if he comes out and does great, uh, I mean, yes, that's great. But I hope this isn't something to where, like, he's suddenly going to go into the starting rotation right here. I, um, to me, this kind of seems a little desperate at this point to me. Uh, I know shit happens, injuries happen and whatever, but I'm like, uh, okay, what's going through David Pierce's mind right now? Yeah, it does reek of desperation, right. and uh, this might be a coach coaching for his job right now, yeah. and he's already lost some of these midweek games. I heard y'all talking about this this morning. They've already lost midweek games that they shouldn't yeah. lose, and I think Texas has five or six losses to teams with losing records this season, so uh, maybe they feel like Jared Thomas gives them a better chance than some of the other guys they've been trotting out for these midweek starts. I don't know. I don't know. I, I assume this has been in the works for a while. 
I assume this wasn't a, uh, Oh, David Pierce just woke up yesterday and he's like, Hey Jared, I, I, I saw you pitch pretty well in high school. Let's uh, give you a shot tomorrow. Like I assume they've been working on this and Thomas has done some bullpen sessions and David Pierce has been sitting in on those bullpen sessions and he's liked what he's seen enough to where he feels like this is a good decision and the right decision uh, to give Texas a chance to win. But it sure, it sure does feel weird. It, it, it's more telling. I think of, where this pitching staff is than where Jared yeah. Thomas is, right? Like Texas feels like they have to turn to one of their best hitters to try to save their staff a little bit uh, because that's how bad things have kind of been for this uh, rotation and also just this whole arm barn in general. So yeah. it, it will be weird. I'll be locked in. I mean, I watch all of these games, but I am, I am intrigued because Jared Thomas was a great high school pitcher. He was. And he threw a couple of no-hitters back-to-back one time. Yeah. I think he had an ERA below one his yep. senior year as a starter at Waxahachie. So. There's there's clearly some arm talent there, and you see that arm from the outfield from time to time. But man, it's you know it, it's a weird bit for sure. And then also you wonder about an injury. You know, like th- this guy's so important to your offense, which has been what's carried your team this year. Yeah. Yeah. If if he gets hurt on the mound, and all of a sudden that costs him his ability to hit, then it's going to feel like a, a really really bad decision tonight. Yeah, it feels very much to me, I mean, and no offense to high school coaches that are checking in right here, high school baseball coaches, it feels like a high school baseball move to me. It's like, okay, you, you know, we're, we're pitchers, you know, we're lacking, whatever, let, let, let's bring them in. Let's bring yeah, them maybe, in. Maybe this is the start of a, a start of a, like a Disney Pixar movie or really the start of a cool 30 for 30 where it's like, oh shit, Jared Thomas is the best pitcher on the team and he becomes a first round pick because of his arm. And uh, just this random ass Tuesday night start was what led Texas and everybody else to realize just how good of a pitcher this dude was, man. But at the same time, I worry more about this feels more like a Forrest Whitley move. Mm. It's like, man, you're, you're going to sit in here. I, I, I don't know. I mean, and maybe he only gets two frames. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is right here, but it, 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 it is to me, BK. It's like, it's like desperate. And like you said, it, it it is a situation to where, I mean, David Pierce, I mean, you've, you've got to produce. I mean, you've got to produce. Um, at this point, I mean, getting to uh, Omaha, I mean, I saw that thrown out earlier. I'm like, are you kidding? It's like uh, maybe a regional at this point. Uh, let, let's set the bar a little lower. I mean, because I know we've got some real uh, avid seam heads around here when it comes to Texas baseball. I mean, our man KD, I mean, I've, I've heard him talk about it. I mean, I think realistically we know where this team is at this point. And yeah. it's not, it's not in the mindset of we're going to Omaha because that, that shit ain't going to happen yeah. unless something gets really crazy. So here's Greg Swindell, uh, of course, legendary lifetime Longhorn and World Series champion. And he actually calls most of the games on Longhorn Network. He tweeted this out yesterday when the news came down, he said, OK, Texas is starting arguably their best hitter and leadoff man on the mound. I'm baffled. Yeah. So. You don't often get the uh, color commentator tweeting out about lineups. And I love how the, the, first, the first reply from somebody on Twitter is like, is it professional to be doing that? And then Greg's like, yeah, I can do that. Yes. <laughs> I do whatever Shut the up. fuck I want. <laughs> Shut yeah. up, guy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's like, it's not just you know fans who are like, what's going on here? It's guys who played. It's guys who call these games who are like, what in the hell is happening right now with Texas baseball. Like this whole year has had a lot of WTF moments, but this is at the very top of the list. So I don't know, like what, what's best case scenario here. He goes out and pitches really well. Then boom, you have a Tuesday starter the rest of the season. He pitches well enough to where you've got a Sunday starter the rest of the season. Is it hey, he just eats a couple of innings this one time and he doesn't get hurt. And he just gives your, you know, some of your other pitchers the night off. Like, I, I don't know what David Pierce, he's hoping to win a game, obviously. Right. But like, long term, I don't know what his hope is or what his plan is with this Jared Thomas pitching experiment. And I think the underlying part of this for me is David Pierce inserting himself as the pitching coach. Yeah. It's going to work out one of two ways. I mean, if if something happens like what you're talking about to where it's a great experiment, it's like, God, man, he is such a – I'm so glad that he put himself as the – he inserted himself as the pitching coach because look at this. Look yeah. how great this worked out. But when or, or if this doesn't work out or this dude gets hurt and you lose that on the offensive side, it's like, dude, what what were you thinking? What right. were you thinking? You're you should know better. And mm, 
you know, I don't know. I've just I've just seen too many times in scenarios like this to where it's the the second option that I gave to where it doesn't work out the best. And that's why yeah. I can only hope that if he goes in and he is uh, not performing to whatever he's supposed to be performing at, get him out of there. Get yeah, somebody I, in there. I honestly, and this might be a loser's mentality, so sorry for this, but I honestly do not care if Jared Thomas goes out and gets shelled tonight. Like I, I, I agree. I almost hope that he does so he doesn't go out there and pitch again because he's so valuable as an outfielder and as this team's leadoff hitter that it's like, all right, you know, this – this was fun. We tried it. Whatever. It's not working. Put this guy where he belongs on the baseball field. Uh, that's almost what I hope for. And it's just like, it's just don't get hurt. Do not get hurt. You could get shelled, but do not get hurt tonight, please. Because any chance, like you said, that Texas has to turn things around. And I, I've stuck a fork in them. They're done. I don't think they are going to turn things around. But any chance that they have, they're going to need their leadoff man to uh, be a big part of that. So there you go. All right. Well, yeah, I agree. I mean, you don't sacrifice that offensive weapon. Be one yeah. thing. Be one thing. If you're, uh, you know, you bat in the middle of the pack or mid middle of the lineup, and maybe you were a good high school pitcher, pitched a couple of no hitters. Yeah, give him a shot. Not this dude. Not this dude. No. Did you, uh, did you see Travis Kelsey last week? He finally got his college diploma from the University of Cincinnati. No, I did, did you, not see that. I did not a, see that. Travis here's a video. Kelsey. <laughs> So 34 year old Travis Kelsey gets his college diploma from the university of Cincinnati. If you're listening on the app, you obviously couldn't see the video, but he uh, just chugged a beer on stage. He's wearing his cap and gown. He's shaking hands with the Dean and some professors who are up there. And yeah, he chugs a beer and then spikes the beer can down on stage before receiving his diploma. Man, I tell you that, that guy's living the life right now, isn't he? Yeah, I'll oh, tell man. you, man, uh, endorsements, um, you know, his dating life, that right there. I mean, who hasn't wanted to do that? I, I mean, that that's the ultimate um, graduation celebration right there where you do that, man. That, uh, that dude right there, there's a lot of people that want to be Travis Kelsey right now. And, and that yep. just adds to the lore of, uh, of what he's doing. Not Lord, lore of what he's doing. It's just a, yeah. it's just a cool dude, regular that's dude right there. I saw a lot of folks who were like, dude, he's 34. Like, he's too old to be doing that. That ah, just reeks of jealousy to me. Yeah. Like, it, this is awesome. I think most people would have loved to have gotten to do this when walking the stage at their college graduation. If I tried, I would have gotten taken to jail. Yeah. If I, did. I wouldn't have gotten my diploma. I wouldn't have been able to graduate, and they would have arrested me on the spot right there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool that this guy can do this. And they also had uh, Fight for Your Rights. By the Beastie Boys playing too. He got his own song. He got his own walk-up music for his college I mean, graduation. What does that tell you? That's special privileges right there when that stuff happens. I mean, I mean, look at this guy. I mean, and, and I like the guy that hands him the the diploma the right there. He's just kind of waiting. He's like, all right, let me know when you're done. And uh slams that down. I, I bet the guy with the diploma probably got covered in beer. Some mm. of that uh, after wash coming out of there. Yeah, there's plenty of beer in there when he chugs like, or when he spikes it. You know, that's the worst part of this video is he uh, he clearly did not finish chugging that brew. Yeah, come on, man. I hope that I hope that wasn't all stat. I hope no, that was like you you know, natty you light or or something like that. Come nah, on, you man. don't waste all stat. He's he's too smart to do something like that. But there you go. There's uh, Travis Kelsey one more time. And he's, I feel like you could chug a beer faster than this, Double R. This is a little oh, slow kidding? for Mr. Swift. Oh, man, are you kidding? If we didn't have – if if it wasn't about time for uh, Zip and Che, I'd go get one and show you. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I feel, come like, on. I, feel like, I feel like you still could. You can find a way to get it done by the time those guys come on. Yeah, that's but, about right. That's about right. No, that, that look good for him. I, I'm glad that he went and got that done. I mean, that, that's a you know, we get all caught up in the sports part and all that, but when these guys actually go back, I wonder what he had to do. I wonder what he had to do to get his diploma. Just make a call, probably. Hey, I need oh, my diploma. I, my guess is he took the classes that he needed to take uh to actually earn that diploma. Leaving. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, lawn I'm mowing kidding. 101. I wonder what those classes. I bet, I bet Taylor made him do that. I bet she's like, Travis, you need to go get that done. Right. You I wonder if he took them, if he paid somebody to take them, if he paid someone to write his papers and do all that work. I mean, I did. did that. Maybe think she so. Did. She, she probably got, she has no time for that. She she may I you just watch. She probably wrote some papers for him and they're going to turn out to be songs for her later on. Yeah, you know. This is one that I wrote. It was a paper for Travis and it's a song. Turns into a worldwide billboard whatever the hell they call it these days. I'd have been smart. Any professor would have given out a hundred if uh, Taylor Swift had written the paper. I mean, that's an easy A right there. Yeah, no doubt about that. Incredible. No doubt about that. All right. I see the fellas. I don't know if they've seen this video of Wags yet. Did you guys see uh, the Wags pickleball mishap? Did we show you all that yesterday? No, we missed that. Oh, there we <laughs> go. I had chips muted. But you could still show the video. So we were out at Bolden Acres on Sunday doing a little pickleball. Thanks to our friends at Pix Sports Gear. They had a demo day out there where folks could test out some of their paddles and some of their great pickleball equipment. And Wags hit the court for maybe the first time in his life. And, um, well, things did not go well. So he's on the left side of your screen. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Here's a little here's a little slow mo here for you. Oh. Easy <laughs> shit playing pickleball. I thought this was an easy, non contact, relaxing sport, and down goes Wags. He always tells me how good he is at it. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> man, you, you you need to come out with me, man. It, it's great. I'm like, and then I saw that over the weekend while I was at gone. I thought it was a random fan, and then I looked at it again. I'm like, Wags. Mm. We gotta, we gotta get him doing some karaoke steps, you know, some, uh, some footwork drills. Yeah, looks like Joe Seisman going down right there. LT behind him. His change of direction, you know, flip his yeah. hips, pivot, pivot. Chip, Chip, I know you're a huge tennis guy. Have you and uh, L Bell gotten into the pickleball game? Oh yeah, oh yeah. L L's won a tournament already. Already, already. Um, I haven't played in a tournament yet, but yeah, it's. I mean, for tennis players, ping pong players, you'll pick it up fast. Yeah. Y'all do win a lot. I'm starting to be a little suspicious. Y'all on that Jose Canseco? Oh, you know, oh, now Marion, I, Marion I, Jones is testing me <laughs> at fifty six. <laughs> How Don't great look in the locker room. They, they have random drug tests at the country club <laughs> tennis tournaments. Oh man, you! I'm you just saying, y'all always winning. I appreciate the success, but yeah, you I know. mean, you know, sometimes you grind and you train and you. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, what 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 are you talking about? <laughs> although we did win the city mixed doubles championship. See, last year, jeez, for forty and over. That's in tennis. Yeah. Wow. Did you That's what I'm saying, that? Rodney. A little suspicious if you ask me. Mm, I'm I'm in there. Yeah, what's going on, man? So, yeah. Something's a little fishy right here, man. I can't let it go. I, I went to this tennis, John Newcomb's tennis ranch this past weekend down in New Braunfels where it's like, you know, three hours of tennis in the morning on Saturday, then three hours in the afternoon. I was exhausted. Oh. I got to get in better shape, Zay. Yeah, man. You're, you're in better shape. out, baby. <laughs> 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 you bend over. <laughs> Tag you with that syringe. Yeah. yeah. Call it foreplay. There it is. Yeah. There we go. Call it foreplay. <laughs> Forehand, I think, is the tennis. Oh, this is going to be. Yeah, this Forehand, is gonna be yeah. This is going to be a good show if that's if that's <laughs> that's where we're headed. Forehand and foreskin. All right, that's what oh, you, know, right you know it's funny. It's funny, Zay. I was actually at that mixed doubles final, and you know who I went with? Oh. I, Ipe Mizuhara, <laughs> Shohei Otani's interpreter. <laughs> so I don't know what was going on there, but I saw him on the other side oh. of the court. He was there. Some stuff down. So I'm not sure what was happening there. 
He was ready to interpret. We need him to interpret what Wags was attempting to do right there. Oh, my goodness. Well, who who provided the incriminating evidence? This is me. I was filming. Oh, you were there. I was there. Yep. And Wags and I actually like rallied. He's so out of shape. It's hilarious. But we actually rallied for like 10 minutes after this. And he, he didn't fall again. But he was uh, playing against uh, one of the uh, owners of Pick Sports Gear, Tina. And yeah, they had just gotten on the court, just very basic rallying. They weren't even like playing by the rules. They were literally just like almost a tennis rally, just hitting back and forth. And yeah, this, this happened. Oh, man. Thank God I got it on video. Cause that was uh, glorious. It's like when the great wall fell. That's what that looked like. <laughs> right? <there's>, right? <laughs> New York city oh. earthquake right there. Yeah. Damn, a tremor. Yeah. Shoot. Love you, Wags. My guy, man. It's been a long time since he was all state Maryland linebacker. Yeah. Man. I got some questions about our military after watching that video. <laughs> I can tell you that. All right, gentlemen, we will uh, get out of y'all's way. You guys have a great afternoon and a great show. Appreciate <laughs> you. Later, boys. I appreciate you. Hey, in the immortal words of Judy Brown, happiness is a choice. And we're happy you're spending some time with us, Chip and Zay, holding it down here on the midday. Zay, what's going on, my man? What's happening, brother? Feeling I mean, good, feeling great. How are you? I'm feeling, feeling good, feeling great. Got a chance to talk to Steve Sarkeesian today. Yeah. And now we'll have uh we'll have a practice on Thursday, and then it's the spring game. We get to see some of these dudes for our own selves with our own eyeballs. Everybody will have an opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it's all about. You know, guys already hitting the portal with it opening up today. You expected it, but I feel like there's more that's going to follow soon. And just kind of the name of the business, you know, I see a lot of fans are a little disgruntled with a couple of guys leaving. I know Peyton Kirkland was a favorite for a lot of people, just knowing the upside that he has. And, you know, in a way, it's a good thing that certain guys leave because that means they're leaving due to the guys that are in front of them, due to the guys that are putting on more of a show at the moment. So and also feel like they're going to have a legitimate chance to play when the fall comes around. So I try not to trip off of Transfer Portal that much and wish these guys the best. But, yeah, man, it's part of the business in this era of college football. Yeah, and it's – it's um, he has not – really you know maybe outside of hudson card but he totally understood hudson card leaving he hasn't really lost anyone he's wanted to keep steve sarkeesian i'm referring to um we'll have we'll also have some portal discussion about dylan mitchell and tyrese hunter um who are uh, indicating that well they're in the portal uh, yeah. Dylan, Mitchell. Dylan Mitchell's also entering the NBA draft again. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, look, watch Dan Hurley pick up Tyrese Hunter and say, yo, you come off the bench and Tyrese Hunter be six man of the year of the Big East. <laughs> watch some shit like that. Watch, watch some shit like I just have a feeling in my opinion petty bones that some shit like that's going to happen and Tyrese Hunter is going to thrive at his next place. I mean, I'm sure it'll be difficult for Tyrese Hunter to, I guess, take a back seat and not be a starter. But if he was a starter for UConn, I, they're not repeating. If he comes off the bench for UConn with what Dan Hurley has shown us these past two seasons, and I'm st I'm just speculating here. This isn't a true thing or anything out there, but I, I I have a feeling that that's the type of place where Tyrese Hunter could end up and do really well. And if I were him, I would look to one of those big dog places. You might not be the starter, but you could be on a really really good team with the attributes that you bring to the table. Yeah, he's he's. He's a good one B. He's not a one. 
He's a no. two or a three or a four. A two. He's a two. Oh, come on. Come if, on. He's your three, if he's your three or four, then you're one of the best teams in the country easily if he's one of your three and four. Like Tyrese at his best is a really good basketball player, but that's the problem. You don't get that very often. You get that up and down Tyrese Hunter where one game he'll have 30, the next game he won't hit any shots from the field like we saw at Oklahoma and Kansas State in the Big 12 tournament. So that's, again, coaching is very important. That's why these guys get paid the big bucks. So if he could go to a team where a coach understands his role and it fits into their system, he could thrive. But that's yeah. a big if. Yeah. Um, people wondering about, you know, Dylan Mitchell and Tyrese Hunter entering the portal. Is this a surprise? No, it's not a surprise. Um, and Texas is still actively pursuing its to-do list in the portal. So, um, they're not done yet. Let's put it that way. And let's see. Let's see what uh, what more surprises are in store, because we know that um, what our man uh, Jordan Pope is in this week for a visit from Oregon State, and they've shown interest in Danny Wolf, the seven footer from Yale. Um. Farrell Payne, the rising junior. Um, uh, where did Farrell, Farrell Payne? Is uh, Brandon Garrison coming in? Um, I'm, checking, I'm checking on that. Uh, Farrell Payne from Minnesota. Minnesota, 6'9", 255 uh, pounds. Average 10 points, 6.1 rebounds. It's kind of that's that's kind of uh Dylan Mitchell type numbers, but you know. But presence is a big thing too. Yeah. He might not be asked to do what Dylan Mitchell was asked to do, you know, feral pain. But yeah, you need some big bodies. That should be the point of emphasis right now. You need some big guys like Mason Gillis, the backup for Purdue. I take a look at him. He was six man of the year in the Big Ten for um, Matt Painter, and he was good for them. Knocked down the outside shot, was tough, you know, spaced the floor. He plays a lot like Jason Kent, but – there's nothing wrong with having too many of those type of guys. Like versatility is huge with the game, how the games play today. So when you have guys that you could pluck in multiple positions, depending on the matchup and who are experienced and have played meaningful basketball, like Mason Gillis has who played in the national championship game, you could rely on that. Like that's what coach Terry and the staff, they've done a good job of getting these experienced guys. They might not be here for very long, but Danny Hurley has shown you that don't matter. You could bring in guys like Cam Spencer for one year and they could help you win a national championship. It just has to fit with the rest of your core. And I know it's easier said than done, but yeah, they're off to a decent start. Other than that, off to a decent yeah. start. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this will be uh, – there will be more coming. Um, all right, Texas Spring Football. Sarkeesian uh, confirming my report over the weekend that Jare Bledsoe had a big scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian went through uh, – some of the names that stood out to him on Saturday, Manny Muhammad, Malik Muhammad, who we said had an interception of Arch Manning in that scrimmage. Jure Bledsoe um, was making plays up front. Uh, Andrew Mukuba, he said, was physical. And they wanted to see that because they're, they haven't been tackling to the ground very much 
except in these scrimmages on Saturday and, of course, in the orange-white game. Um, but Sarkeesian has said, we'll start off tackling and then we'll go to thud. It's all how the coaches are feeling. And during the tackle portion, Andrew Makuba was physical. And um, he said, uh, guys who've taken a step forward in the, in the last, well, today at practice, he said, Arch Manning might have had his best practice as a Longhorn. And that Isaiah Bond um, had a good practice. And we had mentioned that uh, Isaiah Bond and Jonte Cook had a couple drops in Saturday's scrimmage. Sarkeesian said he felt like there were too many drops in Saturday's scrimmage. So that that gets to that. And um, he said Anthony Hill Jr. had a um, really good practice today. So. Sounds like Anthony Hill is stacking uh, good practices. And um, he, when I asked him about Jure Bledsoe, he, he said, you know, he's um, cutting it loose. He's cutting it loose, Zay. Not thinking as much. Just go. Trust your training. That's what happened with Jalen Ford. We talked about it. His, uh, you know, when they played Alabama in Austin, that first game against ULM, he had like no tackles. And then the next week they play Alabama, he sacks Bryce Young on third down and he just took off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you're, you're always hoping for that light bulb moment. And if that, scrimmage on Saturday can be a light bulb moment for Jure Bledsoe, who's just so athletic and, you know, just has the ability to, uh, you know, get into the backfield. He's more of a, he's more of a, a three technique like Byron Murphy, a guy who can, you know, rush the passer and stop the run. Um, that's big time. That will be big time. So, um, yeah, they said we got to get him playing to his strengths. So, and they yeah. need, they need someone, you know, to, I think Alfred Collins will probably be the three technique. Jare Bledsoe will be a three technique. I think your nose tackles will be Vernon Broughton, Tia Savea, um, Aaron Bryant. Those are the guys who are going to, you know, line up between the center and the guard and, face most of the double teams the three technique lines up on the outside shoulder of the guard where it's a tougher matchup because the end you know the tackle is going to take the end and then the three technique is one-on-one -on -one with the guard and and should be able to win that matchup so that's uh that's that's what you want because we don't know you know we know texas would like to get help at defensive tackle in the portal but we don't know what defensive tackles are going to be in the portal. And if there isn't anyone from, you know, wearing maize and blue in there, I don't know if, if Texas really can upgrade. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, it's slim pickings. We talked to Hummer last week about just the depth of defensive tackles in the nation. And it's very slim. So you don't want to waste a scholarship on somebody that's not going to give you anything. I mean, Tro Carter was basically that last year. We thought Tro Carter was going to be a big time, you know, get in the transfer portal coming from Minnesota due to what he did there in the Big Ten. And he came over to Texas and he really wasn't, you know, involved <laughs> at all. So now, you know, going into this season, knowing that you're kind of slim at that spot, you're starting to hear names like Aaron Bryant being thrown out there, Dre Bledsoe being thrown out there. And that's what should happen because you said it last week. Like these guys listen to us. They listen to the media. They see what's popping on Twitter. They hear all of these things about, oh, man, everybody's wondering about the interior line because Javondre Sweat and Byron Murphy are out of here to the National Football League. So if I'm Dre Bledsoe, that pisses me off. 
Like, what? Hold up. We're supposed to be next. Who's the, what do you mean go get somebody else? No, damn that. We're next. We're the next ones up. I'm that next guy that's going to be the next Byron Murphy and be a first round pick. I'm not trying to hear that. So the guys that are competitors like that, that will use that as fuel, which I think Aaron Bryan and Dre Bledsoe are probably doing, going to take their level to another notch. Because you don't want nobody coming in taking your minutes. That's the last thing you want. You already know Vernon Broughton and Alfred Collins, they're going to get theirs. So everybody else is kind of just scattered on who knows. And this is the time that you take that step forward and show your authority. And I think Jure Bledsoe, I think he understands the moment. Like, yeah, they might go get somebody in the transfer portal, but that shouldn't mess up what you're trying to do and bring to the table. And if those guys play with that fire, you know, under their ass, like our guy Stretch says, then, hey, I'll take that. Like, yeah, get pissed off. Feel disrespected. You're getting disrespected. We talk about that every day. You know, Terrier defensive line. I see multiple media outlets talk about it with Texas. Everybody's worried about what Travondre Sweat and Byron Murphy brought to the table, and that you're going to lose. So now for those guys that are – Rocking the burn orange that play that position, which again goes back to Kenny Baker. Like Kenny Baker has a huge task at his hands, man, because a lot of those guys' success came from Bo Davis. So Kenny Baker, can you come in and light that fire under these guys and develop them in the right way to get them ready when it's time to kick off on uh, August 31st? I think he can. I think these guys are taking it personal, and I like to hear those things about Jure Bledsoe and what we heard about Aaron Bryant last week. Yeah. Yeah. And Dre was a guy who needed to mature as a freshman. Um, and so <clears throat> this is the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the time. This is the time. And hopefully Kenny Baker's getting through to him. And and Sarkeesian's talked about it. Kenny Baker is a technician. Like he's going to get your hands and your feet right. And when that happens, guys tend to go pew because they finally realize, oh, that's why it's so important to time up my handwork with my footwork and make sure that I'm taking the right step and getting the right leverage and the right punch and knowing when to, you know, use my swim or my knife and long arm and all that stuff. So that's uh, that's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, Steve Sarkisia did say that if you have not made your case in the spring, there's still time. But sounds like some positions are starting to make their case, like running back. What? Is <sighs> what? Nothing. I nothing. I just felt like we knew that already, though. Well, here's what he said. He said. You know, someone asked him about carries. He's like, I'm not concerned about that. Like, we've got a nice combo of CJ and Jaden Blue with Trey Wisner, who can play both the move running back like Keelan Robinson and be a between the tackles guy. So those three are looking like the ones to beat going into the fall. We kind of knew that. Uh, but he did say Jarek Gibson had his best practice uh, today and that Christian Clark had his best practice on Saturday in the scrimmage. So seeing some flashes from the young from the young guys. Um, and Juan Davis keeps getting mentioned as a guy who's just hell-bent to show these coaches what he can do. And... He said, sometimes when you're a scout team player, you don't, you know, get to show everything you've got. But he said, now that Juan is rolling with the ones, we're seeing more of his complete and competitive nature. Rolling so, with the ones, huh? Oh, yeah, he's rolling in there with the ones. He's getting some, he's getting some reps with the ones. I mean, well, congrats for one. That kind of makes me scratch my dome a little bit about what does that mean for Gunnar Helm or Amari no, Black? So here's the deal. Gunnar is going to be your your inline blocker. Okay. 
he's going to be your every down guy. And then you'll either roll in Amari or Juan as the stretch the field guy. Is so, Amari not like that bad of a blocker? Am no. I missing something? Okay. No. But sounds like Juan's really picking it up. So yeah. Amari's going to have to pick it up. I mean, again, he's learning the playbook still. Juan yeah. Davis has been in this program for a while now. Right. He, Juan he Davis should know knows. this playbook from the back of, you know, his hand. Like, that's that's easy. But I – Amari Nyblack's too talented. Yeah, but that's – To be on the field. That's a good thing. You need depth. True. True. Because Spencer Shannon, Will Randall, uh, Jordan Washington, those guys are coming – but you don't want to have to depend on them yet. You want them to have that salt in their oh yeah in their neck. You know, year three when they're going to Jeff Banks, going, I I'm doing everything you're asking. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm blocking. I'm catching. What's a what's a guy got to do to get some reps? Get some to be able to roll with the ones. Can I get some roll with the ones? Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah, Jeff Banks nicer than me, dog. I would have looked him right in his face and be like, yo, you, I'm sorry, Gunner. I love you, but you ain't JT Sanders, bro. I'm sorry. Your time is coming. Be patient. You are not JT Sanders, damn it. That guy is special. Why you gotta why you gotta that's why I'm not a coach? That, he's that's a why. better blocker. He's a much better blocker than JT Sanders. I wouldn't say much better, because there's some things that JT Sanders did this year that were solid. Let's not forget, JT said it was playing on a gimp leg for a lot of a lot of the time this year. I understand. So I, so I give him the benefit of the doubt. But you're right. He was a better blocker. I get that. Gunner Helm. And he deserved JT a little bit more gave left. up the sack against Houston that injured Quinn's shoulder. Hurt. But that was after the OU game. He hurt. had the ankle. <laughs> hurt. Yeah, exactly. Playing hurt. Playing hurt. Bad move. Sark. Get his ass out of there. <laughs> Put in Gunner. Let Gunner roll. Well, and Malik Agbo is still your big, heavy jumbo tight end, sixth offensive lineman. Damn, so, he's still there? Yeah, man. Wow. Why are you trying to run him off? I'm not trying to run him off. I'm just trying to find a role for him. He's, you know, uh, he, he's sticking around. Good for him. That's good. Him. Trust the grind. You know, some of these guys don't trust the grind. Some of these guys hop in that portal right when that thing opens because they don't want to fight for spots. They don't want to get better or try to beat out the person that's ahead of them. They just want the easy way out. I'm not saying everybody does that who gets to the transfer portal, but a lot of guys do. We don't want those guys. Malik Agmo, sophomore. Okay. Um. Yeah, so Jack Burton, this is the this is the million dollar question, Jack. This is what we're all waiting to see. Um, because Cam had some remember he started that game against K State. He he was handled right. the, huh? He was all right. Yeah, he was all right. He was all right. Yeah, he was better in pass protection than he was in run blocking, which is kind of like hmm, because Cam Williams, once he gets his hands on you, you're through. It's a big fella. Big fella. So, yeah, that's the million dollar. And if he doesn't, they got plan B. You know, move Hayden Connor over to right tackle. Move Neto Yamazulo in it. Guard. Or Cole Hudson, whoever's, you know, doing the best job at that point. Cole Hudson, your backup center behind Jake Majors and your swing Guard can play either guard position. Obviously, started all started every game as a freshman two years ago. So there is some depth on the offensive line, but we are seeing guys, you know, in the portal, and that's understandable on the offensive line because it's a log jam. And you know, you brought in Daniel Cruz, Brandon Baker, um, but. <clears throat> Yeah. It's, you know, and look, they, they're at 88 scholarships, so they got to cut. They need three more guys to get in the portal. 
And then oh. if they take any more from the portal, they they would need four to move oh. to move on. So, yep. Stay Sorry, tuned. Guys, gonna get that talk, and that's next week. So the exit interviews are next week. Steve Sarkeesian will sit down, the position coach. They'll talk to the players. Say, here's where you are. Here's where we think you can get. Um, here's what role we see. What do you think? Yeah, I'd be horrible at that. Those meetings too. Uh -oh. Again, can't you, sugarcoat, you can't sugarcoat it, man. You got to let these dudes know, hey, son, like my old Paris Junior College coach Tom Schubert did, you're not good enough. You're fucking not good enough. <laughs> Were you alone uh, with him in the huh? room? Were you alone with him in no, the room? No, no, it wasn't me. It was one of my teammates. Oh. Brooklyn. He was from New York. We just called him Brooklyn. And, yeah, he was wondering. He, for one – it was one of those kumbaya therapy moments to where our assistant, Logan Lee, who was an Aggie, so I never really liked him very much. I always, you know, he was just, he meant well, but him being an Aggie, I just couldn't trust him. I couldn't go to him for things. Like, you're the assistant. I don't trust you. You're going to snitch the Chom Schubert. I don't mess with that. But he wanted to have a kumbaya meeting for our team because guys were getting in trouble smoking the chronic and one of our players got caught fighting someone they shouldn't have been fighting. And, you know, Coach Schubert, even though we were winning, was kind of losing the team with how he was talking to guys. And this meeting didn't help. And then Coach Lee, the assistant, goes, does anybody have anything to say? Does anybody have anything that they want to put out there that they've been holding in because – they feel like they haven't been heard. They feel like they haven't been seen. And Brooklyn stood up, 6'5", 230, raised his hand and was like, you know what, coach? I do. I came all the way down here from New York City. You told me that I had an opportunity to get some playing time and be a big help. I do everything that you want me to do in practice. I try to be a leader, I try to be a good teammate, and I don't get any playing time. What's up with that? And Tom Schubert lost it. He lost it. <laughs> he lost it. Absolutely lost it. He's like, you ungrateful SLB, this and that. Oh, I can't believe you. You really want to know why you're not playing? You're not good enough. You're not fucking good enough. And I'm over here, like, in the corner, just young red shirt like i know why i'm not playing i'm in a red shirt for the reason i know i'm not good enough you ain't got you ain't gotta tell me tom you ain't gotta tell me we got guys that are going to iowa after this and alabama state and you know playing big time d2 i know i'm not ready yet so you ain't gotta tell me and i knew he was gonna snap we just lost to uh god who we lose to kilgore and, yeah, he wasn't trying to hear it. So, yeah, that's why – and I feel like that pressure, that pressure gets to you like it was to Tom because that was like his eighth stop maybe in 15 years. He wasn't comfortable at no place because they always drove him out because he was a hothead. He could coach, knows the game, you know, X's and O's wise. On what year was Brooklyn? Brooklyn – Brooklyn was at least 23 at least <laughs> at least and he played d1 too i think he was in the tournament like one of those met nice stayed or something like that one so he got out of paris and went to mcneese and no 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 no, no. he got out of mcneese and went to paris oh yeah yeah but physical strong could finish he was only six five though it wasn't the tallest dude for a center but he was was he good enough? I would have played him. Yeah, if I was Schubert, I would have played. But we were winning, though, even though we just lost before. Like, we went to the championship in our conference tournament. We won our conference during the season, and that's the only way you could get to the tournament, the big-time national tournament, is if you win your conference tournament. It doesn't matter what you do during the regular season. There's no at-large bids, which sucks. But um, – yeah, we ended up losing to Navarro 
They're usually the team to beat in that conference. But Navarro, they got the cheerleader squad too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, good times, man. That's what I'm saying. I just got to keep it real with these dudes. Like, look, man, you're not good enough. You appreciate what you did for the program. We got guys better than you. If you need a reference, I got you. Jeff Choate's in Nevada. Brandon Marion is in UNLV. There you go. Like, that's what well, the rest of these guys are I doing. get the feeling that, that Sarkeesian does try to keep it real because he's like, it does me no good to sugarcoat it for a kid and then have him three months later going, why am I still buried on the depth chart? Like he he's trying to keep it as real as possible so that they're getting an accurate picture of where, where things are. Um, and I have to say that's been kind of re refreshing about Sarkeesian. Because some coaches are like, like Tom. I mean, I always go back to Tom Herman because got to. He was the guy before. That dude. He would. He wasn't gonna be transparent about anything. Remember when uh, PJ Locke called him? Um, oh God, we were at Big Twelve Football Media Days, and someone was talking about Tom Herman's personality and and pj Locke was like trying to read tom herman's like trying to read a wizard or something like just no chance of being able to read because pj and then pj Locke told this story about how he left his water bottle in the players lounge and this is during camp when you're supposed to be hydrating, hydrating, hydrating. You're supposed to be drinking. Blah, 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 blah. And so word got back to Herman that PJ Locke had left his water bottle in the player's lounge. And Herman went off. Like, do you understand how important this is? Blah, blah, blah. And PJ Locke's like, got it, coach. It's like, yeah, you know. So I'm saying that intimidation shit doesn't make any sense. Like they think that's cool. I think that's gonna make somebody play harder for you. It's not. It's like it's not. It's just stupidity, ignorance. Like okay, he can somebody get him some water, please. Like maybe he has other things to worry about, like the freaking playbook, like not getting his head knocked off. You know, head on a swivel. I don't know. This yeah. is kind of a physical game. I'm not necessarily worried about where my water bottle is. I'm just worried or about Or maybe there's the something water going around. on in his life that, you know, like Yeah, come on, off the field. Like is damn. that possible? <laughs> Could that be possible? <laughs> that dude Tom, man, he's just And wow. man, he would kiss those players on the cheek when they went out to the field and they that's so fake. They all hated it. Gosh, that's fake. Don't kiss me. I would have shoved the shit out of him. If I'm on one of those rosters, like, yo, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, hey, hey. No, give me a hug. Let's dap it up. That's fine. You don't need to kiss me on my cheek, man. You know? Not that there's anything wrong with that for some folk. For some folk, that's fine. For me, folk, not. Well, and the story behind cool. it was totally compelling. Like, Tom Herman's dad died in a homeless shelter. Okay. Like, his like he couldn't be saved alcoholism everyone in the family tried to save him it didn't work he died on the streets and you know tom herman's like some of these guys don't have a father i understand what that's like and you're like oh wow and then you find out that herman's saying just stupid stuff behind the scenes to guys shaming them and anyway but that says a lot though like traumatic uh, childhood yeah to where certain things that other people might see as a red flag he doesn't because he just grew up around red flags where he thought oh this is just everyday living you know i might not be like my father but 
you're going to take some things away that aren't good and they're going to reflect on your everyday living. And that's what happened. Like just how he treats people. And he got a lot from Urban Meyer too. Urban Meyer got daddy issues or some type of issues back at home. Family growing up, upbringing. Has to. Has to. You talking about kicking the kicker? Herb. The kicker? Come on, man. Just calling them kicker? What's wrong with you guys? What <laughs> those guys might you might need them to win you a game later. Like, Do you understand that uh Old boy from Australia was the MVP of a bowl game for Tom Herman. The pro bowler for the Seahawks. Who's, um, oh my God. Michael. Uh, Dickerson? That's not it. Yeah. Dixon, right? Dixon, yeah. Michael Dixon. Michael Dixon. Herman never called that dude by his name. He won the Ray Guy Award and is a perennial pro bowler and is a, just a magician with that ability to drop punts inside the five. Anyway, yeah, what a – I mean, compare Texas fans, compare where you were under Tom Herman to where you are now. and. If you look at the three-year record, it's pretty similar. Um, but you've got a conference championship. You've been in the college football playoff, and you're recruiting the trenches like you, like since '02. So that was one thing I could never understand. Tom Herman couldn't get his offensive line coach. Right. He had at first it was Derek Wareheim. He was not ready for the job. They demoted him to tight ends. They brought in Herb Hand. Herb Hand. Not or uh no, they had um well yeah, yeah, Herb Hand. And but he wasn't a great recruiter. And now you got Kyle Flood who's and the pancake factory, pancake factory that helps, that, that helps. helps a little bit. Well, yeah. 50 grand, 50 grand guaranteed to every scholarship offensive lineman. And uh, yeah, does Peyton Kirkland guy give back some of his money? How's that work? No, he just won't get money for next year. Okay, okay, yeah, you yeah, keep that money, Peyton. I see you, dog, businessman. Businessman, he said, I got my 50 thou. I am out of here. I'm going to take it and go somewhere where I could play. Hopefully he saved that and hasn't gone to strip clubs and blown that money. But he got 100,000. He got 100,000. He played. He, he's been here two years. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we know Uncle Sam got his cut, but that's still good coin. Yeah. Real good coin. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Burton says, yeah, feels so much more reassuring with Sark right now. It's not even close. Yeah, because Herman, here's the thing. I say this all the time. I say a couple things all the time. Sign of a well-coached team is week-to-week -week improvement. The other thing is win the games you're supposed to win, and you'll never have the fans at your throat. That's how That's how the – Great ones stay in one place. Like even Les Miles won a national championship at LSU and was there almost 10 years because he won the games he was supposed to win. So far, certainly last year, and well, I mean, OU is OU. It's always going to be tough. Yeah, nah, you can't count that. You can't count that. So that was it. And then they lost to Washington by six in the college football playoff. And you walk away going, okay, we won the games we were supposed to win. And we paddled the bleep out of Oklahoma State in the Big 12 title game. Oklahoma State is seen as a contender for the Big 12 in 2024 because they got 21 starters back.
yo, homeboy coming back, quarterback for his like eighth year, it seems like. Let's go, Gundy. Let's get it. You know Gundy going to be talking about college football playoff and this and that, trying to be an at-large bid and not getting that respect because the Big Ten and SEC going to soak up all them teams. And, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, Gundy Gundy is smug alicious. Oh, he's like, so smug. He's so, so smug. He, he entertains me. He entertains me. Like, he's so smug. He entertains me. And he got it right between the eyes from Texas last year, finally, right? Because Oklahoma State was, like, winning they have the record for most consecutive wins over Texas in Austin under Gundy. Five. Yeah. Like, and he was taking that energy into the Big 12 tournament or uh, championship. Like when he was being asked questions and stuff, he was like, I mean, they always got four or five stars. We we still beat them. <laughs> like, why would I give a damn now just because it's for all the marbles? You know, like I could care less. We've had way more success than they have in the last 10 years. Okay, cool. And what were we doing? Telling these guys, y'all better use that as – Motivation tactic, bulletin board material, because this dude is serving it up on a platter, hot. Like and then what did he what did he say to Sark on the Nike trip this this spring? That looked like a team with unlimited NIL. Sark, <laughs> said, Sark said, "Culture." <laughs> Oh my gosh, man! Yo. I look like a team with unlimited NIL. Well, yeah. And Sark said, "Culture." Yeah. Unlimited culture. Wow, man. Yeah, maybe if you got along better with y'all's old deceased big time booster, you would be getting more money. You know. What okay, I'm this is an interesting question from CB. Do you see similarities between early Texas Mac and Sark? Currently, um, yes, from the standpoint of the recruiting, the thing I like about Sark is that there's no wasted motion. Like Mac would take kids. Mac was so about the early recruiting because he wanted momentum. He wanted like sometimes his classes were almost filled by the end of junior days. Like, like he always took offensive linemen too soon. I felt like, cause I don't know he, his early recruiting philosophy worked and then it lost its luster. I remember when he was recruiting Matthew Stafford and he said, you know, and Ryan Mallett, and he told those guys, we need an answer by this date. And if we don't have an answer, we're moving on. And people were like, what are you doing? Like, work, work, recruit him, win him, win him over. Like, you still got to, just because you're Texas and you're Mac Brown, you got a great personality. You still got to put in work and connect with these guys and build the relationship. Like, people didn't realize that about Charlie Strong. Charlie Strong spent a ton ton of time on the phone himself recruiting the Malik Jeffersons and the you know the best of the players that he had and he he put in that work and you know Mac expected his assistants to recruit him and Mac was the closer he was going to come in with mom and grandma and win them all over and Seal the deal. Tom Herman was the exact opposite. His assistant coaches didn't want him anywhere near these kids on official visits. And, and if he was making an in-home, sometimes two and three assistants would go with him so that he wouldn't have to talk very much. That's pitiful. That, not a head coach at all. So Sark yeah. is... Sark's got he so 
Sark, it feels like it feels like Sark has that kind of staying power, you know? Yeah, it does. One thing I will say about Mac, he would coach his coaches. He coached them hard and he put the fear of God in them. I remember when he he didn't give his receivers coach a raise. Um, like every other coach got at least like a three percent, five percent raise. And um Billy uh um uh not Billy Kennedy. Um oh god. Uh love that guy too. Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy didn't get a raise, and I remember like going up to Bobby, I'm like, what the hell was that about? He's like, he's like there was some there were just some assistants. He was gonna ride harder than others, but um yeah, Mac was good about coaching his coaches and making sure that they were on point. Uh, and I think Sark is that way too. Like, I don't think he liked how Brendan Marion was was doing stuff because I heard when he was interviewing for the, for the uh, replacement that he wanted, you know, he wanted a guy who'd been in the NFL who could like teach these receivers what it's going to take in the NFL. And that was kind of his philosophy too, with Kenny Baker going to get a guy been with the dolphins and, and a technician, a guy who's going to, you know, Chris Jackson's going to teach you how to get off the line, your footwork, those, those steps, you know, that, that false step that gets the DB, you know, falling one way. Um, he's got all that. And I give, I give Sark credit for that. You know, he, he, he knows we're going to have great receivers here because they want to play in my offense. I need to get them a, a coach who's been in the NFL who can teach them the technique and what it's going to take to succeed at the NFL level and, and coach them like that. And that's been his approach with Chris Jackson. And of course, to sharp choice is gold. Like they just need to hang on to him. He's going to be like a Stan Drayton. I don't think he wants to be an offensive coordinator. I don't think he wants to call plays, but he could become a head coach. He could go from position coach to head coach like Stan Drayton did going from running backs coach at Texas to the head coach at Temple. And, and the great thing about to shard choice is he only knows to grind. Like he wants to win at everything and it comes across at everything he does when he's recruiting these kids, they listen to him, man. Cause he's, first of all, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's been through some shit. He's he's had to overcome his own adversity, losing his dad, everything. But he he cares about these kids. And I mean, Jonathan Brooks' mom said she couldn't believe that Tashar Choice came down to Hallettsville for his dad's funeral. You know, that's a significant drive. And Tashar Choice said, Hey, I'll be there. And he was there. Yeah. And that so meant everything to Jonathan Brooks. Like yeah. you hear how Jonathan Brooks talks about Tashar Choice. And you got to be relatable. You know, you got to be relatable to this new generation. I mean, it's different. Like it's different. The kids growing up and in this college system with NIL and the transfer portal and everything that comes with it than to what Mac Brown had to deal with. And Mac Brown at times had a hard time you know, adapting to certain things. Hell, yeah. And that's the key word, Zay. Yeah. Adapt. Yeah. Because I heard Sark on Sirius XM today, and they're asking about the portal and this and that, and he's like, well, you have to adapt. He doesn't bitch. He doesn't complain. He doesn't, oh, we need to do this. He just says, you got to be able to adapt. Yeah. And that is the magic word. Because you know that's what he's telling his assistant coaches. Don't bitch, adapt. And that's what that's what a great leader does. Yeah. I always go back to this 
Lance Armstrong's not a great analogy for this. Yeah, it's not. Because he's he's got his own deal, and, and it's a lot like Major League Baseball. Everyone was juicing. But the one thing, Lance, I loved was he would get his team – when it was cold, windy, and rainy, he was like, this is where we dominate. Like, we pray for this weather because we know those other bastards are going to be cold and rainy and tired. <laughs> We're going to feast on these mofos. Yeah. Like, I hope it's cold, wet, and windy and every day of the tour, you know? And that... You got to adapt, man. You got to be able to thrive in all conditions. So what did Lance say? He's like, we're going to dominate. Like, don't yeah. ever complain about the weather. Like, okay, we want the worst weather possible because everyone else is going to be bitching and complaining and we're going to dominate. So it's, We're going to dominate. Now shoot yeah. this syringe in my ass right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me let, me let me bend over this table so you could shoot the syringe in my yeah. ass real quick. So put, a little, get this put, power. put a little extra in there. It's gonna be cold and windy and rainy. Give me a little extra. Give me give me <laughs> give me a syringe and a half. Oh, live strong, baby. You're still the goat to me, Lance. It's just medicine. What's the difference between that and Tylenol? My head hurts. I take Tylenol. I feel better. What's the difference? What's the difference? You're just taking it to make you feel better. You know, Jose Canseco, Barry Bonds, A-Rod, Marion Jones, legends. Legends. Yeah. Lance Armstrong used to say, so he had this Dr. McKelly Ferrari who was known for every cutting edge, everything, HGH, you know, blood spinning, all of it. And uh, one of the teammates – wouldn't wouldn't do it and someone asked lance about it and he said he's too cheap <laughs> i mean lance was he was he was ruthless not, not because that person has a good heart and wants to do the right thing too cheap wow come on lance come on dog it was like my man, Sean Adams. You needed the jaws of life to get into that wallet. Oh, bad. Every time the check came, little alligator arms, you know, I uh, can't quite reach it. <laughs> Love That's you, Sean. Five. Yeah. Five. Damn. Yeah, so, yeah. There you I go. Jack. They're all doing it. That's what I'm saying. Steroid era in baseball, McGuire, Sammy Sosa, nothing better. Tell me when baseball was that good. Come on. Y'all remember that? Every day we go and watch the four-letter network to see what's going on with where Sammy's at and Mark McGuire's at in that race. Yeah, man. That's what it's all about. Bobby Kennedy. Come on, Bobby. I love me some Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy kept it real. He's a rice coaching them receivers. Come on. That's a that's a heck of a lifestyle. You know, talking to your dad about it. These guys bouncing around from job to job to job to job to city to city to city. And if they got family to school to school to school, man, it's tough. Yeah. So if you can get to one place and be in one place. Yeah. Like everybody sees L'Oreal and be like, oh, Sark's happily married. This ain't wife number one. Right. Sark's been through it. We know all the backstory of Steve Sarkeesian and drinking and stuff. He's been through it. So the fact that Steve Sarkeesian's on the other side of it and thriving says a lot about him and his character at this point of his life. But, yeah, man, that's a stressful lifestyle. Like, it seems fun. It seems cool to travel all the time. And you get to coach and play in these big stadiums slash arenas. But, yo. Making some jack. Yeah. Finally. Finally. But the stuff behind the scenes that we don't see, the grind, yo. Yeah. You better be prepared. Yeah. Especially if you want to be good. If you want to be a good team and you want to be a good coach, then you're not going to have much family life. 
That's just what it is. Right. You hope, you hope to have a ride or die person by your side that understands it. Because some will say they do, and then you get in it, and a couple of years go by, and things change constantly. You know, so is that person still ride or die five years in, and you're already at your third job? Because the second one, you got fired due to the head coach getting fired that's been there for five years, and you thought this was it? You know what I'm saying? Eric Bieniemy, Like, it could change like that, so... Yeah, I marvel all these guys and gals that are. In well, the look at Scott Drew. Coaching. Okay, Scott Drew is going to have a statue if it's not already out in front of Foster Pavilion. If he goes to Kentucky and has a couple bad years and gets fired, yep. I mean, That's what I'm you saying. think Billy? You think Billy Gillespie thought he was going to go to Kentucky and get fired? Well, that's different. My my guy was drinking. Billy Clyde, that's my guy. I love him. One of my but, dad's assistants. But you know, he you know the guys who are on the rocket ship. Yeah. And then it. I mean, look, I'm I'm happy. Andy Enfield is at SMU now. Andy Enfield. He was at Florida Gulf Coast. He was on the rocket ship. He gets the USC job. Pretty good for a stretch, and then. Now he's at SMU, but he's going to the ACC. He's going to be playing against Duke and Carolina next year. Gosh. Which, that's a big reason why, oh, Tara Vanderveer, your girl, your sister, big reason why that she left the game. BK's girl. <laughs> BK that's loves that haircut. Love me. <laughs> yeah, that Bob is iconic. But, um, yeah, that's a big reason why she retired. She ain't trying to play – North Carolina State on a random Tuesday. That's a long way for one game, Palo Alto. A long way. She ain't trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? With her age, no. It's time right. to retire, which she has done like, to prove. But. Call me back when we've got some geographic sense back in college athletics. Yeah. When I'm just going up and down the coast on Alaska Air – Playing Arizona, that's a 40-minute flight or hour flight from San Fran. L.A. is a 45-minute flight. I mean, now you're going transatlantic. That's a trip, man. Got to play Florida State, Tallahassee. Got to play Virginia. Up there, like that's a tough trip for those former Pac-12 schools, you know. So and it's going to be really interesting to see all, you know. That's what Chris Hummer tells us about Oregon, and if they struggle this year, he's going to think about, okay, how are they going to look when they play in the cold? So they've never done before, really. You know, that's a different type of cold playing those December games, and which I don't know what their schedule's like, but possibly December games in Wisconsin and, you know, East Michigan State and all of those schools, Illinois, North, Northwestern might be an easy game on paper, but playing in December, shit. That game changes a little bit. Right there on the shores of Lake Michigan? Changes a little bit. Wind chill? Yeah, man. That wind comes over that river. Yeah, Northwestern's right near Lake Michigan, too. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. I'd rather be at 100 degrees like what we're going to see that first month here with Texas football than being anything that's below 20. Absolutely. So, Sarkeesian was asked, okay, why – why was today's practice so good for Arch? And it was because he stepped up in the pocket under duress and threw the ball accurately. That's big. Some quarterbacks never really get that. They keep going out the back of the pocket. Sam Ellinger struggled with that. Johnny Manziel never stepped up in the pocket. He was always running out the back of the pocket which is a terrible habit, horrible, because A, 
you're leaving your you're leaving the protection of the pocket. Your offensive linemen are now exposed to holding if they don't let go at the right time. And you've just gone backwards four more yards and it's a mess. So that's big time. If Arch is stepping up in the pocket, because we've seen him run, he's athletic and he's, you know, he's, he's, if he's stepping up in the pocket and it's, cluttered and he's still delivering the ball on time. That's a big step for a year two quarterback. That's it takes quarterbacks a while to trust that when everything's going crazy, I got to step forward and not backward. Um, we still don't know the spring game format. Um, what time's the spring game? One. Okay. One o'clock Saturday. Okay. Uh, um, Sarkeesian, I asked him if, you know, with all these new faces, if the season started today, who would be your top three receivers? And he said, they're all playing well. <laughs> trying to be sneaky in there. Sark ain't take that bait. He ain't take that. Well, he took it. When I asked him about Anthony Hill, he said, yeah, if the season started today, he'd be our middle linebacker. He's like, but. Well, that's different. Season, season doesn't start today. That's different. We know he's elite. That, that's not, you know, there's nothing battling, no one battling with Anthony Hill at that spot. Like David Bender and Mo Blackwell, they play that weak side. So, I mean, I know Leon LaFowle is around, but. Ant Hill, he's a different specimen. So I don't expect anybody to beat him out of anything. And if him playing middle linebacker is his best spot, that Pete Kwiatkowski and Johnny Nansen think he should be playing, then, hey, that's what he's rolling with. He said um, he feels like the team, the players have learned that with team success comes individual accomplishments and that it's not the other way around that when the team was playing well and the defense was playing well, that's when Tavondre sweat got the outland trophy and Byron Murphy got the big 12 defensive lineman of the year and team success. And obviously that's a big part of the culture and making it about the team. Um, he said one of the best things from the scrimmage on Saturday was the defense was not giving up explosive plays. So that's, that's big time. Cause I, in the insider last Thursday morning, I did a breakdown of all the first and second down passing that they'd given up in their, their close wins and in the loss losses to OU and Washington and, monstrous explosive plays given up hell on the final drive alone against Oklahoma 12 16 28 and a pass interference penalty for 15 like get your hand off him Terrence please please be working on that this offseason well and I asked about Jody Barron I asked Stark about Jody Barron he said yeah we're not we're not we want him we're resting him. We want him to get healthy. We know what we've got in him. So we're, we want him to be healthy. And he had some nagging injuries last year that they want to just be done with. So needless to say, Jalen Gilbo is making the most of it. Yeah. She uh, could be interesting. I'll, I'll take it. I love you, Jade. I get it. We rocking that number seven now because we idolize Mike Huff. That's cool and all, but, yo, homeboy from Port Arthur is real. He is real. I'm telling you, let him get back healthy like he is now, and he is showing. Y'all been seeing that film on the social media, Twitter, X, whatever y'all call it, Instagram, Texas football sports uh, social media team, putting those videos out week in and week out, day in and day out. 
You see a lot of number three going crazy on defense. You showed that picture yesterday of him disrupting the ball that I think that was intended for Isaiah Bond. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, that's what you got to do. If somebody's saying, now, okay, it's, now it's my time to shine. Now it's my time to show these guys that I'm back and I'm ready to go, and I expect the reps to come with that. Yeah, and Jack, Jack says here on the YouTube comment, uh, Chip, I wonder how much portal threats affect those answers. Yeah. Yeah, Sark's smart for not saying who his top three receivers are right now. In a room of 10 guys, in a room of 10 guys, one of whom isn't even here yet, and, you know, Freddie Dubose is coming off an injury in high school. He could feel completely overwhelmed. Um, Silas Bolden will get here in June. Ryan Niblett is a guy trying to push through Aaron Butler. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it could have a lot to do. Um, he was asked if anyone will not be active for the spring game. He said, I don't know. Don't know yet. And uh, Malik Muhammad had an interception and a forced fumble. Yo, come on, come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, Cliff. Come on. Oh, Cliff. That's what I'm talking about. And that Fear. dude. Yeah. That dude's made it all the way through spring football while observing Ramadan. Which. Yeah, because wasn't he. I'm not saying it was due to Ramadan, but he was hurt. One of these few weeks, or they kind of kept well, he had a little right? muscle strain, and they're like, Well, shit, he's not eating or drinking during the day. Yeah. So they eased off. Now he's, I don't know, is Ramadan over? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Not my religion, so I don't know, but I I'm pretty sure. Know. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Uh, April 9th, it was over. Okay. Well, so perfect know. timing. Right. Perfect timing for the, uh, the uh, April 14th Yo, scrimmage. His former high school, South Oak Cliff High School, they have the best fans, man. I'll never forget when they used to go to the state tournament in basketball all the time, and they would have guys like Darrell Arthur that went off to Kansas. And was oh, yeah. Winning, like, shady. Yeah. So yeah. Shady. Yeah, exactly. They would, like, basically have the part of the drum, like a fourth of it was all South Oak Cliff people. And then they would chant S O C, S O C, like the whole game. And again, this is in the drum. Like, yes, they would have home court advantage when they play at these itty bitty high school gyms, but at the drum, they still had home court advantage. And they would put it on teams. And yeah, South Oak Cliff, they've always had really good athletics. Well, Let's uh, let's check in with a guy I'm sure who's spent some time at South Oak Cliff High School. He is the recruiting guru for Horns247.com. By the way, we've got a flash sale going on because of Portal Palooza. 60% off annual membership to Horns247 right now. Just go to my Twitter, Hank's Twitter, go to horns247.com and click on the 60% off story and get in while the getting's good. My God, all the stuff we got going on with basketball portal, football portal, SEC 2024, right, Hank? It's a lot. A lot. It's a lot, man. Okay, so the portal window opens today. How's your life right about now? And if you need to bounce at any moment, just tell us. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's certainly not as crazy as, uh, you know, the December window, um, you know, where we saw Texas had, what, nine guys or, you know, eight guys from uh, December to January. Um, but it's still certainly, you know, across the college football landscape, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of movement. And I think we're, we'll continue to see a lot of movement, you know, as spring practice concludes for places, you know, guys are told kind of, where they stand in the pecking order guys are just unhappy in general and decide to, you know, go get an opportunity somewhere else. Um, but for Texas, you know, it, it's, it's pretty, you know, 
clear what what the uh, priority is, and that's defensive linemen. Um, and, and you know, I, th- I think that's kind of the focus that we're all you know keeping an eye on, seeing seeing where they turn, what they're going to do there. Um, obviously, you know, that th- there has to be some numbers crunching too. We're seeing some of the uh, we're seeing a handful of guys transfer out or announce their intentions to transfer out, and I'm sure that you know we'll see some more. Um, but yeah, you know, Texas entered this window, you know, over the scholarship limit. So that was a given, you know, we were going to see guys leave the program. Um, and, and so, you know, that's the storyline. And then I think the bigger storyline is, you know, who are they going to get to, to help continue to kind of, um, you know, bolster that, um, uh, defensive line, um, for this fall. Yeah. And there's all kinds of speculation about, you know, whether any of the D defensive tackles at Michigan might be disgruntled under the new regime. Um, but it's a mystery, right? I mean, we don't yeah. really know. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it sort of, you know, we're, we're trying to, 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 you know, make a list. Um, you know, yeah, but it, a lot of it is, you know, I think, I think a lot of it too, is, you know, they're trying to see Texas is trying to see who's going to be available as well. And obviously they have, you know, that they're keeping an eye on the portal, you know, they have, they kind of know the, they have their you know finger on the pulse of everything going on um i think one name that that's popped up in in our arizona publisher jason Shear, um you know was kind of the lead on this was bill norton who's the defensive lineman from uh the university of arizona uh, which is actually kind of a weird full circle full circle moment for me uh this was a kid that was in the class of 2019 way back then um i i went out in uh and he was recruited heavily by alabama um, we went out and saw him in memphis at his high school there was a 24 7 sports conference in nashville since we were in Tennessee, we drove over to, to Memphis to see uh, to see him. I think it's his, his Christian Brothers School or, or college, the high school he went to. He originally signed with Georgia, and then obviously, you know, he spent last year at uh, Arizona and was actually a really big piece of their um, run defense and the, and the success they were able to have with their uh, their top twenty five run defense. So um, I know Jason Shears already projected him to Texas. He's a graduate transfer, so you know he he you know, he has more opportunity, not more opportunity, but you know, the, the, the rules aren't as uh, strict in terms of transfer as if they're strict anyway, but you know, graduate transfers can really kind of, uh, you know, do it, do, do what they want to do. Um, so, you know, we're going to see what he decides on. I, you know, I've been trying to, to, to communicate with him and, you know, he said he is definitely interested in Texas. So, you know, we're kind of, I've got him on notifications, you know, I, I could see this kid, you know, maybe popping anytime, um, you know, assuming Texas is, is making that press for him, but yeah, beyond him, yeah, like you mentioned, the Michigan guys. I think everyone <clears throat> has them on their wish list. Um, if if they want to, if they want a change of scenery, um, there's that big defensive lineman from the University of Indiana, <clears throat> or is it Indiana University? I'm sorry, who's your fans? Um, IU, right? IU. Yeah. How do how could I not know that? Um, so uh, his name is Philip something, and I, his last name's escaping me. But um, he he's one of the top rated guys in the portal right now terms of uh interior defensive lineman so yeah we'll, we'll see and I, you know we'll see what other names pop in but uh, i think bill norton's the big one to watch right now and i think <clears throat> i think they're going to go for more than one guy i think i think they're going to want to bring in at least two um even after getting um you know tia Savea from arizona i think that just goes to show how highly these guys think of johnny nansen too assuming you know bill norton does like texas um and then obviously Savea already on campus um, I think that goes to show, you know, how the the relationship he had with those guys. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, Hank, talk about the guys that have already left this Texas squad. I mean, we knew Samaje Burrell with him basically getting kicked off the team due to the Travandre um, sweat incident, and then you got guys like Peyton Kirkland. Uh, talk about why they maybe put themselves in the portal. Obviously, the guys ahead of them are getting more opportunities, and they feel like they're not. But is there anything more to that? What have you heard? No, I mean that. I don't think there's much more to it. You know, Samaje Burrell, I'm not a huge shock. You know, I think he was maybe kind of getting getting uh, not lost on the depth chart, but you know, I think think he was a guy that maybe needed a fresh start. Peyton Kirkland, I think we've all kind of expected some offensive line attrition. You know, that's that's one area they're really deep, and that's why we didn't see a huge 2024 recruiting class at the position, is they are pretty deep. Um, and you know, I think Kirkland was a guy, and you know that that was, I th- if I remember correctly, that was kind of a uh, you know a sudden commitment to Texas as it was, and you know maybe you know he's from Florida, might be looking to get closer to home, and then uh, Walton as well, you know a guy that was originally committed elsewhere, 
um, you know, maybe looking to get a little bit closer to home. And I think Mike Roach was talking about SMU being, being a player for him. So, um, you know, nothing shocking. I, I think, you know, those are all positions. I think Texas has, you know, um, you know, a lot of talent at, and maybe guys, you know, saw that and, and, and thought maybe let's see the field a little bit sooner somewhere else. Yeah. All right, Zay, I'm trying to find this, uh, this Indiana. Oh yeah. I should be looking that up too. Let's see. Phil, it's Philip. Tackle. Oh, Philip, Philip Blitty? Blitty. Philip Blitty. And honestly, Philip I haven't – I'm just kind of – I'm just – you know, I bring him up and, you know, solely because he's one of the top rated in the portal. Um, he doesn't have a Texas visit set or anything. You know, he's. I think he visited the LSU last weekend. Um, he's supposed to go to uh, – Oh, great. He's over there talking to Bo Davis. I know, right? Uh, he's going to Auburn this weekend, it looks like. Uh, he got an offer from Colorado two days ago. So, you know – He's a guy that, you know, he's he's probably going to get a lot of people calling you. Know, everybody wants, you know, big defensive line, big run stoppers, you know, gap fillers. You know, he's probably going to command a lot of interest. So we'll, we'll see what happens with him. And, and again, I, I have not been told Texas is pursuing him yet. Um, but, you know, he's one of the top rated guys, you know, makes sense, you know, if, if they did decide to throw their hat in the ring. Um, anything at the top of your your football notebook from um you know since last week i feel like yeah. so much has happened but i'm trying to sort through it all in my head yeah um i, I think you know obviously the biggest news last weekend was uh, was elijah bo barnes committing um and i i don't know i don't remember if we talked about this or not last last tuesday but um i thought it was, it was saturday so he visited the saturday prior april 6th for that the longhorn city limits event and uh when we were catching up with him he was saying you know i'm going to come back in the morning and talk to sark and, and this was Saturday evening when we were talking to him and, you know, that, that kind of, you know, caught my attention. I don't know if I said that last week. I was like, you know, that's interesting. You know, what, what's he coming to talk to Sark about in the morning or, you know, why is he staying overnight? Um, and so you, you got to kind of, you know, as a recruiting reporter, you imagine, you know, maybe he's coming back to commit. Um, I don't think he committed then, but I think at that point he had a pretty good idea that it was coming soon. And uh, we got word on Friday afternoon that, you know, he was coming back to Texas uh, for a visit this past weekend and a commitment could be coming, which was news because, you know, he was saying August, you know, I have a top 10 right now, I'll make it a top five later, top three, and then commit. Um, he went ahead and just, you know, expedited everything and, and went ahead and committed. We posted the video on, on Horns 24-7 of, of him telling Sark they're in the big, uh, big room and like all the coaches were circled around him and his family. It was a pretty cool moment. Um, yeah, it is cool. Yeah, it is cool. But, you know, if, if you see, uh, you know, and we've been around him and his family a lot. Um, his dad is, is is awesome. His whole family is awesome. But, uh, you know, his, they'll come on recruiting visits and, you know, he'll talk about how he, he watches all of us on, on YouTube or, on, you know, on Texas Sports Unfiltered or, you know, the other channels by the other media outlets. And he, he's very up to date on Texas football. He knows what's going on. And, you know, if you're looking for signs on where a kid might be leaning, you know, throughout all that. You know, he was very into Texas football. His dad was. And, and, you know, obviously, Bo always, you know, spoke highly of Texas as well. Put a crystal ball pick in for him a few months ago. It just felt like that was what was going to happen. And, you know, sure enough, he, he commits. But, you know, a position that, you know, Texas might take four guys at in, in 2025 if they're the right guys. Um, you know, they only signed Ty Anthony Smith. Um, in, in, and then, obviously, you know, you got Kendrick Blackshire in the portal. But in terms of high school guys, just, the numbers haven't been as much there. And, you know he's the first of, of what could be a, a pretty strong group at that position. What is he a middle? Yeah. So, um, you know, he's, he's a really interesting prospect and I know Gabe Brooks mentioned, you know, he could maybe kind of be, they can kind of unleash him a little bit like Anthony Hill, you know, he's a guy he had as a, a, a 10, 900 at uh you know, six, two, two twenty uh, a couple weeks back at, at one of the state track meets. And, you know, he is, he's a, I mean, he's, he's, you know, exactly what the modern linebacker is. You know, he, he's a guy that, you know, can, you know, hold his own in the middle in the box, and he can also drop back in coverage. He can he can do all sorts of different assignments, and uh, you know he he's just a really all around you know strong solid player. Um, I and, you know I was watching his film the other day after he committed again, just to kind of get a refresher on everything. And uh, you know he he has he has plays for he plays at Skyline too, so you know he's playing DeSoto, he's playing uh, he's playing Duncanville. So you know best district in the state, yeah, best district in the state. So. You know, he's not coming from this smaller school where, you know, he gets to Texas and, you know, the, the you know, it's kind of a – it shocks your system and the talent level you're playing against. You know, you're, you're pretty much playing D1 guys week in and week out at your own high school. But 
I, I really like watching his 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 highlight at running back too because you know he the hand on the ball he's going up the middle and is like good luck tackling him like you know when when he gets a full head of steam. You know, it, it, it reminded me, and I put the comp down, uh, Sergio Kendall. You know, I know Sergio's a little bit bigger, but um, a fellow Dallas native, the, a guy that, you know, and I'm pretty sure didn't Sergio Kendall get reps at running back early on in his career at Texas? Like, I, I, I vaguely remember him playing running back, and I think it was in the Alamo Bowl against Iowa, you know, when he was a true freshman. Um, but just, you know, it, it, I was watching the film, and that that's what came to mind. It was just kind of that that same, you know, just – all I know out. is Sergio Kindle showed up to one of those media luncheons in a white tank top. Right, yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, Anthony Wheeler's nickname was prison because he had that prison body. Anthony Wheeler didn't have nothing on Sergio Kindle. Sergio <laughs> Kindle. Yeah. That guy was top, you're he's like one, he's a solid uh, player. Um Put Our comp, Gabe's comp from him, from him on 24-7 was Henry Toa Toa, who's on the Texans now, played for Alabama, which I, I think I think Bo is is more athletic than Toa Toa. I, mean, I, I know Henry, Henry Toa Toa has had success with the Texans already, but, um, I, you know, I, I think he has, you know, a higher ceiling. He plays more in control, and, and I think he's just more athletic, and he's a bigger guy. You know, Toa Toa, I think, is – they generously gave him whatever, like six one. Like, I, I stood next to him once. He was not 6'1", um, and I, I, I would know. I'm not six one either. I, I'm just like you know, um, but uh, no, it, big pickup and and again, it's a position of need. Um, you know, there, there's they still want to go out. You know, they had Deuce Williams who you know who who left the class, um, but you know they have guys like Riley Pettijohn still out there. Um, uh, Jonathan Cunningham, who's a guy that's you're kind of seeing a trend with all these linebackers that you know Nansen seems to really like, kind of big, you know, not linkier, but you know, big athletic linebackers um, that can kind of play all the positions. So. That's what they've been going for, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's a big pickup. What did you think of the Deuce Williams situation? Yeah, you know, it's it, it's it's it's. You know, I felt I felt for him. You know, I, I think it was kind of uh, not. I want to. I don't want to say mutual parting of ways. I, I think Texas. You know, kind of. You know, they, they they saw some guys, and you know, I I I think it's better it happened now than it. You know, December. It's like, hey, you know, we're gonna go after this guy. I don't think it. I think Texas just wanted to keep evaluating him, and I think that's what they made clear to him and I think he got the idea of you know maybe they're they're looking elsewhere and, and he decided to you know kind of uh, back out now and you know uh, I think he's going to end up playing high level football you know I think Baylor's a school his dad played at Baylor I think that's a school he could end up at TCU is a school I think to watch closely for him but um, I think I think you know right now that that happening in April I think is the best thing for for all parties you know how he can go take a full official visit slate he could end up playing in the SEC still um, it, it, it stinks, you know, obviously he committed when they didn't have a linebackers coach. Cause obviously Choate was taking over at Nevada. Nansen hadn't been hired yet. So, you know, you commit, you think, you know, you're, you're going to, you know, you're set and, and you know, they, they obviously wanted to do some more evaluations on guys. So, you know, I, he's still going to end up, you know, playing somewhere big and, you know, great kid too. really like enjoy talking to him and who knows, maybe Texas circles back down the road and, and, and tries to get him back on board. But, um, yeah, it, it, you know, I, th I think it, that's kind of that ship's probably sailed for now. Yeah. Here you go, Hank. SD's got your back. Yeah, there it is. I so I went to that Alamo Bowl. I think I was uh, that's what 2006. So I was like, look uh, at you, Hank. Good memory. Yeah, no, yeah. For, I think it was a for sophomore, sophomore in high school. I just remember I was at the Alamo Dome and I went out to get uh food at halftime, and a guy walked right by me and threw up into his hand. Oh my god. Yeah. He was really in, and I'm probably not really enjoying the Alamo Bowl. He probably was for a minute until that moment. Um, but that was the year Iowa had a bunch of like really big wide receivers that were like weirdly fast. Um, but yeah, that was a fun, that was a good, that was the year that was Colt McCoy's freshman year. And, and I think that was the one where they didn't have a Colt was hurt and they were trying to figure out who was going to play quarterback. Cause I think, I think Jevin Sneed was hurt too. And so they had Quan Cosby taking, reps in practice as a as an emergency quarterback if i remember this all correctly this is what this is back when everyone played in bowl games obviously but um yeah that was a fun game yeah yeah hank spring game this saturday one o'clock with everything that you've heard going on with spring practices and whatnot what are you excited about with this orange and white game coming up yeah, I, I'm I'm real excited to see these new receivers. You know, obviously we're hearing a lot about Wingo. You know, we we all with our own eyes have seen Aaron Butler. You know, in practice looking really good. You know, see these these newer faces. Obviously, I think Isaiah Bond's a given. We all want to see Isaiah Bond. Um, see those guys. You know, in action. Really excited to see Colin Simmons. Um, 
you know, hit him, you know, how, however much, you know, play he gets. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just really excited to, you know, see football, whether it's, you know, a live game or not, you know, whether, you know, there's no stakes or anything, but it'll be fun to, to be in that atmosphere and, and kind of see these new guys take the field and, and, and you know, see what they show us, um, you know, on Saturday, but, you know, it'll be a big visitors weekend. So obviously we'll be out there for that and seeing, you know, who, who's on campus and, 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 you know, what, what their thoughts are, but yeah, I, I'm excited to see these new guys on offense and, you know, just all really all the new transfers, all the new freshmen that we spent so much time covering and kind of seeing them, uh, seeing what they're able to do um, uh, at DKR. So when you hear that Ryan Wingo is making plays, that's, that's par for the course from yeah. your experience covering the guy. Like, is there anyone you would have expected maybe, or you're expecting to, to flash on Saturday because you thought this kid's a can't miss? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I think Wingo was kind of like your can't miss offensive target. Um, so, I mean, I would expect him to, you know, to, to do something exciting on a Saturday, but I wouldn't say like can't miss, but I, you know, Jordan Washington is going to be really good. You know, I think he's been getting a lot more buzz uh, deservingly. So, you know, that the last few weeks um, you've been and, you consistent know, you, on Jordan Washington. And I think yeah, you're going to be right. I think he's going to be a guy that, you know, sees, you know, contributes early sooner rather than later um, for Texas. And that's even with, you know, bringing in Amari Nyblack, who's the number one uh, tight end in the country in the portal. And, uh, you know, you have Gunnar Helm, obviously, who's the kind of the veteran in the room and, and is going to play a lot as well. But yeah, Jordan Washington's a guy I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, how he does on Saturday and, you know, what we see from him. Yeah, Jordan Washington, number 84. Number 84 in your program, number one in your heart. All right, <laughs> Hank, anything on basketball? Yeah, um, a lot. Now, you know, Eric Henry's been covering great over at, um, uh, Horns 24 7. Brandon Jenkins, uh, Brandon Jenkins, I'm saying his name right. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing, yeah, he's been doing a great job. I mean, like every time like I get a tag on Twitter, I'm like, oh, is he breaking a commitment? Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, what's refreshing about basketball is it, it seems like these guys have a more like laser dialed in focus on like where, where they actually want to go. And they're, you know, you're not seeing a transfer take like, or like a high school recruit take five official visits. You know, you see a guy set an official visit. Uh, you know, for example, Jason Kent, Julian Larry, uh, you kind of have an idea they're probably going to commit, you know, if Texas is pushing or, the, you know, the school they're going to see is pushing. And, you know, obviously that that happened this weekend with those two and then and Trayvon Mark. And, you know, that, that was, you know, they need they need to overhaul this roster. You know, they have a lot more spots still left, even with those guys leaving or coming in. And, you know, you, you, you have Tyrese Hunter, you have Dylan Mitchell announced their intentions to leave. So I think what that's four spots they still have to, to fill if I, if my yeah. math is right. Um, so, you know, we're, we're Jordan them, Pope we're, is coming yeah, Jordan in, right? Pope is on, I believe Eric Bossy reported he's on campus today, starting his official visit today. Yeah. And that's, you know, Texas is thought to be the team there and they have, uh, another, the air force transfer. Um, I don't I have no idea how to say his name, right? T's Petratus. Petrus, 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 yeah. Petrus. The Air Force transfer, we'll call him that. No, no offense to him. I mean, I'll have to uh, when I talk to him on the phone. Hopefully, I can. Uh, if he commits, we'll get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he's Petratus, leaving today. Petratus. Petratus. Uh He's leaving today. I checked in on that one. You know, I, I think I think they are obviously pushing for him. They haven't been on an official visit. I think think there was a you know consensus vibe on how they felt, but you know, I think that wouldn't shock me if we saw six him foot positive. seven. Yeah, average. 15 points, seven points, six point three rebounds, three point seven assists. Come on down. Yeah. No, zero and calories, was, Keith Van Horn. He was uh <laughs> six time. So he's a he was a sophomore this past season. He was a six time Mountain West freshman of the week. Um I, I was Googling him earlier, like there's all these highlights of uh, you know, he does this, you know. I mean, it seems like a big deal for Air Force basketball. Um, and you know, clear why. And I, I looked it up, you know, we're talking about Jordan Pope. Um, both of uh, his parents played at – not Pope's parents, but Tratus's parents played at Oregon State in basketball. So, you know, there's, it's all connected. Um, but, uh, no, so we'll see. Wouldn't be shocked if we saw him pop today. You know, I think kids, you know, are trying to make decisions and then uh, not predicting that yet, but keep an eye on it. Uh, Jordan yeah. Pope, maybe we'll see him commit before he leaves. Again, two more spots after that. So, you know, they, they have other guys they're going after, but – you know, the, the guys they're getting, I mean, these two Indiana State guys, you know, you look at uh, Julian Larry, who's 46% from three. Um, 
Tremont Mark um, is just like a finisher. You know, he, I think I was reading the stats. Um, he shoots 48% of the field, but from the field, but like within four, within in the paint, yeah, you know, like he's, 80% within four and a half. Yeah. Feet of the yeah. Yeah. Which is wild. And then Jason Kent, who shoots 63% from the field and, you know, he averages 13 and eight a game. I mean, that's some production. But the guy, I guess they're not going after, they're not going after Robbie Avila. The Yeah. Doesn't sound like it. Never was asking about Rylan Griffin too from uh, from Alabama, but um, who was one of their best scorers? Uh, that's from Dallas, which would make sense. Like you know, you, you look at it on paper, but he had. I think he's going to go to Kansas, but you know, he hadn't even talked to Texas. So um, yeah, we'll see. It'll, you know, we'll see how these last four spots fill. Maybe by the time we talk next week, they'll all be filled, or you know, maybe they'll be filled. Two of them will be filled later today or tomorrow. So um, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Vila, I asked about that last night and I was told no. So I know they were looking at the, the wolf kid, Danny Wolf out of Yale, seven footer. Yeah. You had that great insider with all the, all the names. Then uh, what uh, the Oklahoma state transfer. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Garrison. Garrison. Yeah. Garrison, I yeah. think he's supposed to visit this weekend. So we'll see what, what happens with that. Um, and so, he's yeah. a rising sophomore, Brandon Garrison. So you yeah. got some years to work with yeah. him. And that's another thing is that the three guys they got this past weekend, they're all COVID seniors. So like, they're all like, they all have a ton of basketball experience. So, you know, when you're flipping a roster, when you're trying to build around Trey Johnson, having veteran leadership like that, I mean, that that's a big plus. So yeah. is that because Chip kind of mentioned it yesterday, is that big reason why they kind of said, okay, Cam Johnson, it was going to work before, but Roddy Terry doesn't necessarily have time to wait around to develop somebody Cam like Scott. Him. Cam Scott, thank you. It's win now. Yeah, I think that was, I think that was, yeah, part of it. You know, the, and then obviously the next day we see Tremont Mark commit. Um, so it's like, yeah, I, I think that was kind of the conversation. And yeah, it, it, recruiting is kind of crazy, but I mean, I think it makes sense, you know, with what you're seeing kind of unfold in the portal, why why that took place all right hank doe says uh that uh they watched the georgia spring game and those guys have a machine over there did you uh i mean they've got the other heisman favorite when yours and carson beck are both the you know leading candidates for the heisman what uh i think georgia looks amazing they're pretty good yeah i mean they've got it figured out i mean you, you need to be good if you're like, what, eight years into recruiting nine five stars a class? Like, you're like, you need to be really good. And, and they are. And obviously, you know, we're, we're seeing the Nick Saban coaching tree with Kirby Smart there. Uh, but yeah, how lucky are we that we get to see Georgia, Texas in Austin? Like, that's good. I mean, that's got to be the game of the year, does it not? Like, on paper right now, like Georgia yeah. visiting Austin, like, especially when's the last time, well, when's the last time they played Georgia? Obviously, the Sugar Bowl, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a treat, but yeah, Georgia's loaded, you know, they're all always going to be big up front. They're always going to have playmakers and, you know, who, who knows what they're going to go at in the portal as well with, uh, with guys, you know, that, that's a, that's a pretty good recruiting pitch. Like, Hey, we're Georgia, you know, if you want to come win a national championship or, or play for one, you know, this is the spot. So like, they're like Texas, you know, you, you, they can kind of, uh, obviously they have, they have the championships. I, I don't want to like, you know, the, they're the same degree of program where it's like, Hey, you can come here and, you know, compete right away for a, uh, for a ring. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty good. That's going to be a fun game. What are they? 30 and one, something like that. The last... No, I do want to say, and maybe this is like me being kind of like a buy bias, like biased towards Alabama. since I covered them for so, so long, but the championship game when they played in Indy two, three years ago, three seasons ago, te- uh, Bama would have won that game if uh, if Jamison Williams didn't go down. I mean, I think I think everybody knows that, and I, I don't want to be that guy, but uh, it was very obvious. Like Bama was going, and then he tore his ACL. Unfortunately, John Mechie had torn his ACL in the SEC championship game, so they were down their two leading pass catchers. Then you bring in Ajay Hall, who still had chances to 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 take the to, you know, put that away for Bama and he just dropped the, literally dropped the ball, like, like literally. <laughs> and so, yeah. but yeah, no, but me, I, now, Hank, me and Chip been trying to look for that. We can't find a dry hall anywhere. I, I have no idea what that guy's doing. Damn. Uh, I mean, remember he tried to rip the boot off his car at Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that guy had all the talent, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate. He, that didn't, um, uh, 
that didn't work out for him either at Alabama or Texas. Yeah, he was a fun player to watch. 52, 52 and two, Georgia, the last three years. No big deal. 52 and two. Yeah. They always have a scare though. Like they always like they'll go to like Mizzou or something. And like, you know, obviously, you know, you can't blow out every single team, but there's always like one game where and, and it's funny to go read their message board too, because like you wouldn't know they were 52 and two over that span. Like if, right, 42 and two, my bad, 42 and two. Okay. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know it. Like there, one bad thing happens or if they have a bad drive or, you know, they don't get a first down on one, one series. It's like, ah, who do we need to fire? Like, it's like, it's going to be okay, guys. It's going to be okay. Man. Well, Hank, keep up the good work, man. And like I said to everybody listening, uh, flash sale. 60% off annual membership at horns247.com. Um, do it today because it's not going to be here and get in on all of the fun. Uh, Hanks, thanks so much, man. Keep up yeah. the great work. Talk to you next week. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you, Hank. Uh, South, you. bringing it. Horns 24-7 recruiting guru. All right, let's get, uh, let's get to the commentary here. Um, and all these incredible sponsors, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel around our heads, please uh, give them your business because they are making it possible for us to be broadcasting to you here on Texas Sports Unfiltered, the, the great uh, people at Apple Leasing, getting you into the car you really want to be driving. Um, I'm my, our man Tom McKay at Audio Visual Consultations, getting you the big screen of your dreams, the media room of your dreams, new lighting, electronic shades, surveillance, just call 255-8678. Um, the Brain Vault mouth guard, Dr. Greg Eckert, Austin's dentist. Um, the Brain Vault mouth guard, proven patented to reduce the effects of concussion. If you have a competitor in your household, this is the mouth guard that they need to be wearing, whether it's cheerleading, flag football, lacrosse, soccer, uh, the Brain Vault, go to brainvault.com to set up a fitting. And of course, uh, Salt Traders Coastal Cooking. I mean, happy hour every day from 3.30 to 6.30. And you're getting dollar raw oysters, the best selection of raw oysters in Austin. Um, go get your oysters, seafood on. Salt Traders Coastal Cooking, the scallops are to die for. Um, and cover three. Cover three. I mean, this is going to be your NFL draft headquarters. Make your reservations now. High-end food and the place to watch your favorite teams with your buddies. Great for date night. You got NBA tonight. Are you kidding me? You got big-time games. I know my man Zay is going to tell me about that in a minute. Um, but cover three. You know what I'm saying? And all of our great sponsors. All right. So, Zay, I'm just going to say it. I am excited. I am excited about this uh, spring game. Each day, I'm going to give you a player who I'm excited about to see uh -huh. in this spring game. And today, I'm going to start it off with my man Aaron Butler, because no one's talking about him. I'm worried about him. I want to see how number 14's doing out there, because he was looking good to me in the practices that I got to see. Um, You know, six foot 168 from Calabasas, California. Now, our man uh, John Brown says sometimes those dudes from California can be a little, I'm not going to use the word soft because that's not a good word, but he likes, you know, he, he wants killers. And I think Aaron Butler is a killer. So I am excited to see what number 14 has. Now, obviously everyone's going to be going goo goo gaga for Ryan Wingo, number five, because he's been getting a lot of love. He's cutting it loose. He's playing fast. And, Obviously, you've got the experience in Isaiah Bond and Matthew Golden, who will only get better um, as as they get to know the offense more. Um, but this receiver room, the spring game is one of the places where you can actually see the receivers and gather some intel. 
we saw that incredible one-handed stab by A.D. Mitchell last year. Um, that absolutely was foreshadowing of what was to come. Um, you know, th this this room is ridiculous. It it's it's so loaded that uh, you know only only the best are gonna survive. But um, look at me now. I'm talking about the whole receiver room. So I'll just talk about the whole receiver room. Is what I'm excited about to see. DeAndre Moore who caught a touchdown pass in the scrimmage on Saturday and all he's doing is making plays. Now Sark said Parker Livingstone had a touchdown in the scrimmage on Saturday. Yeah. White boy flying around out there running Next away. From Ripley. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> could be. I'm not there yet, but I'm definitely not there. And I just like joking because again, when Horn fans see white boy playing receiver, that's who they think. Jordan Shipley. Yeah. So, yeah, he's six terrible. four, Parker Livingstone. Well, that's what they list him at. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um I'm still, you know, I've been doing this 30 plus years, and I still get excited for these things. You know, I just I love helping to tell the story of kids. And I love that college football, it rotates through, you know, in the NFL, I always say, man, if you're covering a team that's not winning in the NFL, they're sick of seeing you, you're sick of seeing them. And it's just like, it's a, it's tough, man. It's tough in college football, especially at a program like Texas, where it should be, doing that and it is finally um and they're bringing in top top end talent man this is fun this is fun yeah nobody wants to talk about a losing team it's depressing like that's awful Except the cowboys i mean somehow jerry jones makes them relevant whether they're winning losing drawing but that's why he's anyway. that businessman but you're right all right let's get on to the right call we got some stuff yeah, nice. man. Let's get it. Talk about the playing games a little bit. But before that, though, shout out to Culver BK for the Culver Automotive Dealerships. Been doing it for us at Texas Sports Unfiltered, and they could do it for you. Seven terrific brands to choose from. Culver, when it comes to Cadillacs, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Buick, GMC, Covert's got you. Go to Covert bk.com for all your latest specials and inventory nobody beats a covert deal not now not ever and yes he'd be right jake smith we thought he was gonna be the next shipley mm, that was a bummer that was tough he couldn't get on the field man but i remember he had a really good game against oklahoma state that's about it yeah but he, he dropped a huge third down pass against tcu that would have would have could have should have put that game away, and then Keontae Ingram fumbled, reaching out on first and goal. Gosh. See, anyway. Those bad times. Those are the times that nobody wanted to cover. But tonight. No, but right. Jake Smith had a big game against Oklahoma State when they came back from 20 down. A huge game. I remember huge. that. Caught a fourth down one. touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, man. But. All right. A little basketball tonight. The playing game, which some people hate. But I love. I like the seven and eight C going at it and the ninth and tenth C going at it. Tonight we got the West. It starts in NOLA, Lakers versus Pelicans. I talked about it yesterday. A lot of people think that the Lakers should sit out a few players to avoid getting that seven C, to avoid the Denver Nuggets. You cannot risk that. Darvin Ham, you got to play all hands on deck tonight. Anthony Davis, LeBron James, you got to let those guys roll because Denver, they're not that same team they were last year. Are they good? Can they win it all again? Absolutely. But this Denver team, they lost a little bit. You know, we all know when you have success, especially success like winning the world championship, what comes with that? More endorsement deals, more ads, more fame, more free meals. Sometimes, it's just the easy way Porn out. Stars. Porn stars, exactly. Michael Porter Jr. with Lana Rhodes, whatever her name is. Yeah, exactly. So how locked in is this Nuggets team 
Are they worth it, what they were last year? I think not. So if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, you got to play this game and take it seriously. You know, you can't duck that smoke. And it's going to be a good matchup. Zion Williamson, they played a couple of nights ago to solidify that seven and eight spot. Zion Williamson struggled. He has to be good tonight. And LeBron James at 21 years in the league, this dude's doing things that we still never seen before. Like he's average this year, Chip. 25 points a game, eight assists a game, seven rebounds. Like nobody in their 21st year has even gotten close to that. Vince Carter, Dirk, KG, all those guys were averaging single dip. Uh, single digits when it came to their 21st year. So the game that he had the other night in New Orleans, triple-double, 17 assists, 13 and a half, the most he's ever had in the half. Like, he could just manipulate your defense and manipulate your game plan due to his basketball IQ, even though he's lost a step, which him losing the step is still probably more athletic than 85% of the NBA. So I like my chances with the Lakers tonight. The Pelicans, you know, those guys, they're young, but they've been in and out of the lineup a lot this year. Zion Williamson, he's played the most out of everybody, and he only played 70 games, which is a lot for him. But C.J. McCollum, he only played 60-something. Brandon Ingram only played 60-something. So they never really had a chance to get a good flow with all their, you know, their big three missing a good amount of time. And, you know, Brandon Ingram, he's going to have to be good tonight. I like Austin Reeves. I like D'Angelo Russell. But the problem has been Darvin Ham. And, again, he's a Texas Tech Raider, so – it's going to come with its faults. <laughs> He's going to come with, you know, being a liability in some aspects. So you just got to take what you can get. But he's not a good coach. He's not. He spoke at my uh, Bowie basketball banquet back in 07, 08. Yeah, him and CeCe. I don't know how they go back, but they go back. And he was good at the banquet, but he's not a good coach. He doesn't call timeouts at the right times. You could tell that LeBron and certain guys on the team don't respect him in different ways. It's just kind of like, you know, we deal with them. So as far as playing for Darvin Ham, that's not a thing. These Lakers are playing for themselves. They're playing for that next contract. They're playing for their legacies. They're definitely not playing for their coach, which – no matter what happens with the Lakers, they're not going to win it all this year, but Darwin Ham is gone. He's out of here. So long. Adios. Like, he, this is it for him. So he should hope that he does well enough to where he can get a job in the foreseeable future, but I don't think it's going to be. Who's a better game. coach, Frank Vogel or Darwin Ham? Frank Vogel. Frank and the Vogel. Lakers had him. Yeah. And they got stale. He won a championship. And it got stale. I mean, they gave Jason Kidd a lot of credit for being an assistant on that championship team. Any team that has LeBron James, you're not going to get your due as a coach. You're just not. You know, it's kind of like what Eric Bieniemy went through with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Like, you're not – how much are you doing – how much are you going to get credit for? You're playing with arguably the greatest basketball mind in the history of the game and LeBron James. So you as a coach, what are you really doing? Like, oh, boy, you remember the Russian dude that they had um, for Cleveland? Gosh, what was his name? 2015. I don't remember him. But either way, he got canned. They went to the finals. Canned. Got rid of him. Came back to Tyron Lue the next year. They won it all. You know, like. Eric Spolstra is just now getting that credit because he's taking those teams with Jimmy Butler to the finals and stuff, so he deserves it. But before that, nobody was giving Eric Spolstra those rings. Nobody was giving them any credit for that. It was all going to LeBron. And then that team in 2020 with Frank Vogel and then they had Rajon Rondo on that team. And Rajon Rondo has a huge following when it comes to his credibility on his basketball knowledge. So it's tough. It's tough to coach LeBron. It is. I wouldn't say he's a coach killer, but he's he not a help. coach killer. I, he doesn't help. Any, <laughs> any coach of a LeBron team should be thankful because they're probably going to the finals. <laughs> 
And that exactly. That's what I'm saying. What are these coaches really doing? Hey, doesn't right. matter. No, they're going not. to the finals. Yeah. They're getting a paycheck. They're getting to and go along. Tyron Lou, he's set for life. Frank Vogel set for life. Eric Spolstra set for life. That's why you've seen Frank Vogel get job after job and opportunity after opportunity. Same with T. Lou and Eric Spolstra. He'll never have to leave Miami with the, you know, relationship he has with Pat Riley. But was yeah, Mike I, Brown his coach in Cleveland? Yes. Set for like life. Mike. Good. I like Mike Brown. Me too. Came from the pop tree. Good coach. You know, the Kings. Going to the other game tonight, he coaches the Kings now. That's going to be an interesting game because the Warriors, all that Draymond stuff they went through this year, it's put them in this position. But I'd rather have the four-time champs over the Mike Brown, Sacramento Kings. And I love De'Aaron Fox. Houston kid, lefty, I think he could really go. Him and Sabonis, they're a problem which is a big reason why this playing game is fun because both the Warriors and the Sacramento Kings, if they win and then win the next game, the loser of the seven and eighth spot and end up finessing their way into the playoffs at that eighth seed with Oklahoma City as that first round matchup, I like that eighth seed upset. I like that eight seed upset. You love the Warriors. I don't love the Warriors, but they have championship DNA. You can't deny that. It's just Draymond is such a nutso. What is he going to do? If you could contain him, which easier said than done, Steph Curry, nobody could stop Steph Curry. Klay Thompson, if you could get him locked he's in. Hot. He's Clay hot. Thompson's hot. That's what I'm saying. Playing those dudes, get Andrew Wiggins. Going a little bit, if they finesse their way into that eighth seed and play the young ass Oklahoma City Thunder with Josh Giddy, who could be a liability, and Chuck Holmgren, who hasn't been here before, and Shea Gildress Alexander, who hasn't been here before, yeah, they play great basketball this year, but people are talking about them being potentially the worst number one seed of all time. Now, I think that's a stretch, but I don't have any confidence in them in the playoffs, making it to the finals as a number one seed. And they can easily get got by that AFC team, depending on who they are. So I got the Warriors tonight. I got the Lakers tonight. Mark Diagnol. Dagnolt. Dagnolt. Yeah. You like him? Yeah, I do. Head coach of the Oklahoma City Thunder? I do. He's good. He's young. He's still in his 30s. He's good. Where did he come from? Overseas somewhere, I think. That, that might not be right. I don't know where he came from, to be honest. But, yeah, he a good job. He – oh, he was coaching the Oklahoma City Blue. Okay. Got it from the mud, ground up. Then he, like then he was an assistant. Um. Okay, so he's he was with Billy Donovan. Okay. And then kind of – Rose up through the ranks. I like it. So you, you got the Lakers. Let me write this down so we talk about it tomorrow. You got the Lakers. And the Warriors. And the Warriors. Both road teams win tonight. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. See how that goes. Yeah, man. And we'll be back tomorrow. Of course, 8 a.m. with Bucky and BK right here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. Zay and I will be holding it down one to three. Talking some more Texas spring football. Who knows what could develop in the basketball transfer portal. And we didn't even talk about this, but Jared Thomas, Texas's leadoff hitting first baseman, will be on the mound tonight for Texas. Let's get it. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm I'm tuning in to see this because if this dude is the next Brooks Kieschnick, then let's go. Let's get it. All right, everybody. We appreciate you again. Please support our sponsors, and we will uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. Peace. Yeah, cool.